right, everybody. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Quest 2 Rookie Cup here on the stream. I'm Palador being joined by Sir Dimwi, uh, Sir Modwi, as I was calling him earlier. And uh, welcome, everyone. Oh, no. How you doing, Mr. Modwi? Uh, I should have asked you not to make that a thing. All right. Uh, I am <laughs> otherwise, I am otherwise absolutely fantastic. Uh, I am... I am uh, first. I mean, I'm ready for some echo. Period. Just, just, uh, just. I mean, just, just as a baseline, I'm ready for this. And uh, you shut up, mess. You, you be quiet, menacing. I shouldn't say shut up. That was rude. You, you shush. You shush. I, uh, I that was towards me at first. No, 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 no. Someone called me Sir Yawnwe. I'm not yawning. I'm not yawning. Uh, but no, I'm excited, man. I'm so excited. We got some. We got some real uh, uh, potential talent uh, playing today. And we're gonna be starting with five guys versus breakaways. And uh, that's uh, Coach Sphinx, uh, who's coaching breakaways there, and uh, uh, Late Toast coaching five guys. So anybody who's, who's regular on the uh, on the Discord, you'll recognize Sphinx. Uh, if you've been watching uh, uh, BRML for since preseason, you probably recognize Late Toast. Uh, you know he, he's been around for a while. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm, I mean I'm really excited to see what these guys have uh, done working with these teams. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a uh, we got echo today, man. We got echo today and I am ready to echo. Uh, right. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to echo. Let's go echo. All right. Let go of my echo. Uh, hello to everyone in the Twitch for joining. I see Steel Sky in there. JL Graham. We got Tiggs. We got Wolfo. Uh, mod O. And it's Menacing Meji. We got Gilligan. He's a mod again. A governing one this time. We got a day on and a lot of people, I mean, look at that, uh, approaching, what, 70, 70 plus thus far. And, uh, yeah, good to see all you guys here. It's been a while since we've had a stream here on this channel, and uh, we're going to have a lot of them here today in this Quest 2 Rookie Cup. And as you can see there, of course, sponsored by Asterion, as well as VR Community Builders, providing some uh, amazing prizes, as always here, and opportunities for our communities. So love to oh. see it. Speaking of Asterion, I said I was going to do this, and I'm going to be doing it all day because Asterion, you know, there, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of companies, and we have a, a lot of sponsors. But this is one, you know, there's a few that I can say that I use myself personally. Fix is one of them uh, when we're talking about VMR sponsors. But when we're talking about right now, Asterion, man. I left so back on the CV1. Like I've been using their their grips, their silicone grips since the CV1. I'm talking over three years now. And I, I I went back recently and I was looking at my review for the grips for the CV1. And I, I left only a single negative comment about it. I said, I love everything about them except except for the fastener. And they fixed that with the with uh, with the S. They, they, they have a patent pending. It might be it might be it might not be pending anymore, but uh, they have a, a fastener that they designed for these grips. Uh, and it sounds like I'm not reading from the script right now. This is my personal <laughs> experience uh, with the stereo. They 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 fix that fastener. Since then, man, ten out of ten. I mean, I will. I personally will not use any other grips. And they do a lot more than grips. But that's that's been like my thing because I cannot hold on to my controllers when I'm throwing overhand. I can't. And I've tried a whole bunch of others. I'm not going to mention them. I'm not going to trash it because it's all it's all preference. But my preference has been a Asterion for over three years. I will rep these guys so hard. <laughs> I love their grips. Uh, and I, I, I imagine I would love all their other products because uh, if, if, if their products are as good as their grips, 10 out, 10 out of 10 all the all way. Right. All right. Well, geez, didn't we get a grip? Anyway, uh, yeah, Asterion, one of our new VRML sponsors as well. Uh, coming in here uh, for season three, as well as uh, for our seasons of uh, Pavlov and Onward VRML. So much appreciation to them, and of course to VR Community Builders and uh, Hasco for helping put this all together uh, again. Because we, we had that Rookie Quest Cup back in uh, in May as well, the first one, which really you know just got booming, uh, got things booming in the competitive community. And for VRML, we saw it have uh, all kinds of effects on season two with so many new teams coming in. And uh, now going into season three, which does start in the new year, January 4th. We're hoping to see a lot of these players here coming in with a quest two and uh, a lot of the ones you'll see here today be coming integrated into the league and uh, the community as a whole here in Echo VR. And I have a, uh, there's a question for me there in the chat from uh, It's Tiggs. It says, uh, Dimly, do you like Asterion? No, I love Asterion. <laughs> uh, I couldn't tell. 10 out of 10 once again. Would it be 12 out of 10 with Rice? There's your old memes. 
Uh, but... <laughs> That's a deep cut right there. I love it. It's a very, very old one. But uh, yeah, so uh, people might have noticed as well the extra players here uh, in the arena. We saw uh, uh, Late Toast and, and uh, Sphinx, of course, the coaches here. So we're doing that. That's a returning theme from that last Rookie Cup as well, where we have these uh, experienced players, as you mentioned earlier, calling them out, uh, coming coming in here and offering kind of their advice, their guidance uh, to these up and coming players. And it's great to see. I, I love I love that we have so many experienced players that are excited to come in and, and coach and kind of offer that knowledge of Echo Arena uh, to these new generations. It helps them learn the game a lot quicker. Oh, it absolutely does. And uh, speaking of those new players, go, going to go ahead and uh, give most of these guys a shout out. I think we might still be waiting on one. Uh, but there on the left, that's five guys. They're led by Late Toast, as I said. Uh, they're also running with Unsound Dash, Chaos Kai, and uh, JC3 Live. I feel like that might be uh, pronounceable, and I'm just missing it. Uh, so if somebody catches that, if it's not inappropriate, I will say, <laughs> I'll say it appropriately. Uh, and I believe they're, they're probably, it looks like they might be missing one. Uh, so I think we're waiting on that one person there. And then over there on the right there in blue with breakaways led by uh, led by Sphinx, uh, one of our regulars in the Discord. Very, very friendly, helpful guy. Uh, and he's running with uh, Baba Baggins, Anthea SMG, Hi, I'm Jeff, and uh, Add-on Assassin, uh, which I think that's a shortening of Add-on Assassin. I've seen, I've seen the name in full. Uh, but of course, you, know, you see a name like Hi, I'm Jeff. It's very hard to not... Uh, Say it, you know, like the line of the movie, Hi, I'm Jeff. I can't even do it right. But it's like that really squeaky voice. Hi, I'm Jeff. I can't do it. I can't actually do it. I didn't know that was a reference to something, but uh, now I do. Yeah, it's uh, 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 the remake of uh, 21 Jump Street. Oh, uh, yes. That movie, which I did not see. <laughs> oh, dude, they're so funny. They're actually really funny. Again, not a script. No one's paying me to say this. Oh, no yeah. one's paying me to say anything today. Just, if, if this was, <laughs> if this was scripted, movie. if this was scripted, we'd be on the same page right now. Well, that's uh, then again, yeah, I'm not much of a movie watcher, honestly. I'm what I am is an Echo watcher, and that's almost about it. Uh, as of late, these this last uh, year of VRML and uh, doing these streams and such. If nothing else, I was just saying before the stream started, before we got uh, into the game, how you know it's good to good to be back doing a cast with uh, with you and, and getting to watch some Echo here on this channel because it's been far too long. Even even a couple weeks feels like far too long. Oh, dude, it's, it's uh, no, it really has been. And uh, yeah, no, I, it has been too long. Uh, but also, also, speaking of Asterion. Uh, okay, <laughs> yes. This, this, is, uh, this, is, this is purely, oh my. Uh, thank you, Skinny, for the, uh, the tier one sub. Always appreciate those. Skinny um, with a fat cash, thank you. Uh, no, see, here's the thing. They may or may not be looking for a spokesperson. They probably aren't. It but all makes if, sense. If they were, if they were, I might be their guy. So if they happen to be watching, Asterion, I love you. It would not be a surprise to see you get that, didn't we? Uh, best of luck. <laughs> uh, gathering all the roles. Uh, VRML moderator going into this season now and Asterion spokesperson, maybe. But yeah, of course, again, appreciation to them and uh, all, everyone in the community, including, yes, Skinny. No jokes, uh, we love you. I got Haska say she's messaging them now to make sure they're in here. It, it might be a little late now, because like, now they're going to show up and the chat's going to start complaining that I don't stop talking about them. <laughs> like, like, you're making us look bad. <laughs> I was just associating annoyance now. <laughs> Well, either way, I'm sure it's going to be appreciated by them, and uh, certainly these teams. They, they can watch. They can watch the mod. Yeah, exactly. And these teams, uh, I know, are going to be appreciative of them as well, and as well as VR community builders mentioning there are the prizes, which I'll pull up for the stream again. Uh, as you can see, first place there, getting the Asterion Illuminated Charging Stand, which is a uh, super sweet, as well as a mouse pad from. VR community builders and some special Discord recognition, of course. You got to get that clout, and don't forget. I mean, the Echo Games Discord. It's uh, I believe, twenty thousand strong now. So that's a lot of lot of color clout to be had for winning these competitions in the community. You got second. Also, just real quick about that charging stand. It also doubles. Like if you don't have a a, a quest to charge on it, like let's say you're an S user, it also works as just a headset stand as well. So like if you don't have a quest, it's still useful. There you go. Exactly, and. For second place, they uh, get those aforementioned controllers skins, 
as or twenty dollars of a store credit for Styrion, and then some Discord Nitro. So some more Discord clout, and then third place winner of the tournament today will be uh, getting the touch controller skins or store credit as well. So much thanks for, to Asterion and VR Community Builders for again putting this together and providing the prizes. And also a question in the chat. This is a real question. Uh, why wouldn't they have a quest if they're in the Quest Rookie Cup? This is, you don't have to be on a quest to participate in the Quest Rookie Cup. Uh, you just have to have uh, started playing after September 1st. So if you happen to be one of the unlucky few who bought an S after September 1st, um, you would still be eligible for, to play in this tournament. So there might be some here uh, who are not on Quest, uh, but I imagine most of the players here are, are in fact on Quest. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, contrary to the name, not an exclusive thing per se. It's just a kind of a, yeah, gener a generality because they are obviously in conjunction with the Quest 2 release uh, uh, as of recently, which I have one and I love it. Not, I'm not being paid for that either, <laughs> but I, I, I do. I've been playing more Echo in this off season, so instead of casting, I've kind of replaced it, at least some of the off time with uh, private matches. And yeah, Quest 2 phenomenal, and you know you're just seeing more and more people joining because of it into VR and Echo and. Uh, yeah, uh, I love it though. It, it's fun. I it kind of it's been a nice reminder at the very least in the off season getting back into the game and actually playing it and remembering uh, well why I've been around for three years and why I love it so much. It's great to watch and cast, but just playing it uh, as well is just a phenomenal thing. On that note, do you uh, do you miss it, Dimly at all? Because I know you get a lot you know busy these days. I get very busy in the last season now, especially this season. You know, casting and modding, but. Do I miss uh, playing? Yeah, with the well, same you know, same degree and you know on a, yeah, on a that's team and stuff. That's the thing. Yeah, no. Uh, do I miss c competitive? Uh, absolutely. And uh, I actually I accidentally made Dakin feel bad about about it the other day because <laughs> he, he made. Uh, I wish I could remember the exact reference because he said something and I made a joke uh, that oh it's a constant reminder and I big did a big crying face and he got concerned that he actually upset me. It was no 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 no. It's just a, it's a, just a joke. Uh, you know it's something you know it's by choice and. Uh, he said the same thing. Dakin said the same thing. He misses uh, playing competitive. I don't know. I, I don't believe it was competitive Echo, uh, but he said he misses playing competitive generally as well, uh, and also by choice. And that's what it, it was by choice. But I do. I, I miss it a lot. Uh, what I really, what I really miss about it is uh, you know being in a pub and uh, and and not having my reputation precede me. And the expectation could actually be met because now I get into a pub and uh, you, sometimes you get that like, oh, Demi's here. We're good. I'm like, no, no, we're no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't expect me to carry. Not going to carry. Uh, uh, you know, because uh, uh, I was never that good. Uh, I was uh, always just a, a, a solid goalie defender. And uh, well, more than uh, solid. now it's now it's even uh, but now it's even more pronounced when uh you know, like I stopped wearing my, I always, always made that joke that, you know, oh, I stopped wearing my, uh, it's like, it wasn't a joke. I actually stopped wearing my, um, uh, a tag in the, in the actual arena. Cause you know, sometimes you get that comment of like, oh, I thought, I thought our VRML players are supposed to be good. So I took the tag off. So I stopped hearing that one, but now it's, oh, I thought Sir Demi was supposed to be good. And it's like, no, no, that's a lie. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> oh man. You know what? Give yourself some credit, though. Okay, among so many players, I mean, you were you played on Nova. You were uh, again amongst just incredible competition and still pushing up on those higher uh, divisions. Uh, one of my favorite teams to watch for a lot of those games in season one. So you know, gotta show Dimly some love despite the self-deprecation there. Uh, still, still phenomenal player. That's the thing. I, I guess it's all relative, right? Because I've had this conversation with other players, uh, you know, even in, in Diamond tier, Master tier in the past, where it, it's like. Sometimes you get lost in that context where you know you're chasing championships, you're chasing the, the the next tier, the next star in the league, but then you got to put it into perspective, look at the big picture, and it's like, well, now we have thousands and thousands of players in Echo VR. We have uh, well over a thousand, eleven hundred, I believe, last season active on any given week, uh, and to be you know playing at a at, at the high level at any of these higher tiers, especially, I mean, you're you're among the best of the best in a very popular game. I would say among the best of the best, uh, but certainly not the best of the best. Uh, there, there are so many. There, some of the players, I, I tell you, man. You know, some of the players. You know, I'm a, I'm a gush on game for a minute. He doesn't need it. His, uh, his head's already big enough. He knows it. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I played in a, a private. I, I just happened to be on at the right time to get into a private with some 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 of those top level guys, which is like I don't belong there. 
Uh, but it's fun, and I can hold my own on defense, you know, well enough. And, but game, it's it's so it's very it's it's hard to express like what makes a player like game can I just so say, good. And just say he he has some swag when he goes to war. Wink. It's certainly, and so shout out to swag war. Uh, <laughs> but no, he the way he releases his shot. I remember he was coming in, uh, you know, like I'm in goal. He's coming in on the right post, right? And he's taking a shot from the post. So it's a three-point shot. And Eddie, everyone knows, like, you're a goalie. You don't let three-point shots go in. Right. It's the way he releases it. You, you see the windup. You still don't see the shot coming. It's the most, uh, it's surreal. It, I can't explain it. I don't know what he does different. But when he shoots, you will see the windup. He will track the discs the whole way. You retract the disc the whole way, and he, he, it'll, you still won't see it coming. It'll still surprise you. Well, you know what? I played I played against game a good handful of times now in some private matches over the last month. Uh, I concur. Yeah, he's he's pretty ridiculous now. I, I mentioned a lot in season two, and he reminds me a lot. Uh, just from my personal experience, he reminds me a lot of Lemming. Uh, you know, just where he's a player you can get the disc to anywhere, and he'll he'll just he'll just go in on. Uh, all kinds of defenders and mess them up uh, and definitely close range long range doesn't matter he he does it and he does it with a uh, absolute absolute efficacy and just high percentage in, in addition to the volume which is a scary part of all that uh, also quick shout out and thank you to young Midas for the w tier one sub for the community I get got that to Jake the snake Roberts not Roberts, but uh, very, uh, very appreciated from you there on the subs. Thank you so much. There you go. Jake with the gift sub in there. See Nightfire uh, stopping by. Of course, one of our VRML board members and casters for Onward as well as Echo last season. Great to see Nightfire stopping in the chat as uh, we hopefully get ready to start, I believe, soon. So thank you for bearing with us in these little delays. They're bound to happen due to the uh, nature of... You know, being kind of the possibly, likely, first long, longer form tournament for a lot of these players. So, you know, there'll be some uh, delays here and there. But I think we're getting ready to start as we do have a full server, it seems. Uh, yeah, I, we've seen a full server a few times. I'm actually uh, chatting with these guys. I'm uh, um, being very encouraging to uh, uh, we might we might ex incidentally see a sub, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, we, we you know some of the. Uh, some of the other games have already started to finish up, so we do need to get going here. But big shout out, Young Midas in the chat, gifting uh, one tier one sub. That one went to uh, Jake the Snake, 19405. So Jake the Snake, congratulations. And uh, of course, thank you very much to Young Midas. And also Nightfire coming in with the tier one subscription, eight month streak, Madman, always appreciate it. Also one of our uh, casters, mods, is, is, uh, governing, is Nightfire a governing mod? I should know that, he is, is he? I don't think he is, is he? I know he's on the board, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna leave you hanging just a couple extra seconds. And uh, no. He's here, so I'm totally <laughs> embarrassing myself right now. No worries, uh, no, Nightfire is uh, part of the board, not a governing mod. Governing okay. mods has uh, lost one door, but gained one Island and royalty, that is to say, Gilligan and Princess have joined the mod, the governing mod crew this season. And I'm really happy about that because they uh, did a super great job just being incredibly uh, responsive and active all last season. So, you know, they're joining the crew as well. Uh -oh. On the governing side, uh oh, hype train coming indeed uh, from Kitchen Sand there, 808 with the 200 bits. And it has begun as this match hopefully does as well. Yeah, uh, hopefully we're getting close because, uh, you know, uh, before we were seeing five men in the game, but looks like I'm seeing teams getting into their green room. So we should be getting started here any moment. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, teams are, are, are going to hit those buttons. And uh, also, men uh, I would say this right, Menacing Mayhe there with a uh, Prime subscription on the high train. Always appreciate those. 100 bits there from Gilligan. Of course, appreciate that. Oh, 100 bits there from Skinny. Choo choo, he says. I'm ready to go. Bless kitchen, uh, kitchen sand. Another 100 <laughs> bits. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it took me a second. I actually didn't catch it. I was like, what's he saying? Bless you for choo choo. I get it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm, re I'm ready to go here. I think the teams are ready to go. We should be getting started any moment, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, to get this, uh, get the rookie cap running here on VRML one. Same here. So thank you, yeah, everyone there for the hype train, getting ready to see these teams. 
and also the follows for anyone uh, who hasn't yet, you know, considered doing so. Uh, I see kittens don't fart. I don't know if that's scientifically accurate, but thank you for the follow there and for joining the stream, as well as uh, JC3 Live, who's in the game, but also gave us a follow about 13 minutes ago. And yeah, uh, appreciate you guys very much. See Dynasty Killer and Snazzy Man, the most comb, uh, Kitchen San, T Tao. Hope that. Uh, was pronounced correctly. You got Moochie, oh, actually, and Jax, and Wakanda, and yes, what's up? I got to I got to shout out T Tao. He uh, he is. I'm not going to get his actual profession correct, uh, and and if he is here, uh, I apologize. I, it's I, I believe he does something. If he's around, if he's around, he he's can, around. T Tao, uh, tell everyone what you do for a living because I'm going to get it wrong. But uh, he's been looking at uh, exercise therapy. He's an exercise therapist, and he's been looking at developing uh, s exercises specifically for uh, uh, this game, specifically for for folks who play this game. So he's been looking at, you know, what are the common motions of top level play? What are the what you know? How are you straining your body? And in what? Well, my goodness, Gilligan, oh. ten tier one subs, the madman. Oh, he had to interrupt my praising of uh, of Tetal there uh <laughs> with with that wonderfulness uh but yeah dude is he's trying he, he's trying to develop this uh uh kind of a uh an exercise program a stretch a warm-ups program uh to hopefully you know uh cut down on on player injuries uh encourage good health and good practice and uh, i think what he's doing I think what he's doing is exceptionally important, especially when you consider the age of a lot of our players. And uh, so if you see T-Tau around asking questions, uh, looking to, to quiz you or anything, absolutely participate. Cause he's, he's a hundred, he's legit. He knows what he's doing. Uh, I have full confidence in what he's doing. And I'm really excited. We have someone like that uh, now in the community looking to do things like that. I'm excited from uh, the level four hype train courtesy of Gilligan as well. So. Uh, shout that out 10 more times. Definitely deserves it. Thank you so much for that, Gilligan. Of course, again, a, our new governing mod, and obviously very hyped to see some echo action here on VRML1 after a bit of a break. Uh, so, yeah, glad to be back. And uh, the hype there continuing as well. So, uh, thank you guys very much. Once again, I'm Palador, and Sir Dimwi casting alongside me here. Level 4 complete now on the hype train. So, great stuff. Appreciate you guys very much. That's awesome. Especially for our first stream back. How about that? Nightfire uh, not liking not liking the T see we're just trying to just trying to uh, build the anticipation, I suppose. There's these players have actually been ready for the last 20 minutes, but we're just trying to talk it up a ton. And really, really milk the hype train, that's all. <laughs> you can see uh, the players organizing there inside their spawn areas. And uh, actually, uh, Darkness10191, uh, I do believe, is a sub. So we should be getting started here uh, any moment. I have put out uh, one more let's go, let's go <laughs> uh, message in the Discord. And um, we should be getting, I, I imagine we should be getting started here any moment. And uh, I mean, how, how you know, we've got, I mean, this hype train, the game hasn't even started yet. And uh, and, and the, the bits, the, y'all are being just incredibly gracious to us and I, I cannot express how much i appreciate that also it has been a minute so big shout out to asterion oh my gosh uh, you know, <laughs> absolutely the only, grips, <laughs> the only grips that work for me i've been using them for three years uh and I'm, I'm you're gonna hear this a few times today but i did recently i went back and looked at my amazon review uh -huh. for the grips they had for cv1 and I had only one negative thing to say about it, and it was the it was the fastener, and they they fixed that with the S uh, with the S version of it. They 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 uh, is a patent pending fastener. I don't know if the patent is still pending. Uh, either way, it's patented or patent pending, and it works. It's the, they are literally the only grips that work for me. Now I'm not saying other grips don't work because I know there's going to be folks in the chat that say oh, I use these, those work. I use these, they work. They work for you. They do not. They absolutely do not work for me. These are the only grips. I have found that actually work for me. Even uh, other silicone grips, uh, they tend the, the materials to smooth. They try to uh, uh, try to make it uh, less smooth with like they'll put bumps on the, the handle or something. Doesn't work. The Asterion grips, 100%. Uh, they don't slip. They, they don't slip out of my hand. They don't slip on the controller. They're absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I'm just talking about the grips. They make all sorts of stuff. The charging stand that can be double. Uh, if, if you don't have a Quest, it doesn't, you don't need to use it as a charging stand. You just use it as a stand so you're not putting uh, uh, your headset on a, on a dirty counter or anything like that. Or uh, um, 
Uh, they also have uh, headphones. They have grips for all sorts of different products, uh, not just Oculus. They're not Oculus exclusive. So definitely check them out because they're awesome. And uh, I, I absolutely rep them. And uh, Asterion, if you're watching, you need a spokesperson. Sir Demo is here. Well, on that note, Swagor redeeming a billion messages there, highlighted messages, just to ask, has Dimly or Palor tried the disc curve? I want to and I will soon, but have not yet. No, I, I saw some clips of it. Uh, that actually, fun fact, as we do get ready to start this game, so even a funner fact there uh, for you as we get ready. But fun fact, the disc curve used to be unintentionally in, uh, in the game. Uh, accessible at one point, briefly. <laughs> uh, but it's been a good while. So, that said, it's been a good while uh, since we've been in this server. We're happy to start the game here. Breakaways, breaking away into this first play with five guys on the offense. There's unsound and a shot to be found. First two points, 20 seconds in. Yeah, tw uh, uh, yeah, a very quick goal there. Unsound uh, looked like I believe he picked it up from the joust and uh, had the lay and had the space. Went ahead, walked it in. Uh, as he got into the bubble there, the goalie got in the goal. And, uh, but he had plenty of friends around to, to apply that pressure. He was able to bring it in for that, too. And that's our first goal of the uh, Quest 2 Rookie Cup here on the cast. And, oh, that's a quick Ooh. chain there. And just like that, JC3 live with the two. Five guys are up by four. Wish I had my, uh, my eyes on the catapult. But, yeah, it seemed like they maybe got caught up there and just uh, didn't get out fast enough through that window. So with that, closing the window and closing that gap really fast, we're the five guys on the joust. Let's see... Uh, if they can make up for it this time here and break away and joust out, and they just get there this time and uh, send a pass to the tunnel. Now a bounce there, gonna bounce in, picked up quickly by Darkness. This is the, uh, the last minute sub here for Five Guys, sending it into the zone, but Baba Baggins there to get the pickup. But right there, back of the heads of Darkness, playing a solid back line there, sending this one in, trying to get it on sound. No, it's gonna go to JC3 live, looking for a second goal of the game, and he's gonna hit it right through the chest to the goalie for the two. And five guys up by six. Yeah, JC3, and that's three goals for them on five guys. Three, four, five. How about that? And uh, on another note, Kitchen San with a, or Kitchen San with a one month tier one sub. Uh, Gilligan, three more tier one subs. Thank you so much, Gilligan, and a uh, Kitchen. All right, now, oh, almost Ooh. making them pay on that joust again, uh, but we'll go to the midfield. Yeah, JC3 live, looking to make a name for himself here. Took that shot, missed it, picks up the rebound. Now walking in, looking to take another one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Goes up, looking for that cross path, just out of reach of all of uh, unsound there. I keep trying to call him ultrasound. That's so wrong. It's unsound. Uh, but yeah, now picked up there by Baba Baggins, looking to get it out of the zone here, but there into the hands of Darkness. And Darkness trying to find the lights over on the passing play across. Uh, just beyond the nest will be retrieved by JC3. Now he's been a high score, hot hand, trying to find a shot there, but will be snagged by Adon Assassin, I believe you said it was, uh, at least the full name over on the Discord. And with that said, uh, going to go back here to five guys on that rebound deep from a Chaos. Ooh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of, of uh, activity there, but Unsound is going to pick up the beautiful. Look at how that worked out. It, it, the player cleared it Ooh. up. Unsound got the, oh, was that a dusty? It did the dirty there? That was more of an ender, I believe. Dropped the disc completely, <laughs> shielded himself. Uh, that's a very very gnarly move from what is a rookie player showing it here on the rookie t uh, quest cup. And there we go. Oh, Unsound is going to get that one in. Another one on the goalie. It's two from Unsound, two from JC3 Live. And actually, JC3 Live got the, uh, the assist on that one as well. So solid eight-point lead here, two five guys, uh, just uh, just over three minutes in here to round one. And, uh, yeah, breakaways. Uh, you can see they're, they're trying to get that disc out of their zone. They're, they're playing some really solid defense. Their goalie uh, has not left that goal open. Whoops, misgrab. Uh, that was certainly on an accident, uh, but uh, we've all done it. Uh, that's that's not a rookie thing. I, I just did it in a pub the other day, uh, and I felt bad about it. But, uh, yeah, nice dump in here all the way down into the bubble. Going to get very close to the goal. JC3 Live trying to get there. Has a player right behind him. Player, you know what? All right, so JC3, what JC, so JC3 Live had the lane. He took the shot. It was a great play. But I got to give credit uh, to the goalie. I believe that was um, uh, add-on sass in there. Uh, because he, he recognized he wasn't going to win that race, so he tried to cut the lane. He tried to get to the goal before the shot. I got to give him a lot of credit for that one. That's a hard habit to get into, and uh, he's doing it already. That was uh, that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, a fa fantastic attempt there from Add on Sasson, but uh, but uh, just a, a better play there from JC3 Live. Well, now deep into the orange bubble, a good punch uh, there from Unsound. Definitely 
the resounding uh, on that brawl. Just, you know, these players, I can see the chat appreciating uh, the Oh, the skills that they're showing here for, again, being new especially. Ooh. This was the same case with the original Rookie Cup, where we were so impressed back in May with the Quest 1 users coming in and how good they were getting so fast as uh, that was that a Dusty was from a dusty. JC. <laughs> and now getting it over to Unsound on this drive. Oh, and another shot there. Oh. You know, goalie saw it coming in. He, 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 it looked like he was trying to throw himself out and unfortunately threw himself down. Uh, it's something I've done myself. It left the goal open there for Unsound to get that one in on the empty net. Going to go up by 12 here, halfway through round one. And uh, I got to I gotta get the name of this goalie. Was that was that, was that uh, add on Sasson again? Because uh, he might he might be new, but he he, uh, he has a good uh, he has some really good instincts. Ooh. I'm like, I want to say. Look at that snatch, though, from Unsound right out of the air. Uh, just grabbed it off of the attempted pass or clear, and uh, that was all she wrote. 15 on the scoreboard for five guys. Yeah, just an another solid goal there. This, uh, I think that was the first three of the game. Uh, put them up by 15. Uh, so, yeah, four and a half minutes to go here. Now we are uh, approaching. Uh, we might see this around in a little early. We'll find out, though, as this one's going to bounce around the mid there. Picked up by Antheus. Antheus looking to send it in. Unfortunately, takes a bounce off of that stack. They're going to bounce around mid. Uh, a little bit of back and forth there. Does get cleared back into the breakaway zone. All the way down, going to bounce into the bubble. Now, that is add-on Sassin trying to get back there again. Add-on Sassin has been absolutely a stalwart on defense here. Uh, ooh. And, ooh, you know ooh, who's been a stalwart? Wow. That guy. Man. Uh... All these shots, JC3 live. I mean, he's up to eight points now and unsound with nine. So the two of them just doing devastating work on the offensive end of things. Yeah, they're really, they're really, uh, they're, they're doing a little, a little, maybe a little dominating in this one. And you know what? Uh, uh, you know, they're feeling good. Uh, that, that's the kind of thing, you know, even if, uh, even if it's, you know, their first tournament in Echo Arena, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing, because it's the sort of thing we can all look back. You know, I look back, my first tournament was almost three years ago. And I still remember, I still remember the things I learned. I still remember working with uh, uh, with Gob from EU and the things he taught me. And those lessons stay with you. So th this is the kind of stuff, these guys are gonna remember this for their whole time in Echo Arena. Look at that patience oh, though, and the passing there. Uh, us Unsound and JC3 live, the ones we were just talking about a moment ago, uh, doing it again. The assist from Unsound that time, but he was so patient and he was just waiting, waiting to find the angle and the right pass despite the defense right on his toes just about and then once the angle was there and the window was there pass it to the right place then they found the right results and now they're one point away uh, from a potential mercy as jc tries to do just that but just missing well that was an ambitious pass into the bubble there he's trying to get it uh he had a player in uh ready to go no darkness let's pick that one back up great pass there on sound with a great uh adjustment to pick it up coming in two on one he is going to send that one in for the two and uh, it looks like, uh, okay, there looks like the Mercy rule was disabled, so we will continue on. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't believe that's a default setting, but uh, that, that's where we're at. And uh, yeah, so uh, we're gonna continue on. So still two minutes to go here. 21 uh, points up is five guys currently. Yeah, so uh, I guess continuing in that case, uh, but in any case, 21 for five guys, definitely a lot more than 21. People calling out that top pocket on the shot. I mean, yeah, they've been just, precise you can see the coach here late toast cheering on uh, from the sideline from the tunnel of course the coaches here sphinx and late toast i just saw someone in chat uh, asking about those so they're not playing actively they're just there for the, the guidance oh and also early a note now uh, uh, uh hasco pointed this out in chat and uh, she had mentioned it to me earlier i just i happen to forget about it uh waiting for the game uh this team breakaways uh was actually they they kind of they, they were uh i don't know if they changed their name but they were uh, they kind of had uh, their their coach, their original coach, and two of their players kind of disappear on them uh, the last minute. So two players came in, and Sphinx came in all at the last minute uh, to, to to allow them to to continue to play. So that's uh, you know, just a big shout out to these guys for coming uh, coming in and, and and just doing it and and getting in to play in this uh, tournament because uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's always fun. Even you know your first tournaments are always fun. It's kind of not even about the score. It's just getting that competitive experience because that's what's important because now that you have that experience you can build off of that and move forward yeah absolutely can and uh now with the last minute winding down in this first round here it's going to be a, a firm victory for five guys but again you know with, uh, with these teams all coming in brand new i mean uh, 
the important thing and the big takeaway you got to remember is just like then we said earlier you know looking back at some of the uh, original games that we played I, I know you can look at uh, back at some of the ones that i played uh in 2017 and i mean the game is just so different so evolved now the skill level higher than ever and uh, already these players hasco pointing out that a couple of players here on breakaway are actually uh, just new to the game within the last week or, or so or last few weeks so that alone i mean just a testament you know seeing uh, how good they're still doing them they're mobile and uh, even though they can't get the scoring through i mean They've still attempted some passes. I, they're still attempting the good position. You can see it right there. I mean, it's just a matter of time well, uh, until they put together those fundamentals into something more cohesive. But, you know, you really like to see those first steps being taken here. And I, I'd like to point out, I mean, so we, we hit that 21 points there with a little over two minutes to go there. It, over those two minutes, there's only one more goal. Uh, and that's notable. That's, that's uh, as you pointed out, Breakaway is kind of uh, nailing down those fundamentals. And, and uh, I also, like I, I've been talking about, um, the way add-on assassin has been playing that back line uh their defense has been there um and it's just uh yeah the other team was just able to, to sneak through uh in those moments but uh yeah it's it's uh i mean there's like i said those last two minutes uh really you know you saw breakaways really slow down the scoring efforts there from five guys they almost got uh, an opportunity or two of their own and uh yeah i'm curious to see how they perform here in the uh, going into the second round, as I do believe I have a pause, so we might have a few minutes here uh, between rounds. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's just a great showing there from five guys. I mean, you look at the stats there, JC3 live with 12 points, on sound with 11. You got assists across the board there. Uh, yeah, just a well, well played there by five guys in that first round. Yeah, absolutely. And I uh, see Galactic Point are asking about maybe Smurf involved. Well, uh, Hasco and in conjunction with Rad there, uh, credit to them, uh, verified, you know, that, that these players have been in it since uh, September 1st was the cutoff to be considered a rookie for this cup. But, yeah, I mean, you know, the difference between a two-week, three-week player and a two-month player could be huge, uh, just the same way as a two-month player and a two-year player uh, is it can be huge. But going back to what I was saying, the gap just closing more and more, uh, thanks to there being so much content out there and so much high-level play to watch these days uh, across so many uh, channels and matches that it, it's really uh, you're seeing a lot of players learn so much faster as it continues to go mainstream uh, and and figuring out how to play this sport a keyword sport uh, because if you played sports at all traditionally in real life you'll fit into echo rather quickly i think it's very very uh, alike and akin to what a real life sport is like you know that's the, the passing, the positioning, it's, it's fantastic, all of it. And just to also say, uh, yeah, Hasco saying she did vet the players, and I just, uh, uh, you know, you and I, we, we've casted how many games? Literally, actually, if you combine them, it's over a thousand, but yeah. uh, uh, of course, I, I will say, if you combine them, it's over a thousand, because uh, <laughs> uh, Powder has done quite a few more than me. But literally, I mean, together, hundreds, hundreds of games, I can assure anyone, anyone here, I will tell you right now, there are no Smurfs in this game. Uh, just from the spot check, just from watching the game, there, there, there's there's no Smurfs here. This is a fair game. Uh, it, it, it's, it might just be down to the fact, like I said, um, uh, the, the uh, 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 breakaways was a half a team last night. You know, they, we, they got together just so they could perform and just so they could play, you know, and that's that's what this is about. This It's about playing. Uh, you know, it, yeah, there's prizes if you win, uh, but the real thing here is just getting everybody uh into their first competitive experience and i i earnestly believe that everybody here is having their first competitive experience uh, well they're in echo arena um, <laughs> yeah first yeah probably the first long form tournament for the majority of players here uh, there's a lot of community events going on on any given week basically but and you love to see it uh, love to see that growth and activity but yeah for a lot just like the first rookie cup back in may uh, it's it's the first time for a lot of players and it's always going to be an adjustment process going from you know the public uh, public match experience into the more organized competitive setting which is why we do have the coaches here as well on the teams to kind of help it along uh, now also with our viewers tuning in here again thank you so much for uh, tuning in and for the hype trains the bits the subs all of the above and just being here in itself for those not familiar with the uh, VR Master League and we're going into our third season in this new year once again on January 4th is when we start season three uh, VRML is community-ran uh, everywhere 
from the casting level to the mods, the, the governing mods, and the board uh, itself. Uh, this is all VR community grassroots uh, VR, VRML for these last several years, and this last uh, one year in, in, as part of Echo Arena has, uh, again, just been built on the backs of the, the passionate players and casters and moderators alike. So, you know, for those who wish to join it, on the player side of things, it's open to all levels. Uh, for Now, we're doing Master Tier a little bit different this season, but granted, uh, for the rest you know, of players wanting to come in, don't be intimidated thinking that you can't play just because you're new or because you're maybe a little bit more on the casual side. You don't want to be scrimming all the time necessarily. That's okay. Uh, <clears throat> we ended last season with nearly 180 teams active you know, weekly. And with that, on the ladder system, you're going to be matched against other teams similar to you. So if you take it seriously and you, you're scrimming three times a week, uh, you'll probably end up playing against teams like that. If you're uh, just kind of treating it like a more casual league, like a kind of bowling league where, you know, you just show up once or twice a week and play, uh, you can do that too. The matches are all flexibly scheduled there. So you're given two matches e at the beginning of each week. And uh, then the team's organized to play that match pretty much any time of day for over those next six days. And, and uh, that, sorry. And better yet, as Dimwi alluded to earlier, you're going to get casted. Uh, at least if I have anything to say about it, if we have anything to say about it, you know, that's the thing I love most about this experience so far is the fact that we do get to showcase so many. So for those tuning in for this Rookie Cup and for the rookies playing in this Rookie Cup, uh, this is very unlikely to be the last time you're casted today. So join VRML, you'll get featured, you'll get seen, and you'll have a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, as I was as I was uh, rudely interrupting you, uh, they just <laughs> uh, uh, unpaused uh, the game. So we have uh, probably just about 30 seconds before we get back in here. Also, there's a question about uh, is there a combat league? And uh, there is, it's not run by VRML. It's called Echo uh, Echo Combat Flamingo League. A uh, Robo creator uh, runs that. He's a great dude. He's really passionate about it. And I saw Hasco uh, dropped a link in the chat there. If you're interested in that, go ahead. Those guys, uh, they're always looking for more people uh, uh, to play there. Now, of course, it, it's not available for quests or anything. So I feel bad advertising it, but if that is something you're capable of doing and you want to do it, go check it out. Robo creator is an awesome guy. All right, well, now as this Joust runs out, and also agreed on RoboCrater, uh, love the guy too, met him at OC6, and uh, yeah, so go check that out for sure. But check this out, we've got the round two underway. Darkness with a disc trying to find a pass over there to JC, uh, that hot hand from the last round just evading his hands as he collects it up at the top of the trap. That's JC3 there with it, sending it down to Unsound. That's the uh, the dynamic duo here in this one. Unsound taking a long shot there. Uh, and that was a nice shot coming from uh, nine meters out for the three. 31 seconds in, that's our first goal of round two. Yeah, got it right there, kind of around the, the knees, sort of, uh, just trying to paint those, those corners as close as they can. And for the rookie players, you'll notice that from the experienced players of this league, the master tier. And, and so on. Uh, they, they will absolutely target specific spots in the goal to try and just make it right out of the reach of the goalies, whether it's at the, the hands or above the hands, above the head or the feet. Uh, targeted offense is a thing, and we've seen some of that here today. Uh -oh. That was a clear that went off ahead. It's still uh, kind of moving deeper into the five guys zone here, but it will ultimately pick, be picked up by Unsound there. Unsound looking to send that one forward, uh, hooks that one. Could I bounce off the lip of the tube there picked up now by darkness darkness uh he's been playing a really solid uh midline i would say backline yeah. but they do have a goalie back uh chaos kai is in goal there uh so it's really a midline he's been playing and he's been very solid at ooh, ooh. there's a steal there jc3 coming in empty goal taking the shot hits a three from seven meters out and that's gonna put them up by six yeah jc3 again true to the name gets the three gets his team uh, on the board, six points now. I mean, continuing to rock and roll here as Breakaway go on to the Joust. See, uh, there's Sphinx in the tunnel hanging out as watches his team. Uh, there's Adon trying to find a clear, perhaps, but it does actually bounce right to Baba Baggins. And that name, I love it. No, picked up by Darkness there once again. Yeah, he's playing that... Uh... That he's playing a really solid. It, it, they almost have a, a kind of a two, two stages running there. Five guys. They have a uh, darkness on the back line, and then they have uh, um, uh, their their goalie chaos Kai playing way back. And uh, they're just kind of letting uh, JC three and Unsound 
Uh, just they're they're letting them loose. Uh, I would say as they go up by eight now. Yeah, kind of on a similar uh, pace to this second round for five guys so far. They had a very offensively dominant first round, and uh, that said, just uh, missing the disc on the first launch. But luckily for them. There were no five guys there to interfere, but just as I say that, there is Unsound uh, trying to find a connection to JC, but just beyond the reach. Yeah, just out of reach, but JC3 does pick it back up off of that flat bounce. Ooh, Ooh shot nice. there, and add on Sasson with a clutch save there. I've been waiting for that, and he does get the grab there and gets it cleared all the way down into the five guys bubble. It's gonna be a race for it, although Darkness is already there. Darkness has been so good on that back line. Trying to clear that one out, getting it up. JC3 trying to track it down, but no, Antheus MG. Antheus picks that one up, goes for a back pass. What a reset there to Baba Baggins. Sending it up, long shot there, but it's gonna be Chaos Kai with the grab. Chaos trying to send that one out, gonna bounce around mid as Add-on Sassin tries to track it down. And shout out to Antheus on the, those plays, even though they didn't get the goal by the end of it as that shot just uh, grazes the barrier and bounces back. But Antheus, he is positioning there and is, uh, he got a short boost that really helped pressure the defense and result in now more defense coming in from Adon again. So back to back and he is the Don on defense. And, and, and Dimwi is gone. Uh, unsound here with the disc though, losing it to Jeff. And uh, over here to Darkness, rather, intercepted. And right back out again. You'll have to see the defense though, from these players. And maybe was, the defense was so good, it uh, it left Dimwi speechless. Of course, a great goalie in his own right. Uh, Absolutely. On speechless. Nova. <laughs> uh, so as Dimwi gets back in here, how's it going? Now we got JC3 with the disc, and he's going to send it, not miss, right on the corner of the goal. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, just another one there from uh, JC3, another one assisted by Unsound. These are going to be two players to watch today. Uh, now, I don't believe, uh, I don't know if we're going to be following them into the next game. I, it, that, that wasn't the original plan, but we did start kind of late, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how that works out. But, uh, yeah, these, these two might be the pair to watch. They could be the, the you know, uh, an offensive pair that can uh, uh, push their team. Uh, I, I, you know, part of me wants to say carry, but it's not a carry. Like I said, I mean, that back line, that defense, Darkness and uh, Chaos Kai have just not been letting anything through. And yeah. uh, so, you know, you, and you need that. It's you know, Your teams are, are multifaceted. you got to have a good offense, good defense, and good mid play. And uh, so far, five guys have been covering all, four, all three of those areas. And JC3, I know we've said his name a lot, and, and chat is a... Uh... You know, definitely well familiar with the name now, but all of his shots, even if you look at them, so many of them, most of them have been around corners or edges of the goal at the very least. I mean, he's he's definitely making a conscious effort, smartly so, to not just throw it at the center of mass of the goalkeepers. Uh, and now just trying to find the center of mass in the goal. That was uh, unsound from up high. Yes, another solid, another solid goal there from unsound. Uh, yeah, they're going to go up by 14 here. Now, we did see breakaways did slow down the scoring there for a short time, but it looks like uh, five guys have kind of found their footing once again. They're really uh, they're really pushing uh, pushing these in. And uh, so now it's add-on Sassin again. I, I really, I, you know, I, this is add-on Sassin. I'm going to be watching this kid. Uh, I say kid. I don't I have no idea if he's a kid. He could be he could, he could be a 35-year-old man. I have no idea. But, uh, yeah, you know, he's he's been so good in, in the goal here. He's been for, for breakaways that, uh, you know, he's he's always there. They, you know, that's one of the hardest habits to get into uh, playing the back line is, is maintaining that presence in goal. And uh, he's been he is he's been there, basic for I'd say ninety percent of these goals he's been there for them. Uh, so and that's that's the first thing you need to develop, and he's got it. So I'm really interested in uh, how far he can go. Oh, and you talk about presence. How about the gift wrap assist there, from again that that pair JC and Unsound. They've both been really doing some work here. Uh, see Twitch there, with the the Smurf accusations. But that said, I mean watching these players, I feel like this is realistic play for uh, if they're. They're two-month-old players. I mean, there's JC with another assisted conversion from Unsound, but I mean, this is this we saw this in the, the first Quest Cup too, where th there were players who had only been playing for one to two months and executing things kind of like this. Now, you know, for Breakaway, as Haskell mentioned, there's a couple players in here who are only a couple weeks uh, old to the game. So, you know, I don't know the whole roster here of five guys and how long they've all been playing, but I mean, 
they're impressive for sure, but I, I think it's kind of within the realm of uh, normalcy from what we've actually seen from rookies in both Quest One and Quest Two. You know what I get? You know what I honestly get from the uh, from the Smurf accusations is JC Three is going to rewatch this game and feel really good about his play. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, he should. Absolutely. Uh, unsound there trying to make a move on the goal, but Antheus with a nice grab. Now trying to send it over to the bow tie, it looks like, to uh, reach Baggins, and it actually does eventually recover as he sends it through the tunnel. And uh, now just need to find some boost if they can, much like Five Guys do here with uh, Darkness and JC. And a good clear out. That one's going to bounce all the way down. A couple of fortunate bounces. Add-on was trying to get there. Wasn't able to as that last bounce took it away from him. And, you know, that was great positioning. He got in there. It looks like he even thought he got the save, which he might have. Uh, goalie ping advantage has not been uh, has not been uh, deployed yet. So uh, he could have gotten the save, and it went in anyways. And just a great shot there by Unsound. You got to take what advantages you have. Uh, and they are now up by 20. Yeah, and with uh, this launch now, a technical mercy but again that rule apparently uh, deactivated for at some point or another but either way the game winding down with a nice assisted oop there alley oop to jc3 so that will be uh, with 120 left here on the clock i mean just look at that you got the speedy stack which we've seen a few times here to cause a turnover and they will make the play finishing it off i love to see the assist though so uh, with that, Adon here grabs the disc, tries to send it up on the pass. I mean, good, again, good positioning and recognition here from Breakaway's team. Antheus needing to get that through. There's a lot of defense up in the way, and Darkness eventually swoops in, but now swooping back is Baba Baggins. So great grab from Baggins. Trying to get one uh, in the bag, that is to say, in the goal, and it just might be, oh, and it is Baba Baggins, the three. What and a there it bounce. Is. Yeah, finally, they get, they, they get that first goal. And you know, it, it, this is one of those times, like, it, it, we can look at the score and we can look at the clock and go, oh, you know, okay. But you, those guys, they are feeling really good about that one right now because they earned it. You know, they, they earned it uh, uh, in the face of this adversity. They, they were able to earn that goal and uh, you see how fast they came out there. They're feeling good after that one, uh, regardless yeah. of the goal. They want to get one more. They don't want to end this uh, at this score. They want one more. And you can see how aggressive they were playing. That's why Add-on wasn't in the goal there for this last one. Uh, they got very aggressive there. They really wanted just one more there. Uh, yeah, but no, it will ultimately be five guys taking this in two. JC wanted three more and got it as the clock does expire there. So 25 uh, to three here in the second round. It will be the two-round sweep. Uh, and yeah, five guys definitely impressing here. Coached by Late Toast. Breakaway. Uh, again, they, they worked very hard for it. They had some good positioning and pass attempts, just trying to tie it all together with the chemistry and uh, put that you know together. This is a double elimination tournament, that said, so uh, we'll still have some more chances to come back as uh, we do go on to the next uh, round here soon of the, the tournament today. Yeah, sorry. I am, uh, you know, I, uh, yeah, no, this is, uh, this is good stuff. Very good stuff. So with that, I'll take you to the stats screen there and give you a, kind of a look at what's going on. And we're probably going to head off to an intermission uh, just after this and kind of figure out where we're going because there was some delays uh, to start this game. So we'll kind of adjust on the fly. Not a problem. But with that said, just big performance, uh, obviously, there on the offensive side from JC3, 28 points and four assists along with the 15 stuns. Uh, 14 shot attempts. I mean, definitely some volume and some very good high percentage conversions. At Unsound with 20 points and 6 assists. 3 steals, 28 stuns. Uh, for Darkness, he had 2 assists, 1 save, 1 steal, and 6 stuns. So, putting stats in in uh, all the all the, uh, the glue categories there. With uh, some assists and saves. And then uh, for Chaos Kai, was an assist and a couple stuns as well. For breakaway side of things, was three saves for Adana Assassin and two stuns for Antheus. He had 15 stuns and a steal. Baba Baggins with a save, a steal, six stuns. Hi, I'm Jeff with 33 stuns. Uh, hi, I'm mean. He's mean. That is a lot of stuns there to lead the way among this game. So uh, with that, congrats to five guys for moving on on the two rounds. Now, Dimwi and I are going to take just a brief intermission here, hopefully brief intermission, and uh, we'll be back to you with the continuation of this tournament here. So thank you and stay tuned.
right, everybody, welcome back once again here to the Quest 2 Rookie Cup. I'm Palador. I got Sir Dimwi here, and we've got the game about to begin here rather shortly. Uh, Dimwi, we got Monstars and Fire Ferrets, and you uh, recognize some familiar faces here. Yeah. Uh, well, one face in particular, obviously, uh, you got Technowebs there on the left coaching uh, Monstars. And then uh, it's uh, JJ underscore O there on the right coaching fire ferrets. And uh, yeah, Monstars. So uh, on the Monstars, you got uh, Otaku Boy, uh, no relation to Ateku, who, who doesn't go by Ateku anymore. Uh, I'm not going to expose who he is now. But uh, uh, Big Rome 57, Toxic with a zero, and uh, T Tau. Uh, I was just talking about T Tau uh, earlier. I was giving him big reps there. Uh, he is an exercise therapist and uh he's been making some moves in the community and i am uh, I'm, I'm just so excited for what he's been able to, uh what he's been looking at doing and then they're on the right in the blue fire ferrets uh they this is actually their second game so it's uh, uh monstar's first game uh they got a buy in the first round this is fire ferrets second game they were able to beat um uh, i just had the name of the team in my head and i just forgot it uh they were able to beat floaty noobs uh led by block Sling and bricky the block Sling and bricky the and, yes. uh, that, yeah the and a uh, fire ferrets there on the on the right and blue uh parker call day darth citrus wolf and twig the savage as we get started here for round one all right well, here we go second a uh, second round of the brackets that is a say in round one of this match underway fire ferrets and blue monsters here on orange uh, there's T Tau, who we saw there getting it snagged and saved by Parker. Parked up inside the goal for defense and really nice uh, defensive effort there. Yeah, now uh, uh, handled by Otaku uh, there on the back line. Looking to send this one in. Nice pass there. Beautiful pass to T Tau. Yeah. T Tau now moving in here on the right side. Uh, has some space. He's going to keep on walking. Nice cross pass there. Just a little bit too far ahead there of Otaku. Just looking to uh, track that one down. Under pressure there. Nice move though. Gets away from the defender. Over to Toxic. Oh, another one just out of reach. But, you know, look at what they're trying to set up here. Uh, this is some fantastic coordination. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Is, oh, opportunity <laughs> here. Otaku is going to bring it in for the two. That's our first goal of round one. 55 seconds in. Monsters are up by two. I, yeah, I can give you about uh, 10 good things <laughs> they they did on that possession there for Monstars. The positioning, uh, the the pass recognition. I mean, I know they went past uh, the hands a few times, but I mean, they were throwing it to the right areas. They were positioned very well uh, to get those rebounds even when they did miss. I mean, they did a lot of great things to make that goal happen. So effective first two points. Maybe some more coming as uh, T-Tau does. Uh, grab that disc off a steal at the mid zone, waiting for his teammates to approach here, and now finding a nest pass. Again, the great positioning and uh, execution there. Well, executing him with a stun, though, was Darth Citrus. I love that name. That's such a great name, Darth Citrus. As uh, now Twig with it here. Twig going to send this one in. And uh, it does remind me of Citrus, although Switch Citrus, I don't believe, is Citrus anymore. Uh, I believe she's gone back to, to Sammy or B Sammy, but either way, uh, it's going to be Darth Sister Sam with it. Look, oh, what a grab there by Big Rome. Stop that one from going in. Just a quick grab down there to the side, able to stop that one, send it all the way out. What a chain there. T Town with it. Long shot. Oh, just wide. But still gets a rebound. Look at the alley oop as well to Otaku and T Town with a nice assist after the rebound off the missed shot. Again, there's so many good things you can point out that they did there uh, starting with the defense on the other side of the floor right i mean it was a three-point shot granted from fire ferrets on a goalie but it was still a very fast shot and placed at the at the uh the corners so it was still a tough one they still saved it and turned it into offense just a lot of a uh, lot of good things being shown great things being shown here as fire ferrets now trying to capture their first couple points of this match or maybe first few even as parker uh gets it over there darth citrus as well now it's on the clear so brawls happening in the midfield and as well in the trench all these players piling on top of each other and t tau just trying to get it out of there and does manage to find otaku so again great stuff on uh, all this well positioned offense here yeah, now some uh, T Tau able to pick up that uh, bounce in. He's going to send a nice pass there to Otaku. Nice back pass to T Tau. And he does I love it. get it. That was phenomenal there, these guys. The coordination is absolutely fantastic. You know, and it's one of those things I was going to say it earlier. Uh, it's one of those, when I'm working with nice. teams, sometimes uh, it's, you know, it, it's, 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 there's kind of a multi facets there. Oh, T Tau opportunity sends it in, does hit it for the two. They're up by six. 
but uh yeah it's it's you know there's there's multiple facets to the game and just because you know it's it's like someone say oh, I'm, I'm i'm just in i'm just in bronze tier that does not speak to your individual ability and it also doesn't speak to your team's ability maybe it's uh, maybe you're all new players but your team's ability like what, what we're seeing here is just is on your your strategies are all right your your passings are all uh, uh where they should be and uh there it is another uh one there as it looked like maybe an accidental grab coming out of the tubes left that uh the disc uh, uh just kind of sitting up there but uh, yeah, no, uh, what we're seeing from, from, from Monstar so far, that coordination, you know, it, you see it, the, the passes are there. It's just a matter of, of, uh, of solidifying that, uh, you know, that aim, hitting them, you know, hitting them where you want, sending them where you want them to go. It yeah, just takes a little absolutely, practice. Absolutely. And you know, for Monstars, they're really looking like a well-practiced team at the moment. Must say those passes are looking smooth and uh, they're just doing the right things at the moment, but you know, maybe it can play out like the movie there. Talk about movies earlier. Well, Space Jam's the one I watched. Uh, never know. I can see that, that Toon Squad comeback here before too long as an attempted handoff there to Tito uh, from Toxic. Could have been nice. Still might be as he gets the disc back, so they'll have another attempt. And there is the assist from Otaku to Tito. The celebration yeah, as well. <laughs> You know, they're feeling good, you know, because this is, like I said, this is Monstar's first game. And, and you know, you kind of, when you haven't played yet, you know, maybe you've played some, uh, some, some, uh, uh, some scrims, but when you haven't actually been in that competitive game yet, it's kind of hard to judge where your team sits as far as ability. You kind of need to get into that experience and so their first game is against a team that's already won so you know there's certainly a nervousness going in like are we going to be good enough to play this team that's already proven that they can win a game and uh so far monstar is Ooh. feeling pretty good as otaku gets another one but again how do, how do they get that goal you might be asking uh especially if watching this back in the vods uh, for the rookies who do just look at that again the well positioned plays because even on the missed shot and I, I i know i say this ad nauseum on these streams but especially for a rookie cup i think it's important to note it you know on offense especially right center left you cover each lane if you can uh, because even if passes and shots miss when it bounces off a miss if you're positioned to left right and center you're going to have someone in the area a lot of the time to get a rebound and that's kind of what happened they missed it but it bounced back towards the barrier the center and they found the uh, center of the goal Ooh. nice grab there by otaku the twig was looking to send a pass there to uh look like uh to parker and uh, uh yeah this uh <laughs> this this uh monsters team techno webs you know this was uh also worthy of note for anyone watching techno webs was the or excuse me uh, monsters were the first team in the rookie cup uh to form together uh to sign up to get registered and everything so it, it's not too much of a surprise that they're this coordinated because they definitely had a lot of time to work together and it's clear techno ups has been putting the time in with these guys uh because this coordination this is uh this is phenomenal strategic stuff we're seeing we, that that last shot to tap there was so close that was almost another goal there uh but yeah otaku back in possession here for monsters and uh right there's a nice grab from wolf who was also linked up with uh, Parker, I believe, earlier on, on the stack attempt. I'm trying to play some mobile defense if they can. There it is again. See Twig converging along with Parker on the offensive player there for Orange side, the Monstars. And uh, they will actually get a, well, force a turnover, it looks like, as it sails way into the Orange zone. Uh, but waiting there in the bubble now. Three Orange players, see if they get their first, uh, and they will. And I just want to I just want to say uh, uh, there's some accusations of carrying in the chat there. And uh, if you look at the stats, I'm not seeing a carry here. I'm seeing some fantastic team coordination because uh, that's what's happening here. This is a, 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 a nice send up opportunity here. Twig coming in. Twig. Oh, no, the dig. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. They were so close. Uh, but that's fantastic pass in the feed in there. You got the one on one with the goalie. Uh, this is some fantastic work we're seeing from both teams. The defense here from Monsters is just as impressive as their offense so far. Nice backline play there by Darth Citrus, though. In the right spot, there was Citrus see, playing the, those lanes uh, expertly. And they're going to be able to get this disc back now and spreading off now for the pass. So I like that. Even though they, they kind of clumped up for a moment, uh, they immediately separated to try and find some lanes if they could. Uh, that said, great coverage from Monsters here. They're going to do some damage with some brawls, cause a bit of trouble. And kind of anyone's disc now as it floats chaotically back and forth in and out of that bubble. 
Oh, and uh, that is not a drop there. I do believe uh, uh, the coach for fire ferrets just went into spec mode, which is allowed. Uh, you're allowed to go in and out of spec uh, if, if, if uh, yeah, if, if, if you desire. Uh, that, so so don't think anybody just dropped there. Looks like we're still full strength, 4v4. And other coaches want to get in a, a better look at the action downfield as, uh, you know, he's stuck in the tubes back there. Probably couldn't see a lot of what was going on. And then there's a clear and I think boost attempt they're going for there, T-Tail. Look at that, uh, Otaku and T-Tail getting down the floor just in a blink of an eye, uh, really well aware of their positioning. Look at the pass, too. I mean, he could have probably still taken it in himself, T-Tail, that is, but just decided, you know what, I don't have the great momentum. I got a teammate, though, and that's just pure chemistry at work. And you can tell these guys have been practicing. They have been practicing their 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 uh their boosting. I mean, you can tell. You can tell when teams have been practicing their boosting and you can tell that the monsters have been practicing that uh, uh in private, probably maybe even playing some pubs together. Oh, what wow. a grab. What a grab. That was that was clutch. Oh, Otaku is going to get an opportunity here coming in, looking for that long shot going to do the push. That's how you do it. That's how you do it right there. You see, he didn't go for a big overhand shot, nothing, no rocketing it in. He went for the sure points. He knew there was a chance if he went over, you know, if he, if he went too crazy with that shot, it, it wouldn't have gone in. So he went with the safe push. That's what we teach a lot of the new rook and a lot of the new players coming in, a lot of the rookies. We teach them, you know, when you're first starting out, you want to get that three, just push it. Don't throw it, push it. And that's what he did. Great goal there. And our monsters are going to take round one yeah. uh, over firefighters. Just push it. Salt and Peppa approved. I'm going to continue with my old references. I think I'm getting uh, getting to the boomer territory, didn't we? But that's okay. 17-0. Uh, Monstars looking super, super good and coordinated there. Uh, for Fire Ferrets, unable to get some scores. I still saw nice things uh, on the, you know, attempted, again, the attempted passing angles. They were playing uh, the lanes when they did get an offense on the orange side. It was just kind of a tough going in terms of getting those conversions. You know, you saw the ding as well. So... With that, uh, always just a matter of time, you know, until they can find uh, find the results they're looking for. But the ideas are correct, and we'll see uh, what happens in round two if we do get that that monsters uh, and Toon Squad esque com uh, comeback from Fire Ferrets, maybe. Maybe because you know what, Fire Ferrets did not look bad at all. They really didn't. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 one of those things. This is that kind of game that you know if you're just if you if your if your team's coordination is just a little bit better just a little just by a little bit it doesn't even have to be a lot just a little bit it, you can start running away with goals yeah and uh you know and that's kind of that's i believe that's what we're seeing here because I, I you know uh, fire ferrets uh uh their coordination was there their communication is excuse me their their communication is clearly there it's clear they're talking to each other it's clear that they know what they're uh that they know what's going on around them and uh, they're trying to—they're they're not clumping. Uh, they're trying to, to, to get those pass formations going. Uh, Fire ferrets are, are. There's a reason they won that first round, and I can see the reason for that. But yeah, just small stars. I think just have a little bit. Oh, oh no! Oh wow! What a uh, fortunate turn of events there, as uh, Fire ferrets are able to get that win off that joust. Well, you know, it's it's a recurring thing we see a lot. The teams uh, on any level trying to balance the speed with the accuracy on the stack. So for that one, the Monstars were there first, and they're first on this uh, this attempt. But it was just those those bounces off the Geo that did them in. Now, that said, it still gets into the blue bubble here where Fire Ferrets recover. Uh, Wolf sends a clear out that just bounces astray towards the side panel. And now over by the wedge, a two-on-one forming there. And uh, Darth punching one but getting stunned by the other as it gets cleared. And all that bounce, you know, some of that Geo just is not forgiving. When, when you don't get a clear, clear, I know that's redundant. When you don't get a clear, clear, uh, some of those bounces send it right back in, but they pick it up. They get it sent all the way down into the Monstars bubble there. Uh, that is uh, the goalie coming out. Uh, uh, excuse me, big Rome coming out to try to play that. Wasn't able to get the hands, so it's going to find the hands are there of Darth Citrus. Darth Citrus on the far side there as a the team setting up around the bubble. A beautiful setup around the bubble, but unfortunately that pass takes a bounce off the crows, and that's going to get picked up and sent out back towards mid, although it looks like uh, it will be Parker getting there first. And now another Ooh. opportunity here for Fire Ferrets. Ooh, that was smooth, that handoff pass. Will it get them the points? It Ooh. will. So Wolf assisting Darth. Uh, hockey assist though to the other two players as well because that was uh, phenomenally executed. And they get on the board first now for Fire Ferrets after going scoreless in the first round. Yeah, for them, they got to love to see that. 
What's that? I was just saying it. I was just saying, you know, it, 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 just that little bit of extra coordination can be what uh, uh, gets, gives a team a runaway. And that the, the, the skill difference here wasn't that extreme. And uh, we see it there that with, with Fire Ferrets getting that first goal, we're almost two two minutes in. Monstars are still scoreless here, down by two now. And uh, yeah, very curious to see uh, if uh, Fire Ferrets can maintain uh, this level of coordination, this level of pressure, although that's a beautiful setup there. Otaku looking for a, uh, that was a very low percentage goal oh, shot. Oh, wow. Wow. What? Yeah, no, oh. Otaku just nodding his head like, yeah, see, I meant to do that. That that first miss, no big deal. Just he wound right back around the barrier, turned the corner, and then hit the corner of the goal that is uh, for the two to two tie. Nice. That was just, that was a gorgeous recovery there. I mean, that's, you know, you, you can't, you cannot ask for better bounces. <laughs> that was right to where it needed to be. He got right to where he needed to be, connects with that disc, is able to send that one in. Now this one bouncing dangerously near goal. Uh, goalie coming out to challenge him, and maybe a little bit too late. Oh, is, oh, can't quite get that pick up, but it is gonna be toxic. His teammate picking it up, sending that one into that trap there. Bit of a race for it. It's gonna be picked up by Wolf. Wolf, uh, no relation to Wolf 23. Uh, from Ignite, who I, I, I apparently uh, pronounce his name like Wolf, but it's Wolf. Now, Wolf with no number, Wolf Dash here. Uh, this one is going to send in, get a really clean bounce off that back wall, get it, find its way all the way back towards mid. Now in the trap, it's going to be Twig picking it up, trying to say, oh, what a grab there. Ooh, and then the straight fling right towards that barrier, had a teammate awaiting, and he'll eventually recover it. So there's T-Tow and gets Ooh. in the goal again. So T-Tow saw him in the Twitch chat earlier on, and now we're just seeing him uh, convert on some goals very nicely across these two rounds on stream. I'd also like to point out uh, the movie did there. Now, it wasn't, you wouldn't call that a juke, but it was a juke. The way he pushed off uh, the, the Geo going a different direction than, than the way he came in. And the defense was, was, was kind of in a chase pattern there. So they never actually caught up to him. They were chasing him, or they were chasing him the whole way in instead of trying to predict that, that behavior of him going towards the goal. And that's what gave him all that extra space uh, to get the one-on-one -on -one with the goalie there. Beautiful move by Tito. And creating some extra space there for Fire Ferrets. A little bit of a duck it looked like trying to find now the recovery. They do. And now they have a goal, but Ooh. will just be snagged out of there by Big Rome right in front of his big dome. And that will be sent on a clear through to the blue zone. Going to take a bounce. And uh, now just awaiting the stacks to return. Yeah, uh, uh, that is uh, I'm trying to figure out. I think it's Dar Citrus. It is. Dar Citrus uh, is able to pick that one up. And gets it clear. Oh, nice pass there, actually, to, to the midfielder. Wolf. Wolf now looking to move this one in. Has some space to work with. Looking to walk. Has teammates boosting in. They're looking at a three-on-one here on the goalie. Goalie is under pressure. They walk it in. They're going to plant it. And it's a tie game here halfway through round two. How about this from Fire Ferrets? The, again, the execution there, the connections are there that you mentioned. Uh, finding that time, not an assist necessarily, although the pass at midfield was nice, but... Just the patience to work it up the floor, recognizing that uh, for Fire Ferrets, you know, they had teammates coming along uh, in, a, in a moment. So they didn't rush the shot. They waited until the highest percentage shot was available, which is to say a walk-in on the uh, very bothered goalie. And now this one, it's getting set in, but uh, it was not able to be handled by the orange player there. I didn't catch the name, but Dar Citrus picks it up. Dar Citrus has been doing exceptionally well on the back line here. We've seen some, you, you know I love good oh. defense. Uh, uh, that that was something, but it, uh, <laughs> not in, it was a ding. Uh, it bounces out, it's gonna be picked up there by Toxic. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, you know I love good defense and I've been seeing some some fantastic defenders play today. Uh, we got some real up and coming goalies. And uh, as anyone knows, goalies are always, uh, always in demand. And oh, yeah. what a stop there by uh, Otaku. Wow, uh, he's been playing exceptionally well. Nice chain, T-Tow with it. T-Tow gonna dump this one in. That's a flat bounce if they, oh, not quite. I thought it was gonna be flat. As uh, it's gonna be Otaku does pick it up. Otaku is gonna send it in and they're up by two. Hey, that, that shot wasn't flat at all. That just straight boost down the field. Now, even with a bounce, a little awkward bounce, it still enabled them to have the numbers and the positional advantage to secure that goal. So they, yeah, will pull ahead by two here. But look at this, 17-0 to zero in round one, going favor of Monstars. It's only a two-point margin of difference now uh, in the second round. Now, might be oh. increasing here <laughs> as a little wave. But no, saying goodbye to the disc apparently on that miss uh, will still be recovered though, and another open goal.
You could tell he wasn't expecting to get that steal because the moment he got it, the, the excitement there, I know that excitement. I've done it before. I yeah. did it again. Actually, it was just recently. I just did that the other day where I got this. I was at a pub. It was it was actually a nice high level pub. You know, you don't always get those. I got one of those and uh, someone was just trying to sneak by me. I got that that lucky grab. Wasn't expecting to get the disc, got the disc and that excitement you feel when you're like, oh, I just stole it. You know, that's uh, I know that excitement. You know, he felt good after that one. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, uh, a stun there, and now some dubstep disc action as it will be recovered by Parker. Needs to get rid of that. They have Toxic on the feet and uh, do not want the toxins there at all as Otaku takes it, sends it, and another boost. Uh, good crabs to the recovery. I'm really impressed, honestly, by the chains that I'm seeing, the stacks that I'm seeing here uh, from T Tows. He takes a shot and his team. Uh oh, uh oh. Ooh, that was very close. But Toxic is going to be able to pick that rebound up, put it in for the two. Nice recovery there. As uh, yeah, you can see them talking. I love that. I love love when you can see the discussion happening after a goal. Like what went right, what went wrong, and uh, there, Tito, was Tito talking to Toxic. You, you can say, yeah, yeah, that was can, that was intentional the whole time. You could say that the talks sick. What? I don't even get that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get that one. The talk is sick, didn't we? Jeez. Oh, the anyway. talk. Is, oh my god. Anyways, goodness. over here, I had to take it. Uh, Wolf audible sigh sometimes you miss anyways over here it's going to be recovered though oh maybe by parker just grabs it and actually dodges through i think t-tail there sliding through now here here again is the passes that we want to see it's just uh the defense now clustering up on the feet Ooh. but some more good positioning i love that from fire ferrets they're you know despite the margins increasing a little bit here in the latter half of this round they, they played uh marginally better on, on executing overall no. Oh, that was close. That was very close. That was a very ambitious shot, but you got to respect it. Uh, he saw the lane, and, and they ha they have a little bit of leeway right now with that lead, uh, you know, and a three would just help it even further. So you, you can respect that shot. Now, Otaku, he's going to get his pocket pick there. It was a Twig pick, picking it out, but Parker sending it away, and now it's going to be Wolf. You know, this the coordination by Fire Ferrets, they're passing. You can tell that you can they're talking. You can tell that they're they are coordinating their movement into the zone. They're coordinating the setup. Look at this. They're 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 all spread out. They're all taking their assignments. They're sending it in. They're attacking the bubble properly. This is fantastic work here. I got to give a shout out to JJ underscores uh, JJ. Just I'm just gonna call him JJ. I got to give a shout out to JJ. Uh, clearly doing some work with this team because uh, uh, the coordination we're seeing from these from both of these teams uh, is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, absolutely, and. You know, again, even though it got out of hand here in the latter half of this this round, 11 to 4 now, I mean, it's still single digits, and it's still getting here uh, onto the blue side as maybe some defense trying to dive out. Uh, ooh, what a handoff, but look, a stop there. Darth, uh, looking like Darth Sidious there with an insidious grab, and now sending it backwards a little bit. It sees maybe as Toxic tries to recover and does. Sends it over now backwards to t Tow. Throw in the towel. That is a game, and what a play. Yeah, it's nice, nice little, uh, nice little ending there for uh, for Monster. So the goal from T Tau, and uh, you know, uh, all three of those guys, Toxic getting that assist there. T Tau, Toxic, and uh, T Tau, Toxic, and uh, Otaku have been just phenomenal on offense in big room. It's just been a stalwart. Uh, in the goal there, along with uh, Dar Citrus in the goal on the other side, and then Parker, Wolf, and Twig, their coordination on offense, uh, uh, and then the backline play in particular by Dar Citrus. Just this this was a, a this was a, a surprisingly skilled game and uh I, I both of these teams probably deserve to go deeper into this tournament now it is double elimination uh so not uh um excuse me uh um uh, fire ferrets are not out uh they do go into the, that lower bracket uh so I, I expect to see fire ferrets again today uh, yeah. uh if not uh, if not today uh by the end of the uh by the end of the tournament, but yeah, I, I expect to see them uh, continue on because uh, this, this has been phenomenal play by both these teams. Yes, sir, didn't we? And uh, hello, bird friend. I saw you uh, missed a couple shout outs, but I saw you. I saw you saying hi. So now that the game's Same. over, hello. Same. Yeah. <laughs> How's hey, it going? Friend. How's it going, friend of birds? Nice to see you here. Have you heard? Uh, but what's the word? The winners, the monsters. Uh, 17 to zero first round, much closer in the second. Especially that first half. I mean, it was tied up at four to four about halfway through the round, and six to four. Then the last few minutes, it was a scoring output, uh, a, bu a burst from Monstars. And really, kind of to reiterate what you said a little bit, 
uh, I think both of these teams had the right ideas, just Monstars executed a little bit better. But they are both doing well to look for the boost. They are doing well to position out for the passes and actually attempt them. It's just Monstars, they, uh, they connected on them a bit more, and that's the big difference maker. Uh, but that said, great effort there from Monstars. Uh, 18 points from Otaku. He had big room with two saves. Uh, five steals as well for Otaku. Got to shout that out. The Toxic putting in two points, four assists, two saves. He had Techno Wubs, uh, the coach there. And T-Tau with 10 points and 25 stuns. For Fire Ferrets, it was Darth Citrus with two points, one assist, three saves. Parker with a save and 15 stuns. Twig the Savage with a couple steals and 12 stuns. Wolf with two points and 20 stuns. And, uh... JJO there, the uh, coach. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, this is just a phenomenal play. And uh, also, we're, uh, just uh, just for a moment to uh, to remind everyone what everyone's playing for today. Uh, Asterion, the big sponsor of this tournament, and, and you know, I've said it a couple times. You're going to hear it a few more times. Uh, I've been using these guys. Literally, they're, they're, I've been using their grips for literally years. Uh, I got them on the CV1. I left a review on Amazon for the CV1 grips. As I went back recently and uh, uh, just re reread it. Was curious. What did I say three years ago about the grips I still use today? And uh, it was all positive except for one thing. It was about the uh, um, uh, the fastener. And uh, they fixed the fastener with uh, the with the, uh, the 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 S generation. They, they they it was patent pending at the time. I don't know if the patent is still pending. Uh, it's either patented or the patent is still pending. But uh, that fastener does not it does not come off. Uh, that was my only complaint. They fixed it from then on. Ten out of ten for ten for two years. I've been giving them a ten out of ten. They're the only ones that work for me personally. Now it is down to pre it is a matter of preference. Uh, but for me personally, these are the only ones. They don't move on the controller. They don't move in my hands. I don't need a hand strap to to, to, to hold on to them. And uh, they don't just do uh, uh, grips. They also got the uh, the charging stands. They have headphones. They have all sorts of uh, uh, grip products for other uh, VR accessories. It's not just Oculus exclusive. Uh, so if you're into VR, if you're into VR accessories, definitely go check them out. I personally recommend them. I've been using them for the years. Uh, someone asked me earlier if I like Asterion. No, I do not like Asterion. I love Asterion. Uh, and a Sterion, uh, if you need a uh, spokesman, so Demo is your man. But uh, yeah, this is uh, that's what. So they're going to be playing for uh, the first place there. Uh, each of them is going to get the charging stand, which I said earlier. You don't have to have a quest to use it. You can use it as just a stand for uh, um, for your Rift, uh, for your S, for your CB1, whatever you have. Uh, it doesn't have to be a charging stand. Uh, it can just be a nice little light up stand. It's actually a really cool looking thing. Uh, also, a mouse pad from VR Community Builders. Uh, you're also going to get a special Discord color, uh, the winning team. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, the, the second place, you got the uh, the touch controller skins. Uh, now, I don't know if they're producing them for the Quest 2 yet. Uh, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, okay, got some skins. Or uh, uh, you get a $20 credit. That's because maybe you don't have, uh, maybe you have a Quest 2. You can't use the Quest 1 skins. You'll get a credit uh, for them uh, in place of that. Uh, and then uh, in third place, you got the Asterion. Uh, also, touch, uh, touch controller skins. And yeah, uh, second place, it's the... Uh, the one month uh, Discord Nitro uh, from VR Community Builders. That's what separates the second place, third place there. Uh, but if you do get the, if you do get controller skins, and you're on the quest or the 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 S or the CB1 or whatever, you get that credit. They they work. They're worth it. Definitely check them out. And I'm talking for way too long about this. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> and you've, you've just probably secured your own personal sponsor. I think at that. So with that said, yeah, thank you to Asterion and VR Community Builders for your fantastic prizes. Uh, here for the communities from uh, our end here in the casting booth on VRML. We're going to take a quick intermission and uh, shift over to the next round as we uh, yeah take a look at the brackets and kind of see what there is to give here in this Quest 2 Rookie Cup. So do stay tuned.
All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome back to VR Master League, and welcome back to the Quest 2 Rookie Cup, brought to you by Asterion and VR Community Builders. So uh, as we get ready to start here, we're following the Monstars. We just saw in a very, very impressive effort against the Fire Ferrets uh, just around the uh, last, uh, last stream, and I'm just going to follow them here into the upper brackets now. This is the winner's uh, semifinal match of uh, this cup. And I'm excited. They're going to face off against Revolt here, who made their way through the brackets. Uh, on the casting desk, I'm um, Palador, still. <laughs> and next to me is Sir Dimwi, still. And how's it going, Dimwi? Uh, it's it's going uh, uh, really good. Also worthy of note, so Monstars are currently 1-0. Revolt is currently 2-0. So it's another one of those situations where Monstars are coming in against a team uh, that's that's played a little bit more. And uh, so there's there's always going to be that question, you know, which team is actually going to be the better team in practice? And uh, I'm very excited to find out because, uh, yeah, we got Ro uh, Revolt here on the right storm, Pizza Eater, Cream and uh, Aluma Sniper. Uh, and, um, you know, I am uh, I'm really bad at my job. Uh, Why is that? Because <laughs> I can't remember who their coach is. And <laughs> like right here, I, all, I just couldn't remember where I was supposed to click. Hold on. I have it. Um, it is uh, Oculus Prime. I even knew that. We were just talking about this, Paladord. True. Paladord, <laughs> save me from myself. Oh. You know, you know what I haven't done yet? It wouldn't be as fun saving you from yourself. Uh, what haven't you done? <laughs> uh, in this particular game, uh -huh. I have not talked about our sponsor. Well, Asterion. why don't we? Yes, Asterion and VR Community Builders, the prizes here. Yeah, sponsors, sponsors. Uh, Asterion and VR Community Builders, and uh, Asterion, I've been gushing about all day uh, because I have been using their grips for literally, literally three years, uh, over three years. And uh, uh, I, I swear by them. Of course, again, it's always down to preference. Uh, there's, there are folks that don't agree with me, 
Uh, but me personally, and this is not, oh, there are sponsors today, so I'm gonna, ah, I've been using them for years. I've literally been using for the, you can ask anyone in beer league uh, how Jimmy, I believe crazy you. I get about <laughs> grips. I am psycho about grips, and these are the only ones I use. I, refi- I, I, I won't even buy, I used to try others, like waiting, uh, when I was playing on the S, and I was waiting for them to make uh, the Asterion grips for the S. I was like, well, they're silicon grips, so I can just, I, I could probably use any other silicon grips. So I bought some other ones, hated them. Hated them. They were slick. They I could not hold on to them, just like the controllers. And uh, the steering grips, phenomenal. Like I said, that patent pending fastener, that's their line. They didn't feed me that line. I'm just saying, like, that's that's their phrasing. That's what they say. So I'm, I'm, I'm running with that. But uh, uh, I absolutely love their grips. And I could I could literally gush about them all day. And the fact I that have. I'm in a position to do that, and I have. I mean, I'm in a position to do that, and I love the company. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see, you know, I'm pretty sure they, since I've been buying their grips, I'm pretty sure they've introduced a lot more stuff because now they have, like I said, they have that charging stand and that's first place prize there, that charging stand. They have uh, headphones. Uh, they have all sorts of accessories for other, uh, for, for, for other VR products that they're not Oculus exclusive. Uh, so definitely a company, uh, you know, if, if you're into VR, check out the stuff they have because uh, it's all good stuff. And if you're like me and you have sweaty hands and you have trouble holding on to those controllers with those overhand throws, definitely check out these stand grips. Yep. They're not even and that I, expensive. I, They're like 15 bucks or something. On that note as well, though, uh, you know, thank you for the prizes. You can see them on the screen there. Of course, uh, two VR community builders. And as you see, Hasco there in the chat also giving Dimmy a little bit of love and also feeling a little heartbroken, perhaps, because you're gushing so much and just... Uh, you know, VR community builders. Got to give them some love too, because VR community builders—they well, you know, help put this together. Uh, Hasco uh, connecting the casting teams and the organization being done by here, here uh, for the event. Always appreciated. And VR community and, you know, the VR community builders predates like half the organizations around. Uh, I, I remember. I still remember uh, when that was uh, first getting set up. Uh, I, I know Hasco. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Hasco's project. I don't want to. I don't want to take any credit. I, I don't know the inner workings of uh of uh of uh, uh vr community builders but i know hasco has a lot to do with it and uh, uh whether or not she's has most to do with it i don't know uh, i just don't want to I'm, I'm i'm speaking from ignorance but i know always, they've been always around. a good place to be <laughs> they've, they've been around they've they've been uh, a stalwart in the community hasco herself has been a stalwart in the community of course big shout out to hasco uh admitting this this was this was this this is like she you know this has been her her thing it was her idea she put it together and uh, I've, I've been trying to help as much as i can but uh a uh, big shout out to her big shout out to vr community builders and big shout out and, to uh, nada as, as well as she says there so with that said not a problem we're going to the first round here as we start monsters versus revolt and this game gonna be anything but revolting i can feel it in my bones as we go for the joust taken first by monsters it would seem but not for too long there's a luma sniper trying to snipe that out with the interception over there to storm now another pass down to cream i already like what i'm seeing dimwi this is gonna be hot yeah this is uh some fantastic place so far look at the way they move that disc and bring it in oh Ooh. no the ding that's a heartbreaker there under pressure is cream as he picked that one up he got stunned out so it's gonna turn over a taco picking it picking it up now and uh, uh yeah now sending it all the way into the bubble but look you know we saw last game monsters had the ability to to clear and boost you know uh, 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 over over the other team uh, over fire ferrets and mm-hmm. uh revolt is answering with their own boost and uh so that's that 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 strategy that was working so well for Monsters in the last game, I don't think it's going to work quite as well here in this game against Revolt. Yeah, well, definitely you can see uh, just how tentative they were to bring it up the floor there, uh, trying to evade uh, the defenders coming up on them now. But indeed, the passing here is really good. The positioning is good. And, you know, both these teams looking like they're capable of speed, but they're also showing they're capable of uh, slowing it down just a wee bit as they go for the shot there to the barrier and to the outer edge now of the bubble as they miss uh, again here. It's still stuck at zero to zero, but I again, I really like uh, fundamentally what they're showing us here on the cast so far. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the you, you know what I really love? And it's one of the hardest, I say this a lot, it's one of the Ooh, hardest habits. Again. Nice opportunity there. It was a nice setup, a great shot opportunity. Just stings off the bottom of the, the goal there. 
Uh, but it's a, it's that propensity to not clump. It's so easy to clump up. So it's just chase the disc around. And uh, both of these teams are really good at not clumping. They stay spread. They keep their lanes covered. They 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 keep the lanes in motion. Uh, and oh, nice pick up there. That's how you take advantage of a situation. They get this one cleared out mm. all the way down mm -hmm. into the reball bubble. It's gonna be who's getting there first. Oh, that was a very close one there. As Tito, I believe that's no, it's Otaku. As oh, Otaku got the steal, but he got stunned out. Now picked up by Pizza Eater, who's gonna get this one cleared out. Out, back towards mid, back into the monster zone. Very impressed by Otaku there with the moves and not getting baited into the punches. You saw some uh, re-grabs in there for extra speed. Even even when he already had some speed, he turned around and got another boost off of him and still, again, not getting baited uh, too much into throwing unnecessary fists. So with that said, they're going to have to be uh, on the defensive end here trying to play it up, and it will be Pizza Eater eating it up. And they're heating it up now with the first two finally and see if this gets these teams going. Uh, for this uh, round still seven and a half left with that first score yeah i was gonna say this is uh, uh the longest we've gone without a goal uh in a game or a round thus far uh in this tournament on on cast anyways yeah almost two and a half minutes for that first goal so it's a two-point lead here to revolt as monsters are going to take that jealous advantage quick pass to t-tal nice. there on the far two but oh that chain that chain stops him dead in his tracks. Gonna turn over Cream now with the Cream. Sending this one into the bubble. Looking to uh, pick up this bounce. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> almost there was uh, was Storm, but he gets stunned out there by Otaku. And Otaku's gonna get this one cleared out all the way down to the rebound zone. We're gonna have a race. Yeah, exactly that. So more importantly, after the clear, they got the boost, the chains together to get down the floor. Now we'll still be revolt with the disc here and the two-point advantage as they go back to the trench. Now trying to await the spacing to play out and look for uh, any kind of opportunity they can get. And it will actually be a recovery here from Storm. Now losing the handles to Otaku now, but getting it right back before passing it off on the cross, just missing his teammate. Yeah, that one's going to bounce around in the trap there. We call it a trap. We call it the trap because it is a trap uh, for the disc. Likes to uh, hold on to it once the disc makes its way into there. The not opportunity. Pizza Eater had Storm cutting in. Oh, stunned out as he was looking to send that pass across. So it goes a little bit wild, and that's going to be a, a slap there by Toxic. Not getting out. Another slap there, uh, I believe, by Storm. Going to make its way into the bubble. And now it's a Lumen, a Lumen, a Lumen Sniper. Can't say his name. Picks that one up. Tries to send that cut pass, but a nice read there on that lane. It's going to get sent out, but nice back backline play there by Cream. But T-Town with the steal. T-Town picking that one up. Are we going to see a tube shot? Maybe? No. The, no. They are way too careful for that, and uh, and as they should be. Yeah, and, they, and there's also defense back now here for Revolt at that, and the defense causing a turnover. Nice one on Toxic. Uh, the stun on Toxic, that is a say, to enable this play to maybe happen. There's four players all coming down for Revolt, and now joining them in the goal is Monstars on the defense, uh, slapping it out of there into the mid zone. And uh, look at this, though. When the disc is cleared, I like how many players on both sides I'm seeing they're, they're looking for the chains. They're not getting stuck floating too much. Like right here, you see? They, they let the clear loose. And then Otaku there and T-Tail, they turned around to find those boosts again and again. That's great. Yeah, this is, uh, this is some fantastic play. I mean, this is, uh, we're really, we're talking cream of the crop of the rookies here. Uh, you know, we've got four teams that are still undefeated. These are two of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one now bouncing in, it's going to be T-Tail once again. We're going to say his name quite a bit, I think. <laughs> uh, trying to clear that one out. Oh, but that bounce, we all know that bounce off that lip. But Otaku there to pick that one up, he's going to get that one cleared out. Through that same tube, making its way into the trash there on the uh, the revolt side of the arena. Otaku trying to track it down. T Tau moving in, trying to set up for an opportunity here. T Tau is open, does take the pass nice. in. What a beautiful setup! T Tau from the wall cuts in from the wall, gets himself right in front of the goal. Plants that went in for the two. We have a tie game just over halfway through round one. And I think what for uh, revolt side, what kind of broke them on that play in particular there kind of countered what I said just a minute ago on, on that particular play. Uh, once the clear was out, they uh, had a couple of players in the midline very close to each other, but they did not look back for the stacks. And that was kind of what undid it and enabled the, the uh, recovery and the goal off a very nice assist from Monstars. And now Storm moving in on that far side is going to get a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Going off the back, but what a shot. What a chuck there from Storm. Bottom pocket off the backboard. There's not a goalie in the league that's going to have an easy time with a shot like that. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you can get those corners, great stuff from them. Uh, goal for goal here. Let's see if Monsters can react and come back tied up again at four apiece as we uh, approach now, what, three and a half minutes left here. Still in the first round, very even in the uh, upper bracket semifinals. 
So now a big long pass there over to T-Tau. T-Tau moving in. Otaku is stunned out. Looks for that cross pass there to Toxic. Ambitious pass, uh, but a fantastic pass. Just a little bit off the mark as Otaku sending it back to T-Tau on Ness. The communication is phenomenal. T-Tau is going to hit it for the two. And it's, we're back to a tie game. Uh, this one's going to stay close all the way to the finish. Seems that way. It's not only competitive uh, on the score sheet, but... It's, it's low scoring. Now, this is a very interesting counter to what we've seen in the last two matches here on stream, where we saw some very high scoring matches, you know, approaching those 20 point plus marks across them. And now here, we're, we're stuck at a four apiece now. And despite the low scoring, it does not mean don't equate that with boring because this is not anything but. We know these teams are both uh, really well capable of scoring those uh, 20 point marks, but I think just so dead even here on, on some of the speed and aggression we're seeing, uh, it's really enabled a, a very tight match. And now another opportunity here for Revol coming in is Cream, Cream docking one. You know, that's a, that's a that's a duck I can get behind. His PC to picks that one up. Had an opportunity, but a good grab there by Otaku. Otaku's going to get this one set all the way down. Going to make its way into the bubble. Flat bounce off the... Oh, not another... That's, a tw that's twice today. I've called a flat bounce that's not been flat. And I feel... I feel... I feel inadequate, Palador. I feel inadequate. Oh, what an opportunity there. A good read there by Cream. He's going to send that one away. Well, nonetheless, trying to recover here and see if they can get the uh, disc off those... Again, those chains. I mean, look, they... They were linked together. They got that bonus speed because of it, and they're going to get there uh, with a little bit of time. Monstars are with Otaku before uh, Revolt can react. And uh, look at this. Even right now, they got the disc. We can see the chain awaiting uh, to see where their player went. Now, unfortunately, an awkward bounce will uh, go right back into the bubble, right past the goalkeeper's hands, and this is going to open up maybe a chance, but no last-second dive in by Otaku of what otherwise would have been an excellent pass to the barrier for uh, what would have been an open goal. Somebody watch that, dude. Somebody watch that. And I'm saying somebody like like talent scouts. Is he Ooh, again, uh, again. Otaku. His defense, he's been all over. He he, he knows how to uh, uh, cover these lanes. He knows how to read these lanes. And, uh, you know, he's he's just so he's so good. This is he is an exceptionally skilled player on an exceptionally skilled team with some exceptionally skilled teammates. And uh, it's, he, you know, it, it's it is, and it's another one of those things. It's not enough to just be good. You got to have good teammates because it's your teammates are going to make you look even better. Uh, you know, I, I talked about game earlier. Game uh, has that uh, that that uh, what is it, the record for most goals scored in a single VRML game? What's it like? 43, Four, 40, I think. 46 43 I'm points. Crazy, sure. 46 points. Uh, but that doesn't happen without his teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? That's the sort of thing. So so while yes, game does have that that record and we give him the credit for that record. Uh, it's also, oh, what an opportunity. I was gonna you, talk, out. you talk about Joker, Team Joker. They, that was a Team Joker-like shot right there. The stun goalie and the three-point attempt. It was a good look, just couldn't convert. They still might yet and trying to make him hurt, but no, 22 seconds left. That could have been devastation if it had been scored against the Monstars. But now it will be on to the blue side. Revolt now need to capture this or else we're heading into a potential OT shortly. Yeah, there's a little sniper handling this one. Nine seconds, eight seconds counting down. They're moving in slowly here, looking to maybe get one last opportunity. No, they're just going to go ahead and run that clock down. Ooh, that was an opportunity there for Monster. It's had they been quick enough, but no, we are going to go to overtime. Our first overtime on the cast of the Quest 2 Rookie Cup. And uh, we're going to call it, you know what we're going to call this? We're going to call this the VR Community Builders Overtime. All right, well. Yeah, I'm up there. Build them up and break them down. Let's see what happens in this OT round. Off to the joust at the neutral zone for a piece, sudden death, and uh, will be butted out there by Revolt, but no one there to capture quite yet uh, until that nice punch and then boost off there from Cream to retain. And ooh, now a nice send in there, Storm with it. Storm under pressure there, goal is wide open, but only for a moment. Good getting back there was big run. PT to now slowing it down. This is some fantastic strategy here from Revolt. I expect a goal here, it's Cream coming in. No, he gets stopped. <laughs> Otaku. I believe it's a headbutt, yeah. And now Cream picking it back up, oh. another opportunity. Another stop, another Otaku. Otaku. What's wrong what with you? <laughs> Ridiculous. You know, you know what, you know what? Uh, uh, Somebody find uh, Mizuchi. Make sure he's not playing in this game right now. Yeah, go look for Mizuchi, of course. A uh, 
champion in his own right in the collegiate league there. But over here, we're going to get a, a retention. And it's pizza. But no, it, it's now toxic getting it out of there. But another interception. The defense here is intense. It's immense. And right now, it's going right down to the wire, down to the fence. It's 60 seconds left. And scoreless here in the sudden death round. But not for long because oh. a shot is oh. saved. But stopped. Oh. Pizza eater. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Unbelievable wow. round. The save and then the dunk through. That is heartbreaker there. Wow. And here, I'll unmute for you real quick. No worries. Wow. No worries. It's all right. You get rid of the game. Yeah. Wow. And their attitude is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I love that attitude right there. You see, no worries. And yeah, why should you? You played some excellent defense there. Uh, wow. That was just, that was, that was phenomenal. Aska says that was heartbreaking. Heartbreaking is the right word. The goal, you know, that's one of those situations where, as a goalie, there's not much else you can do. You know, you, you can you can look at it, you can replay it all you want and go, oh, I could have just I could have just sent it out. I could have just grabbed it and sent it. But you're talking a time frame of less than one second. I mean, literally, literally less than one second there to react. The humanly impossible. You know, when you get that stop and that player is just their momentum continues forward and they they're able to grab it right back out of your hand. There's literally you can feel, it'll feel like you did something wrong. You didn't. You got the save. You know, you, you did your job, you did what you were supposed to do, and they just, their momentum carried them forward and was able to, they were, he was able to get it back. And, uh, you know, that was a great play there uh, by uh, Pete Eater to get that one in. I mean, big, big shout out to Pete Eater. Uh, but the goalie, uh, who would be, uh, that would be uh, Big Rome, uh, he should not feel bad about that one. He did his job. It just worked out a certain way. That was a phenomenal win there for Reball in round one. What a stellar round that was as a whole. I mean, wow. 10 minutes lower scoring, but not lacking at all in intensity, uh, nor velocity there off that joust. Uh, same kind of results as the last round, where it was just a butt out there by uh, the blue team, by Revolt, and eventually retained by them as they send it to the bow tie, patiently awaiting were two teammates. Now Storm with it. Storm was looking for that pass to Pizza. Pizza wasn't expecting. He was looking to uh, set up on that shoulder there. And, uh, but they do get it right back. Wow, what a pick up there. Storm with it once again, now uh, pushing forward here, setting this one in deep. Uh, oh, oh, some activity there. That was interesting. But, uh, but now PC Eater getting a good stun there on Otaku as Otaku sends it out of the bubble. Going to be picked up there by T-Tau. T-Tau is going to send this one out. And uh, T-Tau with a fan in the chat. I'm not sure who the T-T-T-A-O-O-O-O person is in relation to T-Tau, but I'm very curious because uh, it's definitely the same name. as Oh, wow, Toxic. There it is. What a recovery there, Toxic picking that one in, picking that one up, gonna put it in for the two. And that's Monstars with the lead here in round two. Yeah, love what he do. Don't you know that he's Toxic? Uh, one minute in, so we got a first score. We'll see if that continues here now into the next. I mean, again, it was just goal for goal in round one, low scoring, but uh, highly entertaining. So with that, it will be Luma Sniper sending it over to the tunnel, just gonna miss his teammate and take some bounces off. Uh, to that corner panel may be recovered here nope looks like just going for the stuns instead uh, but eventually a uh, take by storm but then he gets it taken away as a intercept goes from cream and a uh, very very mean on the defensive end was big rome and that one's going to be clear successfully now this one picked up there by Illumin. Uh, uh, i keep wanting to say Illumin sniper which doesn't make sense it's a luma sniper i thought you're gonna go for a luma luma dotty uh vrml team of no. course <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Close enough. Oh, no. Otaku, long shot. He's going to hit it. 20 meters out. Otaku is going to hit that one for the three. They're up by five. You know he feels that when he feels good after that one. That was a phenomenal oh. shot there. <laughs> you, you can see it in the body language. Just check out this replay even. The shot goes out, and he's celebrating. He's, his arms are in the air. And this is why Echo VR, and this is why VR in general, right? is so amazing because you get to see that you get to see the body language you get to see the excitement and you know that everything that these players are doing much like a real sport uh, a traditional sport i should say in real life you know you can see everything unfolding it's not just a matter of a uh, button press it's it's about body action it's about athletics it's about that precision that's uh, so amazing to watch here and now, uh, yeah, Cream, Cream is just, they are so good in the zone here. Uh, they, they haven't completed all the goal. I think, you know, it's one of those things, like, it's it's the finishing. Because um, they may, they're, I, you know, I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to check this right quick. Possession time, yeah, they dominate, they are dominating in possession time in this game by over three minutes, almost double uh, uh, what, uh, uh -oh. what Monsters have been able to do. Miscommunication. Oh, no, that is loose. 
Uh, someone's going to have to pick that up. We're looking for a quick chain here. No, it is going to be Cream. Good recovery there. Good quick recovery. They recognize there's an issue. Uh, now coming in for another opportunity. But they, they their possession time has been has been it's been ridiculous like this is phenomenal what we're seeing nice cut wow. play oh cream the storm what a play by those guys and that's their first goal here in round two well guess what equal opposite reactions right you see one thing over there in the trap kind of a uh, again miscommunication uh what they both thought the other player had the disc but they recovered and then on the bubble in the bubble expert communication and precision. I mean, everything about that uh, was great. And here we are with our first two points for Revolt. Monstars, though, in the lead, trying to force a round three with a victory here. On oh, Teeth, uh, uh, Toxic, almost getting that pickup. Wasn't it quite able to? Also, another, again, that time, another almost pickup, not quite able. And that one's gonna amount to a clear in all the way into the zone. Uh, big Rome, not able to get a hand on it. So the disc is gonna remain loose. This Pizza Eater is gonna pick that one up here on the near side wall. Moving in, has four coming in, four, two. Oh, what a stop there by a Taku. I, I, you know, I gotta stop being surprised by it. Uh, <laughs> he keeps getting these stops that are just phenomenal. And this one does get cleared back into the revolt zone here. Gonna bounce in that far side track. A bit of a race for it. Nice chain there, T Tau and uh, Otaku. No surprise. As uh, Toxic, uh, I say T Tau and Otaku, their chaining has been uh, phenomenal. The two of them together are just, uh, just really, really good. And uh, but now Cream, good defense there. Cream picking that one up. Nice clear all the way down the bubble. This time, Big Rum will get a hand on it. And we are almost halfway through round two, five to two in favor of Monstars. Looking to increase that lead with an open three. Could it be? Yes, sir. It's Otaku, and he's been fiery hot defense offense no nonsense for this guy doing all the work on both sides of the floor uh, alongside the rest of his teammates just enabling this this sudden uh, barrage of plays from this man so, so. yeah this is a uh... Sorry. Yeah, I uh, I was I was uh, I was distracted by what I was watching. It sounds like I was I was like, ah, oh, I'm not doing my job. No, I'm here. <laughs> I just I was just uh, I have. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, some really good play we're seeing so far from uh, from these two teams is really uh, storm coming in storm sending that one up looking to get that one there to uh, uh, I believe that was cream. Peace heater. Nice recovery coming in sending this one in. Look for a pal. Someone's going to uh, uh, look for it. I don't even know what words I'm saying anymore. Did I say pounce? I think I just said pounce. He's looking for the disc and the shot, Ooh. and he will not Ooh. miss. And Cream uh, puts them up, or puts them back up to four, cutting that into uh, half the differential there. Uh, so it, it, it's still four points, uh, four minutes left, I should say, in the second round. But I mean, Monsters, despite being scored on there, they're looking pretty good. Uh, they looked great in that last series we saw on stream. And uh, despite, you know, again, lower scoring comparatively, this is just so competitive. Uh, I would love to see a round three here. I'll be ready. Saw an OT. So, uh, yeah, keep it, keep it going. And I did see some concern in chat that uh, a Revolt doesn't have a coach. They do have a coach. As far as I'm aware, he's in Spectator. It's Oculus Prime. Oculus Prime is their coach. Uh, I know him from around Discord. And, uh, yeah, so they do have a coach present. Uh, um, and, uh, yeah, so there is no uh, disadvantage here for them. Uh, and if there was a disadvantage and they still got that victory around one, like big hats off to them. But no, they do have a Oculus Prime is around. He is active as a cream now with it sending everyone across. That's interesting because I think spectate mode, of course, so the coach would get a lot better view. But uh, presumably he's not able to talk with his uh, team unless it's in private. But I don't believe that's the case as Kareem closing uh, another shot in here. So that's back to back from Revolt to bring it back to uh, now just a two point difference. And they're they're looking to secure this in two uh, two rounds, that is, if they can. Yeah, my speculation would be uh, Oculus Party, because uh, that's still, uh, uh, I know there's some, it's hit and miss on whether or not it, it works well, uh, particularly when you're uh, when you're talking about uh, uh, like uh, Rift versus uh, Quest users, like if you're mixing Rift and Quest users. Yeah. Uh, but it is, uh, he could be in uh, Oculus Party with them, uh, communicating that way. Yeah, it could be the case, uh, but either or. Well, that could be the trade-off if not, but uh, still, still yet. I mean, it obviously didn't make a, too much of a difference in that last round and, and will be, uh, yeah, just another drive-in. Could it be three in a row, actually, for Revolt? No, missing off the right side there and sending it to the wedge where it's recovered by Storm. And now this one getting sent across there. Nobody there. Actually, it's going to be a Luma Sniper picking that one up. And Luma Sniper sending this one in. The Toxic gets a big pick up there. Trying to send that one away, but it will be Otaku uh, ultimately getting the slap, sending that one back into the Revolt zone. As a Storm is there to pick it up. Their, their backline, Revolt's backline. You know, I said it at the start 
that clear and boost strategy that was working so well for monsters in the last uh, the last game. I don't I didn't think it was going to work out here, and it hasn't so far. But they've been able to recover. Uh, they've been able to, to to close that gap with their Ooh. passing sequences. As a uh, nice nice, uh, I believe that was a bit of a dusty there from mm -hmm. Pete Eater. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they've been able to, to close that gap with those pass sequences, and it's phenomenal to see those sorts of adjustments. And for those who are maybe unfamiliar with the, the dusty term, because even in the context of Echo VR, it's a bit newer, but got adopted in uh, Season 2 of VRML just months ago, uh, courtesy of the OCE region there. It's when you have the disc or the QB, and then uh, while you're still holding on to the disc, you decide just to give, a, give an old punch at an un oncoming defender. It's a risky move, but it's kind of the echo equivalent of a stiff arm almost, and uh, if you can pull it off, it's dirty. Right now, Otaku continuing just that, <laughs> that bubble and the outer bubble defense where he's causing so much trouble minute by minute. Yeah, yeah, this uh, he, he has been so good, but uh, uh, but once again, I mean, you, you can't talk about only a talker without the teammates because I mean, that was toxic, that was all toxic. There, he got the stop, tried to clear it out, he lost the clear, picked it right back up, gets it cleared out. Then, uh, Otaku is now trying to pick that one up. Otaku under pressure, what on what nice little fader what? as he sailed down below. That's uh, with less than a minute left, did we? This could be round three coming up. I don't want to jinx it, but you know, I, I, I talk about so like. Anyone who's watched any of the, the videos I make, like I, I talk about the number situation, how like if you're if you're driving in on a one v four, you should you're probably making the wrong choice. But right there, that was less of a drive in. That was more of a a, a moment of opportunity that he Otaku saw the lane, and even though it was technically a one on four situation, he had the space and he took the space, he took advantage of it, and so that's when that that kind of when you're looking at the simple numbers, that's when that breaks down as a moment like that, and uh, that was just phenomenal play there by Otaku. And it uh, looks like they are going to take round two. We're going to go to round three, Paladour. Well, happy to say so. Storm putting one more away to bring Probably. it oh, yeah, so, so close. Uh, but three, round three, that is a guarantee now. And coming up uh, right after this next uh, 60 seconds of intermission. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, what a round there for uh, both his teams. And there's Oculus Prime. So anyone uh, curious where Oculus Prime was, he's been here the whole time. There he is. And uh, yeah, and uh, once again, um, uh, so just to reiterate what I'm seeing Hasco saying in the chat there, uh, all, the, all the teams, all the coaches were given all the same options. They were, able, they were allowed to weigh those options however they saw fit, whatever they wanted to go with, they were allowed to go with. Uh, you know, we're seeing two different coaching styles here between Oculus Prime and Technowubs. And I think what I love about that is they are different coaching styles, right. but we're seeing both. This is an incredibly competitive game. And and yeah, so it's it's uh, so yeah, they were given those options. The other thing was um, uh, there was another point I wanted to make, and I'm forgetting it now. But yeah, they they, they were all given the options, so there's no unfair advantage here. Also, uh, also worthy of pointing out is Monstars. Once again, we're the first team to form for this tournament, so they they probably have kind of an advantage of their own in that they've had probably a little bit more time than most of the other teams. <clears throat> Excuse me. To uh, I should have muted for that. To uh, to 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 get coordinated, to get their plan down, to get the strategies down, and the fact that Revolt's able to do this, like this is this is a great game. And uh, big shout out to both Oculus Prime and Technoweb for the work they've done for their teammates. Also, big shout out to all the players here: Otaku, Tital, Big Room, Toxic, Storm, Pete Eater, Cream, and Aluminum Sniper. They're all they are, they're all worthy of being here. And I'm excited for this round three. And shout out to Illuminati, America's team. Uh, Otaku with a disc here is gonna. Get that joust first. I think it's the first time across these three rounds they've been able to come away with it because the other two were just big uh, revolt headbutts. Now they have to go head to head, and well, it's just going to go right into the head of a uh, sniper and T Tau capitalizing for their first two. You know, you know what I've noticed is that anytime T Tau gets the disc on that right shoulder, he scores every single time. And uh, that's another one right there. So that's his spot, you know, and I, I totally get that because I, 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 I have uh, I always had a similar thing on the nest. If you, if you were able to get the disc to me on the nest, I was probably putting it in. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're seeing from Tito here on that right shoulder, at least so far. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, very cool to see uh, the development here early into these uh, careers, you can say, uh, for these teams, the Rookie Cup. Obviously, really hoping to see these players, all of them if we can, uh, into VRML Season 3, which does start on January 4th. So, you know, put forth your best effort and sign up. You can get into the league at any level of skill because of the ladder system and the flexible scheduling, playing essentially uh, seven days a week. Schedule amongst the teams and 
uh, yeah, just make sure you sign up, find your teams, join the Echo Games Discord. 20k users strong now. There's a lot of good things going for this game and for this competitive scene. And, and you can join with the, the team that you have in the Rookie Cup. You can carry that. You can use that as a base as a basis to start a team of VRML. Just the four of you. Uh, go ahead, start a team. Uh, we saw underrated rookie, a bunch of teams, Ding, underrated rookies, a bunch of teams that you know the names of now that might, they're, they're not, uh, unfortunately, some of the, most of them are still around. Uh, the players are, but the teams aren't. Uh, they got their start in the Rookie Cup. Underrated rookies won the first uh, Rookie Cup. Uh, and that's where they came from. Now, their players, uh, they've kind of dispersed into the community uh, among different teams at this point after the end of season two. Uh, but you can definitely use this as a foundation to move forward. And I'm, ex I'm very excited to see what teams we do see form from this. It's, ooh, an opportunity there. That was a nice attempt, at least. Again, the, the correct moves, just not the results, but that's okay. They still get it back uh, once and twice, but now slapped back into the recovered hands of Storm. And Storm getting it down the drain. It's tied up to a piece now. Revolt and Monstars in round three. Yeah, this one, I, you know, I, I said it in round one. This is going to be a close game all the way to the wire. Yeah. Uh, this is not, we, you, anyone who thinks they know who's going to win this one, you you don't. You don't. I, I, I'm, not even, I, I'm not even comfortable calling it. And you know me, I love calling. I love making predictions. I'm not comfortable making a prediction on this one because uh, this, uh, this is too close. These teams are, are both so good. And I expect, I fully expect, now of course we haven't seen uh, a few of the other teams that are still undefeated, but I fully expect one of these two teams is going to be the team to take it. Well, Kareem right now trying to take it right into the goal with that pass off to Pizza and in the bottom corner. It's a really nice job there. The goalie also was uh, bothered at the time. I mean, pass, pass, pass. And then the shot on the uh, distracted goalie. Everything about that. You see, everyone got involved in that play one way or the other, even if they didn't touch the disc. That's what I love. Yeah, just uh, just another phenomenal setup. Revolt's coordination has been so good. And and we're even seeing kind of a mix of play styles here where we're all... Oh, Ooh. wow. What a <laughs> shot. What a play. That is top level stuff if I've ever seen it. Yes, I did just run away from my microphone for that one because <laughs> that was phenomenal. I'm literally jumping. That was Man. phenomenal. Wow. Well, they're jumping. I mean, the moment that that disc was missed on the, the joust, you saw that revolt stack. They just blazed by. They were ready to pounce on that thing, and they did. They got it back. They got the three point score just before the goalie could turn around and accommodate it. I mean, wasting no time or no wasted motions either uh, as it will be a 7-2 lead for Revolt. Monstars needing to find some scores here as they try and go off for a bouncer, but into Kareem's hands as Kareem uh, sends it through mid. You know, and I can use that last goal as a, a good goalie lesson. And now I'm not saying this would have stopped the shot, but as when, when you're a goalie and, and you're, you're in that that moment where you need to get back to goal really, really fast, you know there's a threat coming, go ahead, grip both of your grips and pull that hand out. Even if it's a one in a hundred chance, there is a chance. I've wow. Oh, wow. Talk, talk about the, ch what are the chances of that? A grab and a grab and a grab and a grab and finally finding the goal. Uh, coordinated efforts there in super close proximity, didn't we? Yeah, t Tau just not letting up there. It was able to get that one. And yeah, that's a, that grab. That's the other thing about, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of one of those things that you kind of have to get used to in Echo Arena where it's one of the first things I'll teach new players is don't use your hand to grab, pre-grab and use it like a magnet. Mm -hmm. And it, it create you end up with situations like that. And that there's situations like that, why you want to be pre-grabbing, because it could get you, you know, if T-Tow wasn't, if he was trying to just grab it, you know, on the spot instead of pre-grabbing, he probably wouldn't have picked it up. He probably wouldn't have gotten that goal. That's that's why pre-grabbing, using your hand as a magnet is so important as a talker with another ridiculous deal. You know what I like about that? It was kind of an unforced turnover, but I like the fact that Revolt immediately got on the stacks. They didn't hang their heads and say, oops, we made a mistake and now we're going to sulk. Nope, they just got on the stack. And you know what? It got them uh, the disc back at least for a moment. And uh, now we'll still have a chance at it. So nice reaction time there being shown by Blue. Yeah, and still Blue, uh, you know, I'm going to pull up that, uh, that stat again. What, what's uh, possession time? Still. Revolt is still, they're now over five, before they were three minutes up, they're now over five minutes up in possession over Monsters. Their possession time has been ridiculous. As uh, uh, now like you're pushing off a teammate, sending that one up to Cream. Cream taking a big hook shot there. That one's going to go a little bit wide, but right there, look at the positioning. <laughs> oh, no. And it's a three? Oh, my goodness. 
Uh, man. A Luma Sniper with a Conspira 3. That was great. 10 to 4. Uh, <laughs> but the cleverness, even, uh, I'm not sure who that may, may have been Cream, I'm not sure who it was, but even doing a tap off the anchor off their own player when they realized they were a little bit too slow and out of position. I mean, just the patience and presence of mind to be able to back that out uh, and, and then find a, a good play at the end of the day. It's It's... A pleasure as they do capture this six point advantage now with Monstars needing to get this going. Uh, they've been held at four for a little bit here. And now it's uh, talking with it here at mid. It looked like uh, Revolt was trying to coordinate something into the uh, using the uh, the tube launch. Uh, I don't believe the coordination actually uh, picked off. So it gave Monstars that extra time uh, to regain possession there. Now Storm with a good turnover there. Storm picking that one up. Nice back pass. That. That's the kind of you know how long it took some of us to, to get into the habit of resetting. These guys are already doing it. This is just this is such good stuff. As now uh, T Tal trying to get there. Oh, nice skill there by Big Room, but now picked back up by Storm. Oh, no matter breath, he hits it. Oh, that persistence there. Revolt is taking a very dangerous lead here. We've got only two and a half minutes to go here. They're up by eight. Revolt's looking really good right now. Again, back to the running theme of no wasted motion. Got the grab immediately slung it up at the goalie and they found success based off of that. He, taking uh, goalkeepers off guard with quick releases like that alone can make it very tough to save. So really starting to pull ahead and build some steam going into the final two minutes of round three. A revolt looking good and just need to kind of hold on for the next, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds and it should be uh, going their way, I think, at the end of this round. Oh, now Kareem, oh. Nice little, you know, Kareem was, uh, he he did that, <laughs> I like what he did there. Maintain, maintained eye contact with the defender right before the defender got to him. He just dumped it in. You know, it, it, it was a very slick move. And, oh, wow, Storm. Okay. Suddenly, Revolt is just running away with this one. Yeah, uh, once again, a steal and just the immediate fling. Not wasting time, not wasting motions, nothing else. Uh, they're just maximizing every opportunity here now because suddenly, yeah. 14 to 4, 10 point lead. Whereas, you know, for the majority of the time, is that that Joust is just missed. Uh oh. The majority of the time oh. uh, across these three rounds, it's been close, but it's really just the last uh, five minutes here, six minutes of this third round that there's starting to be some space there for Revolt to take this away with a, a double digit lead. Yeah, there really is. And now, uh, Luna Sniper here with it, with a, a minute to go here, a 10 point difference. Yeah, trying to clear that one out. Otaku with it now. Otaku, long shot. He's going to hit it. We're back to within seven. Big shot, Otaku, uh, doing the work. Less than a minute left. It'll still be tough, but you got to love the firepower that you're seeing here from Monstars. Not trying to concede defeat and playing right up until the end and uh, seeing what they can do here now. 41 seconds remaining. Now Storm with it. Storm sending this one up. Does find the hands of Cream. You know, that's the important positioning right now, right there. The the pass wasn't wasn't on, but Cream was right there to pick up the bat pick up the, the pick up the bounce. One last shot here, one last opportunity. PT Eater is gonna get that one in for the two. What a self-pass play there. I'm sure not yeah. intended, but you're gonna love the fortunate rolls. Uh as it does in fact go the way of Pizza Eater. Uh, pizza rolls, I guess. I was I was literally about to get you said rolls, I was like, oh no, I want some pizza rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly rolls all around as we do roll on to the end of this round. And uh, with that, 16 to 7, fantastic match for sure. Uh, but Revolt with a very strong showing in this final 10 minutes to really, really complete uh, what was a great semifinals match. And they're going to advance. Monstars still have a chance, though, because, again, double elimination round, and that will be their first loss. So they will go on to the lower bracket. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal win there by Revolt. And uh, yeah, so somebody, somebody, I was trying to remember what uh, what I was going to bring up. Somebody in chat asked, "Is this the uh, semifinals?" No, this was the quarterfinals. Um, so the so Revolt will move on to the semifinals, and they'll be playing. Uh, let me pull this up. My misreading, I believe this was the semifinals, wasn't? Oh, okay. I get all right. So.
it's called the semifinals. It's not really a semifinals because there's there's the because okay, I see what it's doing. Semifinals, winners final, and then grand final. Yeah. I would consider the next round the semifinals and then yeah, the final. But to, it is to, what it to, is. to avoid confusion on the crowd's part here, our audience will pull up the brackets in just a minute. But I didn't realize nonetheless, it, the end of that way. Yeah. Nonetheless, uh, it will be the advancement of uh, revolt. You can maybe hear them in the background there, unmuted some of the background comms. A lot of GGs were going through, and good spirits, always great to see. And uh, there's your stats as well. And uh, yeah, fun, fun match. So we're going to readjust as well and see where we're going next uh, for the stream. But first, we'll read the stats. I'll show you the brackets uh, right after. We got 11 points there for Otaku, three assists, three saves. Nine steals, 22 stuns. Had to go to his stats first because that is a mammoth of a game from Otaku. Yeah, it was. Uh, big Rome completing the uh, one assist, three saves, one steal, three stuns. Toxic with two points, two steals, 20 stuns. Techno, uh, the coach there, just observing and helping his team along. And uh, again, this is such a close match. It could have gone either way with these two different coaching styles that we saw. We had t -Tow there with eight points, two saves, three steals, 31 stuns. Uh, for Revolt, 6 and 5. Points and assists for Cream. Nice stat line there with the 46 stuns as well. Uh, Luma Sniper, 3 points, 2 assists, 11 stuns. Pizza Eater with 8 points, 1 assist, 1 save, 1 steal, and 36 stuns. And then Storm with 3 points, 1 assist, 3 steals, 37 stuns. Stun heavy on that team. And definitely a stunning victory by the end of it. So yeah, it was phenomenal, phenomenal victory to those guys. Big shout out. I mean that was that was phenomenal. Great, great game. What a great that was such a good game. Yeah. Oh, I'm I feel so satisfied after that one. Yeah, hoping uh hoping that the next round will be the same, the next series, and I can only anticipate that it will be as we get deeper and deeper into these brackets here in the Quest 2 Rookie Cup. So uh, with that here, I'll bring up the brackets for you in just a moment, but we're gonna go to an intermission and uh, reorganize ourselves for the next series. So do stay tuned, everyone there in the Twitch chat, and uh, thanks for being here.
Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, hey everyone, Palador here. So just to give you guys a quick update, sorry for the delays, by the way. Uh, we will be moving on now to do uh, the match in the upper brackets here. Uh, with Revolt and Generals, those teams are charged up and ready to go. Lower bracket is seeing a little bit of delays at the moment. So yeah, what we're going to do is stream Revolt and Generals in the upper brackets here. And after that match is over, depending on how things are playing out in the lower bracket, we may move on to stream some more of those to close off the days. Uh, but likely situation here is that the finals, winners' finals and losers' finals, will likely be pay uh, played tomorrow on stream, finishing off. Uh, so that's the plan. We'll see. We're, we're pliable, but uh, we're going to play it out and just, uh, yeah, do our best here. So... Give us just a moment, and we're going to be back with the Revolt versus Generals match probably just a minute or so, so stay tuned. All right, everybody. Hello. Brought the brackets, uh, brackets up for you there. So as you can see, we have Revolt and Generals about to start off pretty shortly here on the stream. Uh, so it is uh, the, the winner's final of, of sorts. It's a bit uh, structured a little bit differently. So kind of depending how you look at it, could be semifinals or winner's finals. But the point is <laughs> second to last match, essentially, in the upper bracket, okay? Uh, if that makes sense. And lower bracket's still kind of ongoing down there. Uh, which we may, again, stream after this, potentially just depending on how these delays pan out and battery life uh, for some of the users here in this tournament. Of course, first long-form tournament for many of these players being a Rookie Cup, so, you know, not a problem. We can uh, expect those delays in the figuring out process. We saw that uh, with pretty much every team, you know, when, they, when they're brand new. Now, that said, uh, on the cast, I'm Palador again. Thanks for your patience, and I'm being joined by Sir Dimwi, and thanks for his patience. And how is it going, Dimwi? It's going good. Yeah, got that. Uh, take care of. Yeah, we are. Uh, yeah, we are now in the uh, the the well. What Smash call, calls the winners' final, what I call the semifinal. Yeah. Uh, to me, this is a, this a proper semifinal. But uh, so so here's the situation. Uh, so they're having a question about are we casting the the lower bracket? We were actually intending to, but uh, we had to. We're going to be doing this one instead. And uh, so the winner of this game. Uh, is going to be done for the day. The winner of this game is going to be waiting for the grand final, the final, final, super final tomorrow. Right. Uh, but the loser of this game, uh, incidentally, will also be waiting for tomorrow uh, as they will be uh, going to the loser's final, which will face off against basically the winner of the loser's bracket. Um, so so they're also going to be waiting for tomorrow. Those two games will be played basically back to back. Those will be the, the last two games uh, we get done. Uh, so that's how, so both of these teams, uh, this is going to be the last game today. And the winner here goes to the final final. The, the loser here goes to the loser's final. If they win that, they'll be playing again tomorrow in the final final. 
All I heard uh, is, then, yeah. Uh, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> and there's still a lot of games to go on there in that lower bracket. Uh, there's uh, kind of a scheduling, conf uh, some con conflicting schedules and things going on. That's why we ended up back here in the winter final. Uh, we are intending, uh, just to answer that concern, we, we, we are and have been intending uh, to cast some from that that lower bracket just uh, uh situation we haven't been able to get around to it uh but ideally hopefully uh we will be going to some of those games after this one uh, uh and those will be uh so you might be thinking oh we're gonna we're gonna do the winner's final and then go to the lower those are going to be elimination games that's going to have everything on the line nobody's going to be back after they lose one of those games so those are going to be some very very tight games very exciting games oh, yeah. very excited to get to those but for now yes the winner's final here revolt versus generals the only two teams remaining undefeated yeah i'm working their way through the brackets so super impressive uh, from effort from revolt in that last series we saw on stream there uh, i mean it went we had an overtime uh, in one of the rounds that went straight to the round three and just you know you couldn't ask for better but it's kind of what you expect these days quite frankly, from these young teams, uh, young in terms of, you know, echo experience, maybe in age also, but either or, uh, in terms of, yeah, finding their first long form tournament, getting that out of the way and, you know, figuring out the whole process, uh, hence some of these delays that we uh, have experienced. But again, not, not a problem at all. We're happy to do this, which is why we mentioned earlier as well, too, for these teams who uh, will come here and view the stream, the VODs later on or for players at home who uh, have not yet gotten into competitive play, but are maybe interested at any level, uh, join VRML. Season three starting in uh, December, January 4th, my mistake. And yeah, it will be uh, fantastic. I mean, bigger, better than ever. So many teams. We finished season two again with an upwards of 180 teams, uh, uh, 1,100 players, a couple hundred subs even. I mean, it doesn't really matter how invested you are in echo whether you're trying to take it super hardcore or just a bit more casual uh, if you join up you're gonna have a good time you'll be facing off against teams on the ladder that are similarly skilled to you uh, once you know you get a few placement games out of the way and uh, scheduling is done between the teams uh, basically 24 7 you're given matches every monday morning uh, in u.s time zones north american time zones and uh, yeah if you have the rest of the the next seven days essentially until the end of sunday to schedule your matches and play them out two a week and a ton of casts every single day uh, rest assured so it doesn't matter how experienced uh, you are or aren't chances are you're going to get casted throughout the season so please do consider joining uh, at brml.com and of course hit up the, the discord page for echo games Twenty thousand users strong and yes uh, that is that is my plug there <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know, speaking of uh, uh, bigger and better VRML, uh, uh, bigger and better sponsors, they've, they've gotten some new ones recently. Big one uh, that made some waves is HyperX, but another big one that's making some waves today is a Stereot. Uh, also, a VRML sponsor uh, sponsoring this Quest 2 Rookie Cup, and uh, yeah, you're gonna have to hear about it again if you've been with us all day, because uh, this is for the this is for the folks that have not been with us all day or just getting here. Uh, Stereot, you know, uh, they've been. Um, they, they, their grips are the grips I've been using since CB1. Literally, literally three years. And uh, I went back, I was rereading my review for those uh, CB1 grips back uh, uh, on uh, Amazon. And uh, I noticed the only negative thing I had to say about them three years ago was the fastener. And they fixed that with the S, uh, with, with the, uh, the, the version for the S. Uh, they had a patent pending fastener. I don't know if it's still pending. They might have the patent now, but either way, uh, the thing works. It doesn't come unfastened now. And uh, I give it a 10 out of 10. I love their grips. I will use them forever. They're the only ones that work for me. And uh, yeah, so definitely uh, check out the products. They got all sorts of stuff. The winners of this will be getting, uh, each of them will be getting a uh, the, the, the Quest charging stand. Uh, no, you can't, you don't, have, it's not just a charging stand. It's also a nice little display stand uh, you can use for any of your Oculus products, any of your headsets there. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, second place, uh, also uh, getting a mouse, excuse me, first place, also getting a mouse pad from our other sponsors, VR Community Builders. Uh, it's a, uh, some Hasco has a lot to do with there. Hasco uh, been, I don't know, if, I, I, I almost want to say she's running it. I don't actually know if she's running it. Hasco, I don't know Hasco, had, not, Hasco had not, Hasco had not definitely uh, kept, yeah, uh, yeah at, the, at the top there and just doing a lot of great things for the community and uh, VR Community Builders these last couple of years here. 
And again, full, and then, big credit to them for helping uh, put this tournament together, as well as connecting, you know, production with the organizational side. It's a lot of credit to VR community builders in conjunction with Asterion Products uh, here to offer these prizes you see on uh, stream for you now on the screen. And yeah, that, that first place also getting that uh, that that mouse pad from. I'm, I'm rambling, I know. Mouse pad from VR Community Builder. Second place, getting the, uh, the the those controller skins, the grips I've been talking about, uh, or a twenty dollar gift card. And the reason you all you, there's the option of the gift card is because they don't make them yet for the Quest Two, uh, but it's definitely worth waiting for. They are absolutely phenomenal, and I'm pretty sure that twenty dollar gift card will probably cover. Uh, those grips when they when they they're they're actually being built. I can't make that promise because I haven't actually checked, but I'm fairly certain. Uh, if not completely covered, or mostly covered, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then also getting—I know I'm rambling. Also getting a uh, one-month Discord Nitro from VR Community Builders in second place, and that third place is getting the those skins or the twenty-dollar gift card. And that's the end of my ramble. <laughs> okay. Well, with that said, uh, just want to verify we have gotten the teams pinged, uh, correct? And uh, these, uh, everyone's in here. You can see the coaches. That's—it's not five on five, but the extra two players you see, uh, one for either team, is the coach, of course kind of a recurring theme from these rookie cups and we're always super happy to see these uh, teams you know being led by uh, experienced players coming in just to share the knowledge and really help along that learning curve that we know uh, with echo uh, it's there because unlike most games whether 2d vr otherwise uh, echo you can be a great gamer in general but the skills that translate into Echo are taken much more so from the traditional sports you'd play in real life, be it football, uh, soccer, basketball, hockey, etc. Right? So, you know, the, you see these players come in, the rookies, now when they're brand new, it's kind of like, even if they, they might be a pro gamer in a different game and really experienced and able to translate those skills across the board, but with Echo, it's like you're stripped away of all that and suddenly you're, you're kind of having to learn to use your entire body, your athleticism, your full wingspan and, and play it as if you were at the rec, uh, rec center or at, down at the park or what have you playing a uh, competitive league in real life of a sport. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting transition, but the content that we see available online now, the coaches that we have for these tournaments, all lends to the, the speedy learning process of these players. Now, uh, also, yeah. quick shout out to Cam Jam in there, seeing uh, Cam in the chat as well as Lazy Turtle. Didn't mean to ne uh, neglect you guys for a while. My bad on that. Uh, see Eric Medina saying hi, and Anakin Sims cheering on Generals. A Dynasty in there as well, and uh, Interlock Studios, of course. Hello to you. Moose Robots with Woo Generals and Dim Woo. Uh, what's up? Tim Wood, Sir, Sir Mod. We oh, sorry, you told me not to say that anymore. <laughs> Too late, though. Or is it? Maybe. Mm. Don't ban me, please. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, gr great to have everyone tuning in here throughout the day of this stream. And again, we'll have a uh, return of this stream uh, and the finals of this series, and for lower brackets and upper brackets tomorrow, the grand finals, you can say. And just as well, uh, following that, tomorrow over on Subnation's Twitch channel, by the by, we have the Dunks and Half Courts Invitational. Uh, will be streamed on Subnation, their Twitch channel, but it will be presented by us. So you'll have uh, your VRML casting crew here in production, and we'll be happy to cast that tournament as well, which is going to be a very fun one, no doubt, consisting of Master Tier players. Uh, eight of them coming in to do kind of an all-star skills challenge of sorts if you think about, about it that way It's an exhibition event uh, But everyone will be coming home with prizes as well from that event tomorrow and uh, among the $1,500 prize pool uh, Everyone going home with something and it'll be a very fun event to watch with the dunks half courts and then a exhibition match So stay tuned and be tuned in for that tomorrow Which is at a uh, one Pacific time So I'm not sure exactly what the holdup hold up is here. I can actually probably unmute the stream. Uh, the players, that is. I don't know if they're saying anything or not, but it is It is an open comm to uh, tournament. Now, granted, I've had the comms muted typically for the matches themselves, because uh, it does typically get a little cluttered with potentially 10 people talking at once, in addition to the casters, so I guess 12 people. Uh, but we have heard some nice sportsmanship and things like that throughout the day. And, 
seeing the body language on an exciting plays. It's been fun. Yeah, so uh, pings are, uh, excuse me, teams are aware uh, that they are ready to go. It sounds like there, there's a, uh, a technical issue um, that they are dealing with. Uh, yeah, I was trying to unmute and get a, an ear, but I haven't gotten much. No, it's, it's, uh, I'm, see, it's, uh, I'm getting messages now. Uh, I'm being informed in Discord. Oh, gotcha. All right. Uh, yeah, that's that's why I wasn't talking for a minute there. I was talking to one of those coaches. That's okay. And, I had... uh, yeah, we should get started here soon. Yeah, I had the uh, players on for a little bit there as kind of some ambient casting, I guess. They can cast their own situation. But uh, now we're happy to get these casts in. Delays aside, I mean, to be expected, but the, the gameplay has been very rewarding so far. That last match, phenomenal, as we mentioned. And it only gets better the deeper you get into these brackets and the closer you get to finals and grand finals. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm. we know what Revolt can do. Question is, what can General do? We know that they've done enough to be undefeated here so far, just the same as Revolt. Uh, and with that said, we are going to rebound into the first round. So let's go, Dimwi. Yeah, ready to go here. We got, uh, yeah, Generals versus Revolt, the only two remaining undefeated teams uh, in this tournament, and it is going to be Revolt getting that headbutt there. It is going to bounce its way into the general zone, but picked up there by Psy uh, Psychotic. Psyche <laughs> Psychotic. That's a great name. That is, oh. oh, I can't believe I like that name so much. I love it. Psychotic. Okay, it took me a moment. To, it took a second to click, but now it's going to be G Tyler walking us with it. Oh. Take one of the oh, storm. Oh my goodness. What a ridiculous stop. All right, well, got the stop indeed. Revolt now trying to, oh, look at the juke there from Storm, but on the second attempt, swooped in. It was Tyler G, G Tyler, as Ooh. Pizza Eater, definitely feasting on another steal, but now a intercept from Beast in the back end, and now it's back again to just this ping pong play, uh, trying to find the positioning here. The first minute expired in this uh, first round. And I saw a question, who's the uh, the captain for Generals? So the captains in this game, Vacant for Generals and Oculus Prime for Revolt. So Vacant is the coach there in orange. You can see him uh, number 00, zero along with G Tyler, they're both 00, zero, but Vacant, uh, the 00 the zero zero that should be in those tubes there as this one is being fought for here. Cream has it, Cream. Look at the send that one across. Unfortunately, nobody there to recover. Storm comes out to try to play it, but Doctor is going to get there first. Doctor sending that one up. Oh, almost ricochets to the teammate, but it's going to be Cream getting that one, sending that one out through the far tubes and all the way down into the general zone. Yeah, and, and a few re-grabs here on some, uh, the chains, able to get these players to the other side of the floor. I like the fact that they're going for that mobility. We saw a lot of that, of course, in the last couple of matches streamed here today. And... Uh, yeah, I'm curious on whether it translates into a high or low scoring match because despite the speed the last time around, the last match, uh, it was still pretty low scoring for most of it. But Revolt trying to find their first goal and we're about two minutes into this round now, still at zero apiece. Someone's going to bounce around, find the hands there. Pizza Eater, Pizza Eater now with it. Pizza Eater sending it, looking to, oh, does, oh, oh, look oh at the no, defense. no, <laughs> no, oh my goodness. Oh. That was so close. Cream almost recovering on that one, but it dings off. It's going to get sent out, and now nice chain there. Storm's going to pick that one up. Uh-oh, uh, headbutt by the teammate. Loose, good slap there. G Tyler going to send this one into the rebound zone. He had, he saw the opportunity. He took it, but it, and it is going to find Psychaotic. Psychaotic dumping that one into the bubble, looking for a uh, race for it here, but it's going to be Cream picking it up. Cream under pressure, sending it out there into the hands. G Tyler takes oh, a no. shot. Oh, no. 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 Three stops in the goal on either side now, just back and forth. Two and a half minutes in. Uh, what, what? The personality of these matches today, they've each had some unique ones. This one so far, super defensive, specifically in the goal. The last match was more so around the bubble, but now we're just seeing stoppage directly in the goal by the goalkeepers. So uh, an open one this time, going to be just missed and rebounded. So we're still stuck at zero apiece as they really are fighting so hard on either end to get something going. And this, this is one of those times where you say, like, yeah, yeah, it's scoreless, but this is not a, oh, no. Oh, th okay, they had a man back anyway, so that, that was not going <laughs> in. But, man, that was, a, what an ambitious uh, shot there. Well, maybe a clear that was looking like a shot, but nonetheless. And, uh, yeah, this is one of those times where you say it is scoreless, but just because it's a low-scoring game does not mean it's, it's uh, does not mean it's not exciting. Does not mean it's not exciting. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, yes. 
and it definitely is. There, look at the good pass and the finish. There you go. A pizza eater from a Luma sniper. That was a sniper of an assist over to that post and just right off the backboard. Uh, beautiful move and finally the first two points. I was half expecting another save. And that is a, that is a, you know, you know why that wasn't a save. I can tell you why that wasn't a save. As a goalie, I can tell you exactly why. That, the, the angle he took the shot from looked like it should not have gone in off that cone. It, 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 so, so as a goalie, when you see that disc coming in from that shot angle, you're probably thinking flat, you're probably thinking a flat bounce off the backboard. You're probably not thinking cone. So that's how you're going to be reacting. And it, the way it hit the cone and it, it pocketed itself into that corner, was just perfect. That was a beautiful shot to earn that first two points there. And a nice work up the floor from Generals uh, on that, that last attempt. I mean, the, the passes across the floor were actually pretty nice. Now, it did result in eventually a turnover, but that's just because of some good defense, but none there. Whoa. Storm clears it through right in that corner uh, of that post. So the goal post, that is, and that's four points for Revolt. That was just nice. That's one of those, so you see how he comes off the post there. He, he comes off low because he had he was playing the disc. Uh, you know, he, he pushed off to get to, to grab the disc. He didn't have to, but th that's what that's how it worked out. And when he pushed off, he set himself low. But the placement of the shot, despite the fact that he was on that sideways fade, was just beautiful. That was a beautiful shot there from Storm. Uh, so far, Revolt is looking really good. And General's still yet though. Like here, once again, their passes have actually been. Uh, really money is at least where they're going some of the connections just missed kind of like this one they're putting enough you know finesse on it so it's not just uh taking these aggressive uh bounces on a lot of these attempts so it goes right back to the fact that uh i mentioned before where it's the idea is correct the execution not quite there but that could always change on a dime as these teams continue to get warmed into this round and now that one clearing out gonna find its hand uh find its way to g tyler g tyler now with it sending this one back uh, nice reset there to beat, uh, uh, excuse me, Beast. Beast sending that one back to G Tower. That was a nice little sequence. G Tower wasn't able to track it down, but giving goes like that are so important. You watch a team like Kang, they live off of those giving goes. And, and it's their beautiful plays. Oh, what a steal there by Cream. Cream, big steal, getting that one cleared out. But that, the, the plays like that are going to take you very far. Well, taking them very far is that stack, that boost, uh, just enough to get the disc loose into the bubble. Missing, rebounding, sending, but not finding. It's right back up to the top again. Pass the hand, slap down once again. The rebound, it's off. Oh, man, this play is right now trying to find something, but it's absolute chaos. It's psych chaos, and psych, no goal as a save, but now a dunk. Storm coming in and raining it down for the sixth point. What a series of bounces and plays, and finally the score. Left dimly speechless. Uh, but, yeah, uh, no, absolutely speechless. No, uh, small technical issue I, th I think they might have to resolve during the intermission. I was just letting them know. Uh, but yeah, no, Beast down with it. That was a, just another good goal there by Revolt. I mean, they're, they're, they're just, they're, they're really showing why they're here. And uh, and it's not just, you know, there, there's uh, I, I, you know, some people early on were, were, were concerned about Oculus being in uh, Oculus uh, Prime being in spec. And that's not what's happening here. These are individual skill plays we're seeing. These goals are scoring, the shots they're taking. That's not something your coach is going to tell you how to do that's something you have to learn yourself on your own time with your own patience and your own work and and it's paying off for them the the defensive plays the goalie stops the shots this revolt team is phenomenal yeah, and generals though they're still not far behind uh, just once it comes into the the bubble areas where some of these passes are not connecting despite the good position play i mean here they go they, they lose the disc they're trying to find the stacks and they will in fact get their three of them all to the other side so they're showing some nice speed and now maybe a little bit of a rush slap will miss the hands however of the first revolt player but aluma sniper is there for a recovery and sends it very nicely to pizza eater who now has a goal but missing the shot rebounded by cream and cream again you know cream is one i've noticed it tends to find himself in those just those big positions like that to, to recover those those uh those uh errant bounces it, he's he's always finding himself in that spot and he does it again there gets a beautiful cut pass there to pt or brings that one in for the two that's going to give revol the eight point lead here with just about one and a half to go re, uh, remaining here in round one i'm being redundant it is what it is and uh well off to the races again uh trying to find some points with a 137 remaining here in the first round. 
Uh, Generals looking, uh, again, good on the initial work up the floor. It's usually this, this pass, that pass, that one that's... Uh, you know, the last one before a bubble entry, essentially. That's the one that's been kind of going astray for them a few different times here, despite the otherwise good work up the floor. Uh, so let's see if they can kind of break that tradition of sorts. They do get a pass over to Psychaotic. And, uh, you know, again, well positioned. You can see backboard. You can see midfield. I mean, they're everywhere on the floor. But now losing it to Cream. And Cream sending that one down. It's a good, good. Oh no! Oh, oh! <laughs> I couldn't tell from my angle. I really couldn't tell. I thought that was in for sure. Beast is able to pick that one up, and uh, does get that one cleared out. Uh, uh, as that chain overshot a little bit. That's uh, that's that's another lesson you have to learn. You know, it's not when it comes to chaining around the arena. It's not just about speed. There's three facets to chain. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> I think it was on its way in. Doctor gets the accidental grab. That's what you see that happens sometimes. You just have your grip button. Was it accidental? I think it was. I'm pretty sure he's turned around when it came in. Uh, that's my oh, take. No, no, it, was, it was. It was. It was a. He saw it. He grabbed it. But on that note, uh, oh, you're right. This is, this is a thing. See, everyone kind of goes through as uh, players and teams. General rule of thumb: if the uh, your teammate doesn't call that it's good, then it's not the fault of anyone who grabs it along the way. Uh, because this game is so fast and frantic, and it's hard to tell sometimes for sure what's in or out. Oh, Hasco, I'm going to expand on that during intermission as a, psycho, uh, uh, a psychotic uh, sends this one out. Powder is going to appreciate this one as this one gets cleared back into the revolt zone, but it will be round one to revolt. And uh, Hasco right in chat talking about uh, uh, that me and her were mercy a few times together. Uh, that was back in ESL 2. I was on a team for one day with Hasco and Ender's Lot, the, fa the fabled Ender's Lot, the level 51, the fabled Hasco, all three of us on a team together. Our first game, Powder is gonna love this, our first game was against uh, Eclipse, Powder's team, the world champions Eclipse, and it was casted. So yes, when we say we know the feeling, <laughs> we know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, no, just kidding. Uh, yeah, it's, you know what, it goes back to what I was saying, a couple things you were saying before, with, uh, first of all, the skill level increase uh, these days, even from these rookie players we're witnessing here, and then, I know you said earlier in the stream when it first began, you were kind of talking about uh, the comparisons, like, the, to, you know, players, players of old, like you and I, I suppose, who aren't necessarily playing competitive anymore, although that may change for one of us soon. Uh, anyway, uh, just kidding, maybe. Uh, but the point is, you know, people have these certain expectations uh, based on reputation, right? And things like that. But what people don't understand is, man, people are, uh, players in this game are so good at every level now in comparison. Uh, a lot of that is thanks to Quest, Quest 2, Echo VR being released for that, and you know, having kind of a more of a mainstream, uh, you know, audience in mass flood into Echo VR. So you're already by default with that bound to get some just naturals of the game. And then following that, because they have so much to study from now, and the coaches helping, the boot camps available that uh, across, you know, the league pick up nights. I mean, there are so many efforts put in to help new players along uh, that. You know, you take you take players like with expectations. Well, you know, you say when you join VRML matches and pubs or uh, stuff, or when I talk about playing and people thinking I'm going to be stomping uh, everywhere across Master League. No, not the case. <laughs> not the case. You know, there's just too much talent in the league now. No, there really is. And uh, some of the OGs, as as uh, we we've come to call ourselves. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I think we might have seen a drop here. But uh, yeah. some of the OGs will not admit it, but they are getting stepped on by some of the uh, the those first generation quests yeah. in particular. Can I give a? They want to admit it, but it's totally true. Yeah, well, here on that. No, let me get a, give a quick shout out because one of the players I've been playing with slash against in uh, privates many times says, "Hold on, maybe a three on four situation. Will they score? No. Uh, they had a chance at it, so swooping it out of there was Tyler." Uh, but Steel Skydiver from uh, Ding, or formerly of Ding, I suppose, uh, Season 1 Rookie Champions, been playing Here. against him in privates. My goodness, is he ridiculous, uh, considering the amount of time he's been playing. I mean, he just gobbles up goal attempts left, right, and center when he's goalkeeping. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of players and teams like that in the league who are new, but they are not to be trifled with whatsoever. No, really not. G. Tyler, long shot. Ooh. That was close. Yeah. You know, 
You know how close that was? That was close on the way in. It goes a little bit wide. It was also close on the way back. It barely, barely nicked the top of that uh, that backboard cone, and that's what made it go a little bit high. Mm -hmm. So that was that was that was almost in on two accounts as a uh, pizza eater sending this one through. And uh, yeah, still missing that player over there on Revolt. I'm not sure what's going on, but considering they're currently playing 4v3, but I think they're doing pretty good as a uh, uh, nice play there, Doctor. Look for that cross pass. Ooh, just out of reach as it is finally picked up there by Beast. Beast going over to Psychaotic there. Psychaotic, ooh, was trying to send that one in. But Storm with the slap sends that one back away and still scoreless here in this 3v4 uh, uh, in round two. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Psychaotic was placed nicely in the nest on that other end, but... Like the, just the good defensive dives are coming through. And now diving in for a three. It's Storm again. Man, the Storm drain as he drains another shot. You know, this is one of those things. So uh, one of the things we started doing on Nova, as we do get that uh, that pause here for uh, to get that player back in. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we started doing on Nova is when we were in a scrim, if, if, uh, if somebody dropped, whether it was our team or the other team, um, and a lot of the other teams we were scrimming with started doing this as well. It's, it's kind of, you kind of have to be mutual about it. We would just continue playing in that three before situations because it is a situation you will find yourself in. Whether, whether you know, it, it might be rare, it might only happen that one time. Uh, and I could actually talk about a, a one time it happened to us, but um, I cast that. that was very, yeah, you remember, you know exactly what I'm talking uh, yep, about. Yep, sure do. It was uh, very entertaining for me, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for me. Uh, but no, it's it's you're gonna find yourself in those situations on both sides. Yeah. In a four v three, even when you have the the numbers advantage there in the four v three, because sometimes the way the other team will start playing is different. You you don't actually adjust for it properly, and you can find yourself losing in a four v three situation. Um, I have a highlight. Uh, one of the highlights, one of the videos I made is Joker scoring on Kang four v three, and that's Kang. You know what I mean? So it happens to the best of us. But the rest will tell you. Uh, I'll, I'll get to. We'll, we'll revisit that uh, as we are restarting here. But uh, we'll definitely get back to that uh, that 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 old that old story uh, at the next intermission. Yeah, and so uh, Luma Sniper here back in the game. I mean, again, all things considered, that a three v four for a while still. Paved, uh, paved out for a nice goal, as will be Psy Chaotic now. Whoa, look at the pass, but the save again. Aluma oh Sniper coming in hot off the crash and return, crashing the boards, that is now, uh, for a good heave into the other side. Yeah, it's not like Generals haven't had the opportunities. They have, but it, it, it's not even like they're missing their shots. They're, they're not missing. Those goalies are just, oh, <laughs> there's another one. Another three there for uh, for Revo. That's going to put them up by six, but only three minutes in. There's still a lot yeah. of time here in round two. Uh, but you, excuse me, uh, <laughs> did not see that coming. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this, uh, I'm just I'm going to beat myself in shame for a minute. All right. Well, as uh, these teams launch out and try to find a pass, and as then we pass gas, it will be <laughs> Beast here with a disc uh, and down to the trench. But you know what? No, no, no hiccups at all uh, for Revolt so far, despite the crash. And uh, yeah, like you said, didn't we? They're not missing even on the defense. Look at that again, sniper. Wow. Actually, I'm gonna look. I want to know how many saves have we seen. We're only seeing three registered saves out of Revolt. I know it's been more than that. I know it has, because uh, because I've seen at least four off the, just off the top of my head uh, that I can think of. So I mean, we're seeing some phenomenal goalie play there really uh, on the side of Revo. Illuminous Snipers had a few of them. Uh, also, I saw Storm ha had that big first one early on that look that uh, was like a, a no look last second save. Uh, yeah, we're seeing some phenomenal defense. Like I said, Generals are getting the opportunities. The shots are on goal. Uh, just the the, the Revo goalies are just shutting them down. Yeah, so far that has indeed been the case. Four minutes into the second round, Revolt winning that first round uh, by an 8-2 to two margin and still looking uh, pretty good here. Even a, a higher pace for them uh, for on offense for Revolt so far, but still plenty of time to make up a six points difference uh, as Revolt does actually get the disc back, so back into the goal and uh, see what happens here as Revolt sends it up but just barely past the Storm's hands and rebound now to Pizza who loses the disc. And now a good, uh, def uh, nice pickup there. Nice reset storm to Luma Sniper. Luma Sniper back to storm. Oh my goodness, man. This team is so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, storm. They're, they're all good. Sorry, I don't mean to say it like that. They're all good. Just this Revolt team, has, it's, like, it's like we've watched them improve through these couple games. Yeah, and right now, I, 
those scores coming in from Storm, I mean, credit again to the whole team, but able to be kind of the shot finisher there uh, is Storm. But all the meanwhile, Generals still trying to get their points on the score sheets. Uh, once more, it's just that, that last pass that's right near that bubble is what gets in the hitch because the, the, the things they do after that or before that are pretty good in their positioning. Same kind of thing. It's just that, that last pass which would get them the drive into the goal where it's kind of going wrong. Yeah, that's uh, I, I, I've come to call it the thirteenth pass. It's uh, you know uh, Nova. We had that issue periodically. Just you'd have these beautiful pass sequences all the way down, and it's that last one. Oh, there it is! Psy chaotic, eight meters out, hits a three off the backboard. Well, in nice coordination there. Who was that? Uh, short name, I believe it was Beast. Beast or Doctor got in there, stunned out the goalie. And that allowed psychotic. That allowed the the room there, the time for that shot to go in for psychotic. That was beautiful, beautiful sequence there from General Sir in that three. Absolutely. I only wish I could rewind the instant replay a little bit more because the passing execution, basically end to end, of that floor from trench all the way to the opposite goal uh, was just picturesque, and it got them those three points. Beautifully done. See if they can do it again as Cream just barely gets it out before Cream is clobbered and pizza. Looking to feast. Hopefully no slobber. And now Pizza moving in here. Slowing it down. Nice. You know, that's a nice little stutter there. That was phenomenal. Oh, big ambitious shot there from Cream. Uh, you see some of those uh, go off in VRML. There's no look kind of behind the back. Uh, wingers, I call them J, J shots. Because uh, it's uh, something I saw Jay Walker do. He was the first player I saw doing it. Uh, I know uh, uh, Saluna has gotten exceptionally good at them as well. Uh, but now Beast with a good pickup there. Beast sending that one across the side. Chaotic, not able to handle that one. A good leech there by Cream to pick that one up. So big turnover there. Cream is just on fire in this game as he sends out to the backliner for the reset. Look at the resets here by Revolt. That's, I think, a big part of their success in this series is look at that, they, they don't have that problem. You see so often, how often do we see teams oh, have that issue where they're oh. always moving forward? And here, the, it just, that was, this is top level stuff. These guys yeah. need to stay together. They need to play in the VRML. And I look forward to the success they will see. Look, if you stripped away the names, if I, if I turned off this little UI right here and took away all the names, okay? And you watch that play that Revolt just executed. Same with the Generals play when they scored that three. If you watch that, uh, you would think they are a lot higher tier of a team. Like, you wouldn't think this is a rookie cup. You would be saying, oh, the, what, what's happening on a weekly VRML match today? I didn't know we were in season already because that was some great execution. No, it absolutely was. And again, I'm going to smack down any Smurf accusations. These are not Smurfs. These are not Smurfs. These are, these are players that have been playing no later since September 1st, no earlier than September 1st. And uh, they, they've just, they, some people just are, are, you know, they get that that dedicated, they can put that much time in. There is some uh, fortune involved, you know, some, uh, um, some, uh, 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 oh, a shot there. Another recovery, oh, another stop. So that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. A little sniper, you're not seeing him make these big flashy moves. He's just making saves and they're phenomenal and they're great. And I just, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. Yeah, now the true test is can you turn the defense back into the offense, get it to uh, the other side? They do. So clear from Pizza going off the wall. And now look at that, just awaiting the stack, the return to sender and nice score shot. once again, continuing to fire off left, right, and right down center. Yeah, that's just that's just a great shot. 17 meters out uh, through, the, uh, uh, through the edge of the mail slot there. And uh, yeah, that was absolutely phenomenal shot there. And Revolt now up 13 to three here in round two with less than a minute to go here. Now, Generals may be able to get a few quick goals here. Uh, maybe send us into an overtime, possibly. I don't know. We'll find out. Speed Heater going to send this one in. It's going to go all the way down to the bubble there. Bounce around. Going to be a bit of a race for it, but Storm's going to get stunned out uh, by that uh, two leechers, in fact, uh, two leeches. As that one gets slapped away, but there's a Luma Sniper just holding down that back line. It's the positioning here. I mean, th their, their positioning is phenomenal. Oh, no. Oh. I, I don't think that was intended as a shot, but very close to going in. Nice pickup there by G-Tally. He's going to get that one cleared out. All right. And with a bounce, that's going to go close. Those are always so dangerous. It will be retained by Storm and a Revolt in position here to take the series. It would seem in the two rounders. 13-3, uh, to three, Generals. Still a lot of great things to say about them. It's just that 13th pass, as you said, the 13th pass at the 13th hour. Uh, trying to find one more there right above the bubble. 
Maybe one more go, but no, just barely missing that as uh, this round and series will conclude and Revolt continuing to impress here on the stream. Yeah, Revolt is going to get that one into over Generals and just well played uh, by Revolt. And uh, yeah, so uh, another reassurance I'm going to make. I mean, there are certain, there are certain ways that uh, experienced players move in the game. Uh, that if you've been around for for a while, there's a certain way that experienced players move that new players just don't move like that yet. And so this this concern over Smurfs, um, one, it's we very. I mean, all this has been verified. Uh, uh, you can ask Hasco about that. But also, I mean, if, if somebody was moving in a way that was questionable, we would we. I, I promise you, me and both me and Paladar would would notice. And uh, this is these are all. These are all rookie players. These are all players that have been around for the last, three, that have uh, started within the last three months. Uh, I, I understand the concern, uh, but it's, it's yeah, this is, uh, this is, these are just dedicated players that have gotten good at the game fairly quickly. And Revolt looking mighty good at the game for sure. Uh, Generals just as well. Um, and just to kind of add on to that too, I mean, again, with it being a quest two, obviously requires a Facebook account to make. Uh, so, I mean, is, okay, is smurfing possible? Yes, probable? No, not not probable unless, if for the sake of this rookie tournament, you want to risk your entire VR account uh, from having multiple accounts, which goes against the TOS, obviously, of Facebook, uh, Oculus, and, and so forth. So, I mean, possible, yes, but just not probable. And, I mean, unlikely, but yeah. Uh, with that said, you know, I'm, I'm super impressed uh, for these teams. That we've seen, especially the last few matches, uh, we've seen here Revolt, Monstars, Generals. I mean, the passing has been fantastic. Like, movement aside, like, then we mentioned players have a certain way of moving, and the more experience they get, and I will concur with that. You can kind of, you can kind of tell in a sense, uh, just based on the the very specific movements they do. But I mean, they're still going for the grabs. They're getting the re-grabs, the chains together. The passes are placed correctly. They're position correctly i mean it's those kind of things which are working so well and uh, revolt they're looking really dangerous honestly uh for you know being potential winners here in uh, this rookie quest 2 cup so i'm excited to follow them uh, into the matches tomorrow as well as uh, the lower brackets here that may or may not be uh, streamed here <laughs> soon but yeah all, all in all impressive effort from these two teams high score storm over on revolt with 12.3 saves Pizza Eater, 5 points, 11 stuns. Aluma Sniper with 3 saves. Probably more. Uh, almost definitely more, honestly. Uh, and then for Cream, 3 assists, 2 steals, 25 stuns. On the general side, it was 3 saves, 1 steal, 13 stuns for Beast. Doctor with 2 points, 1 assist, 2 saves, 38 stuns. Psy Chaotic, the name which brings Dimwi many a smiles. Uh, 3 points, 2 steals, 11 uh, stuns. And then for G Tyler, it was uh, an assist, three saves, and five steals, along with 21 stuns. So with that, uh, we'll bring up real quick again the, these teams playing for the great prizes sponsored by Asterion Products and uh, VR Community Builders here. Uh, much appreciation to them for uh, first place. You see the illuminated charging stand from Asterion products, as well as a mouse pad from VR Community Builders, and that Discord color, the Discord clout. Of course, 20k strong in the Echo Games server, so that means uh, a lot just the same. You know, get that recognition for being uh, special up-and-comers in the league. Now, second place, you have the Touch Controller skins, which Dimwi is quite a fan of, as, or uh, $20 of store credit for Asterion products. And a month of Discord Nitro for some continued clout, courtesy of VR Community Builders. And then third place, we'll also get some Evolution Touch Controllers, courtesy of Asterion. And, or $20 of store credit. So, thank you uh, once more to Asterion Products and VR Community Bil Builders for building up this tournament to be a very fun one to watch. Now, uh, with that said, uh, we're going to take... Again, quick intermission and try to figure out exactly what we may or may not be doing for the next match uh, due to the delays in the lower bracket. So uh, I'll head off to an intermission. I'll bring up the brackets for you to get a look. But uh, we most definitely will be continuing on tomorrow as well for the, the final games in the upper and lower brackets. But uh, as far as what we're doing today, we'll find out soon, and I'll let you know as soon as I know. So be right back.
All right, hello stream, Palador here again. Uh, just uh, give you a little update on what we're gonna do. So we will have, it looks like one, uh, at least one more match coming up here. It will probably be the final one of the uh, the day. It'll be a lower bracket match. And uh, it's going to either be the Monstars versus the winners of uh, Havoc and Team Wildlings, or it may be Underrated Rookies 2.0 versus the winners of Fire Ferrets and Jackal. It kind of depends which one of these matches finish up and become available to cast first. Uh, so that will be in the lower bracket. And we'll follow that one. Uh, again, the upper bracket uh, grand finals as well as the lower bracket finals, uh, they're going to still be played tomorrow. Uh, so you'll have some matches, uh, three of them tomorrow, to determine ultimately the top teams who will be receiving those great prizes that we mentioned uh, just minutes ago. So with that said, do stay tuned as we figure out exactly where we're going. But in all likelihood, uh, from what I understand, the Havoc and Wildlings match is almost finished. So we should, in theory, be heading off to that match within the next, I don't know, five to ten minutes, I imagine. So do stay tuned for that, and we will be right back.
Alright everybody, sorry for the delay, but you know what? We've got your match along the way finally here. It's Monstars versus Team Wilding, Wildlings in the lower bracket. And uh, yeah, we're excited to get this stream going. Appreciative towards these teams for waiting and uh, getting this stream in. Uh, on the casting desk, once more, I'm Palador and I got Sir Dimwi beside me. And uh, Dimwi, I think... Uh, we, we both breathe this, a collective sigh of relief once we got into this match, and uh, now we're ready to go. Yeah, very ready to go. Yeah, we got uh, the Monstars versus Team Wildlings. Uh, this is Team Wildlings' first cast today. Yeah. Uh, and incidentally, incidentally, it's, not, it's certainly, uh, you know, not something uh, we did intentionally, but incidentally, the Monstars, this is their third cast today. Uh, sometimes it just works out that way. It's it's not something, you know, we try yeah. uh, to be cognizant of that, and just sometimes it works out that way. And uh, we were looking at both of the games. There's two games that's going to be happening right now. Uh, we were looking at doing both of them. We were we were kind of on uh, whichever one works first is the one we're going to do, and this just happened to be the one. So it's going to be the Wa Monsters versus Team Wildlings. This is an elimination round. Mm -hmm. The team that loses here is out of the tournament, period, done and done. So this is it. Uh, for one of these teams, this is it. For the other one, they're going to move on 
to the next round, which uh, I'll pull up my handy dandy chart. <laughs> and uh, the next round will be the losing semifinals. So basically uh, uh, just um, one, two, three rounds away from those finals. So uh, the, so if either of these teams want to get to those the grand finals, they're going to have to win this game and two other games after it in order to get there. Uh, so yeah, this is a this is a do or die situation. This is a, both teams are still eligible for prizes, yeah. um, and it's a matter of winning. And uh, yeah, we are going to get started here as I see some uh, high moms go out, and uh, we are going to get started here for round one between the Monstars and Team Wildlings. Absolutely. So uh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here at VR Master League for this Quest Two Rookie Cup. Uh, off to the launch uh, again. It's sponsored there by. VR Community Builders and Asterion uh, Products providing the prizes for the first, second, and third place teams in this cup. With that said, here we go. Team Wildlings on blue and Monstars on orange. And uh, yeah, coaches, uh, Lokai, the coach for uh, for Team Wildlings and uh, Technowebs, the coach for the Monstars there for anyone uh, uh, watching and curious. And uh, incidentally, conveniently, they are the top names on the team list. So you just look at the bottom four names. Those are the players in the game. And that's going to be Loma, Loma forever. Picking that one up, sending this one into the bubble. Big Roma, big, excuse me, Big Rome trying to come up and play that one. Can't get there quite yet. But T-Tau, uh, the big man of the day, picking that one up. T-Tau, uh, someone uh, I worked with recently, uh, he's a, he's a uh, exercise. Uh, what was it? Uh, I just forgot. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, he's a professional, though. Whatever he does is very important. And uh, if he wants to interview you, say yes. Yes. All right. Well, trying to make the best out of this play. It's Otaku off the backboard, but couldn't find the angles on that. So slapping it right out of there into the bottom of uh, Trench. Going now towards the midfield, where it does actually slide past a couple players of so Toxic and Big Rome, regathering that disc. About a minute and a half through this first round here, working it up the floor and uh, passing it over to the Pac-Man, as uh, this Geo over here is called, for maybe the people not super familiar uh, familiarized with Echo yet. A lot of different names, but generally these island things are called islands or uh, geometry. And uh, various names uh, are kind of common, but you know we'll, we'll stick with the generic one for a lot of these. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, exercise therapist is what there I was, uh, is what T T <laughs> does. But uh, yeah, Nitro uh, Nitro Bald. I don't even know. I'm not sure how to say that. Nitro Bald. That's what I'm gonna go with. Like uh, it. Has it for a moment, loses it, and then that's uh, Quentin there. Has that one for a moment, loses it. And uh, someone asking is five v five. No, this is not five v five. It is proper four v four. The coaches are in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, Loki there on blue. Techno Webs there on orange are the coaches, and uh, they're hanging out in uh, their teams' respective tubes right now. A uh, quick shout out as well, because it kind of happened at the tail end of the last match that we streamed and uh, didn't get to it as a result. But Rox Titan, about half an hour ago at the end of that last match, he subscribed uh, to Twitch here, Twitch Prime, and uh, 10 months, Tier 1, actually. So thank you for the Tier 1 sub and the renewal for almost a year now. Uh, right there, though, is a missed attempt. But right back at them, Team Wildlings. We're still scoreless, but maybe not for long on the anchor shot. Ooh. Also just barely missing. Yeah, that one dinging out. It's going to find its way down to the tube there. But bouncing around the lip, Nitro Baldos. Uh, Nitro Baldos. Somebody in chat, if you know this player, please help me out with how to pronounce uh, the name. Uh, Nitro Baldos. So uh, had it for a moment. It's over to Llama Llama. Over to Quentin. Ooh. Quentin coming in. Quentin's going to hit it for the two. And that's all there. Yelling. Team Wildlings getting that first goal of round one here three minutes in. Oh, there. I'll unmute briefly there. So this is an open comm tournament now, generally for the middle of cast. As you can maybe already tell, uh, try to keep it muted because otherwise that's a that's a lot of that's that's up to ten other players besides us casters potentially talking at the same time. But you know, I love to hear it. All the coordination, the coaching as well. Uh, finally, the first two points on the board for Wildlings and trying to offer that rebuttal is oh wow oh. off the head there. I think that was toxic. Uh, oh, let me unmute. Was it toxic? <laughs> <laughs> it was toxic, no, unintentionally so. Lomo was not happy about that one either. You know, it's happened to the best of us too. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not alone in that one. We've we, it's happened to all of us as uh, Smooth Ryan there with three tier one subs. That's major. Yeah, as uh, Quentin there picking that one up, sending that one over. And Zig Gunslinger as well, familiar face from uh, the last time we streamed here on this channel. You and I, the uh, Arena Charity Cup. So thank you for the subs there. And uh, right now, trying to go down below, call it sub zero, but no, it's not a goal. Ooh. Two to two still here in this round. Yeah, that one bouncing up, but uh, Nitro Baldos, I feel bad saying his name because I know I'm saying it wrong. I know I am. 
Uh, you know, I'm gonna call him Nitro. I, I know that's not right. But I that's think, easier. So I think Nitro. NTRI. It's like no, no try. So maybe, maybe. No try. Maybe. I don't know. All those. I don't know. It I'm sounds, going with sounds, Nitro. Sounds like a Pokemon. I don't know. Um, Quinton though. Well, he is on uh, for that shot. Going back up by two. Yeah, and they're very excited about that one. Uh, uh, pushing that one in Quinton, bringing that one in for that too. And uh, yeah, Wildlings pushing that lead back up against the Monstars. And just, I also want to point out again, the Monstars were the first team to form. They were the first team to register. Uh, so they've had the most time together. So uh, a team like Team Wildlings able to, uh, who just formed literally the other day, uh, being able to get a one up on them. Oh, look Ooh. at the long shot. Oh, just wide. Oh, that was so close. Uh, but yeah, it says a lot about this uh, Team Wildlings uh, uh, being able to compete with uh, the, the Monstars as a Taku, the man of the day. Someone whose name we've been saying a lot today gets that one in. Oh, yeah. he He's a player for those who maybe didn't tune into the earlier uh, matches. We streamed him a couple times already. Uh, and each time, just getting better and better and really lighting up every category of the statue. Uh, so he's someone to watch out for. And I, I do love that. It was the same thing with the uh, Quest Rookie Cup uh, 1 back in May where... I love seeing the players who come out of these tournaments really kind of making a name for themselves. Because uh, now that means when we go into Season 3 of VRML on January 4th, we, we kind of know who to be looking out for on some of these rookie teams coming into the league. Speaking of names, big shout out there to Ryruff and chat. Uh, uh, Tribal, uh, Tribos. Tribos, he goes by. Tribos. Uh, as uh, It's going to be Quentin bringing Ooh. it in. Oh! That one gonna bounce out as well. And we've seen a few of those here from Wildlings. They get very, very close and they just, they hit that ding. And we all know the pain of that. Loma with the moves coming in, juke it out to defenders, bringing that one in, putting it in for the two. And uh, man, they're energizing me right now. <laughs> See the reaction there. Also after the goal went in a little bit of, again, the physical and audible celebration uh, coming through there on stream. Love to see it. It's, it's so fun because uh, again, you, with VR and with Echo Arena, when you get uh, hyped over a play, uh, unlike a 2D game over, you know, a, a monitor, you can tell, you can't hide it in Echo if you're excited. And that's uh, always fun to watch. Yes, it is. And you got Toxic there open on the far side. Oh, that took a, just a, a glance as a pass left the hand, but Otaku picks that one up. Otaku going up to Nessar to T-Tow. t, -tow. t -tow opportunity. And he's going to hit it as I run out of breath for the two. And they're back tied up once again here. We're still three minutes to go in round one. Oh, my God. Yeah, really, really nice effort here coming in to make a very competitive round. I mean, these two teams, they struggled to score in the first few minutes of play. But uh, as you hear the comms there coming through on, on this joust. But yeah, since then, I mean, look, they've scored now each a few times. They're getting the points on the board. This is a really fun match. And it's going to be Quentin handling it there on the far side. I was looking for that cross pass through the, the midsection there, but it hits the, the double diamond. And that's Otaku picking it up, going to dump it in there to the Team Wildlings bubble. They're looking to get a chain in, and they can't get that chain clean together quick enough, so Quentin's going to be able to pick that one up. And uh, that's something I brought up earlier was, uh, was the three parts, the three facets to chaining. It's not just about your speed. It's your quickness, your speed, and your accuracy. All three are just as important as the others. As yeah. uh, Quentin is going to get a big pick up there and send it out. One of the things I always like to say regarding that, that whole management of how fast you boost versus how accurate, it's, it's, it's kind of, there's a beat to it. There's a rhythm. It's like a dance or, or you know, beating a, a drum where it's just grab, grab, grab. You know, it's not grab, 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 grab. <laughs> That's when you start overshooting, you start flying in directions you don't intend, or you start uh, misreading where the disc is going. But if you have a nice rhythm and a flow between a two-player stack, you really uh, it becomes a, a, a dance move. And uh, you know there are certain stacking pairs in the league who just perfect that to some uh, great, great efficacy to uh, buy them uh, wins just purely based on speed and that rhythm of the stack. Yeah, oh, a nice steal there from Oteku as uh, Team Wallings is struggling to get that one into the bubble. A minute and a half to go here, still tied as uh, Oteku is, Ota is going to send this one in do the bubble. Uh, goalie comes out to uh, try to grab it, misses the grab, but Tribos there going to get that pick up. He gets stunned out. He's sending that one over to the teammate there. That is Quentin They're trying to track it down. He gets stunned out. And now another player there on the far side, that is Otaku. No surprise, Otaku now isn't going to be able to pick that one up. Clean pass there to t -tow. t -tow coming in off the Geo. Oh. Take a shot. But Loma, Loma forever with the grab and a clean clear all the way down. It's going to be a race. 
Oh, Loma now trying to Roma down the floor. If they can get the recovery, they'll still have a chance at some uh, potential offense, but unfortunately missing the grab, so this is going to delay them at least a little bit. But uh, they have some spacing here, you can, as you can see, but not getting a pass off. Instead, it's t -Tow with a stun and the clear back to the blue side. And uh, that's going to be snagged, it looks like, by the Wildlings. And uh, Kotetsa, uh, Kotetsa will get the disc over to Quinton. And Quentin handling that one, looking for that cross pass, but unfortunately hits that uh, that geometry there as Oteku gets a, picks up that bounce. Oteku now with it moving in, taking that long shot, but the goalie had just returned and it goes wide nonetheless. Now bouncing out 25 seconds to go here. We might see an overtime as that one gets cleared out back towards that uh, that, that far side tube. Going to take a few bounces there. Going to be a race to pick this one up as it's still loose there in that far side trap. Who's going to get there first? We have a chain coming in. It's actually going to be T-Tow picking it up. 13 seconds, T-Tow with it. Looking to clear it in. It gets stopped. Grab there. Nitro's picking that one up. No, it's going to be Otaku. Otaku. Oh, he gets stunned now. This one's loose. We're probably going to overtime here. As it's going to be Loma. Loma picking that one up. We are. Round one. Oh, overtime between the Monsters and Team Wildlings. Oh, man. And could not be happier to say that. I'm sure if the, these two teams, uh, they definitely feel the pressure. They're not happy. They want uh, they want to win this one cleanly and quickly. Uh, but you know what? High pressure situation. As you mentioned, Dimwi, this is the elimination rounds for these two players in this double elim game. So with that said, OT in round one. Who's going to take this joust? And it will be uh, 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 the Monsters getting that one, sending it into the Team Wildlings bubble. It's still loose. Oh, good slap there. And that one gets out of the bubble, though, still in the Team Wildlings zone here uh, on this near side wall. It's going to be picked up by, uh, uh, by Tribos. And that one slapped away by uh, the orange team there, looking to pick it up. Uh, oh, it's taking some goofy <laughs> bounces there. Ultimately, finding the hands of Loma Loma, who's going to pick that one up, sending it away. Minute and a half to go here, still in this overtime. Sudden death overtime, six to six. All right, and let's see uh, what happens. That bounce is going to go above and now below uh, in danger here if any stat comes through, but they do not. So Otaku taking that disc right back uh, about 50 seconds into this, uh, this overtime round in round one. And the control, all about the control, but at the moment, it's just a lot of chaos. And now this one, excuse me, this one dumped back into that bubble there. t Tal trying to track it down, does, he, he's got it there. He's got three players on the bubble. They're looking at a three on three, looking for that cut, cut past the Toxic, but that lane was covered. is gonna pick that one up, and now t Tal trying to track it down, actually, uh, uh, no, it will be T-Tow picking it up. T-Tow, although he's going to get his pocket pick there. Tribos is picking that one up. Tribos now turning it around. 45 seconds still remaining here in the sudden death uh, overtime, first overtime. And that goes right in the hands there of Big Rome. Big Rome on the back line. He's been a big man on that back line here for the Monsters. Trying to send that one out. Does find the hands there of Otaku. Otaku is going to clear this one in. 30 seconds still remaining here in this first overtime. Bouncing into that bubble. Picked up by Quentin. So still more of this back and forth. No one really getting any clean opportunities yet here on the goal. And that's a testament to the defense we're seeing in this game. Well, absolutely. And just the same. There it is. That stack recovering and able to just clobber uh, Team Wildlings and recover the disc. If they can get any stack going, which they do. There's the re-grabs, but just a bit of an overshoot. Now they have six seconds remaining, maybe with one more fling into the goal area. They have some players in position, and that's just going to be off. And no, the time has expired, so we're going to a double OT. Yeah, this is our first double OT of the. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the first double OT of the of the tournament period. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure there have been other overtimes, but I think it's our first double overtime. Mm -hmm. and, at least uh, with how close this game has been, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not surprised at all. Or, uh, I'm, I'm not. No, I, that's uh, that is what I meant to say. I'm not surprised at all. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, uh, this is such a close game. It's going to be T-Tow handling that one. T-Tow sending this one in, looking to get it there to Toxic. Can't get the grab on the rebound. And Loma Loma is going to come out of the goal to pick that one up, trying to clear it up, but, gonna, but it finds its it finds its way into that trap there where uh, Tribo. We'll pick that one up and send it back into the Monster Zone here. You know, I think for these teams, if they can just find some control, some of those back passes, which we've seen these teams throughout the day, uh, especially in those last few matches, execute, you know, trying to reset and maybe get some boosts here. Uh, they're trying to. There's Otaku along with his teammate, uh, T Tao, and they're going to arrive at the same time, but kind of clumping up so that disc will be lost. But uh, can they get a recovery now for Wildlings? Because. We're seeing a lot of these clears just go right back to Mon uh, Monstars is a thing. And uh, yeah, with that, we're halfway through this double OT situation, still just close and clustered. 
And now Quentin with a big pickup there, sending this one back out. Another, yeah, another minute off the clock there. Sea Tau's trying to track this one down. He is going to get there first, but he's under pressure. Uh, uh, sends that one forward, just out of the reach of Toxic. On that far side wall, will be picked up there by Quentin trying to send it out, but gets stuck in that trap once again. And now Kotetsa with it. Kotetsa looking to send that one down. Good pass there to Quentin at mid. Quentin just going to dump this one in, looking to chase down after this one. And a good bounce there. Oh, He's going to find ooh. the hands. Oh, just oh, not yeah. quite played. And that will be Otaku picking it up. 30 seconds remaining. Oh, that was heart-wrenching, no doubt, and blood boiling if uh, you're Wildlings. That said, Team Wildlings on the offense. Kind of a rare situation where they are able to recover the disc on this side. Let's see if they can do it again off the wall and with a stun there recovering. So Quinton with the disc, 12 seconds left. They can get this to go, and that's where the Wildlings it are. It's a goal, and it's an OT victory in round one. Sir, did we? No, I, I was hoping you opened the comms there. I was trying to get the scores in. Yes, sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. That was my bad. Uh, yeah, because they were they were definitely flipping out after that one. That was a fantastic uh, finish there. Team Wildlings is going to take round one in double overtime off that two-point goal. And, uh, yeah, well earned by those guys. I mean, they really had to fight for that one. And they fought and they fought and they fought and they got it. So that's going to be round one there to Team Wildlings uh, in this one against the Monsters. I mean, that was just absolutely fantastic play there by both teams. You don't often see double over overtime. Even in VRML, you don't often see oh, yeah. double overtime. And uh, that, that was absolutely phenomenal. I'm just, that just makes me more excited for round two. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, these teams put it on a show. Uh, and the last few matches on this stream, they've uh, pretty much been providing just that. We've seen OTs, we've seen double OTs now. We've seen round threes. And we're seeing uh, these players really leave it all on the table, essentially, because they, they know that's that's it. Uh, it is, you know, it's it's feast or fired, basically. They're, you know, they, they've, uh, they know that this is their last chance to make it to the rest of the tournament, to day two, to make it to the top three and maybe secure uh, their shares of the prize pools. And uh, with that said, round two is going to be underway now. And, man, uh, from a spectating standpoint, I'm just wanting to see that round three happen, of course. And uh, here we go. It's off into the races. And that's going to be Tribos there picking that one up right off of that. that was, so it was a joust win there to Monstars. But that's, you know, people talk about the headbutt joust. And uh, you know, there, there is that thing about it. You, you might win the joust initially. But if you if you can't control that bounce, it's very likely, it's very it's liable to go into the hands of the other team if they're setting up defensively at all. But Otaku with it now. Otaku, what a setup there. Oh, the play wow. by the goalie. And then the slap out of the bubble. What a stop. As t -Tow was coming in there, he was right on the goal, but the goalie got the stun before you get the shot off. And now it's turning it around here for Team Wildlings. It's Tribos. Tribos sending it up there to Quentin. Quentin moving in. Ducks the stack. What a duck there. Sending it across there to Tribos. Tribos oh. sending in the shot. He hits it for the two. Oh. And there it is. Our first goal of round two. One minute in there. Off the shot there from Tribos. Oh, execution. Butter. Butter. Uh, th those passes. Calm. Calculated precise and uh no time out it would seem here so looks like uh some some issue at hand but either or that was such a beautifully executed play zippering it right back and forth on those passes yeah that's just uh you know and we've seen a lot of that from both these teams just the mm -hmm. passing you know even 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 when the plays are breaking down the passes are still there and it's 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 really it's just we're talking about players that have earnestly not been playing for but three months, and they, they're they picking this stuff up faster than the first wave of Questies. It's really impressive what we're seeing here. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is just so, <laughs> I'm just really, I'm just so impressed and excited by what we're seeing today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it's it's a constant theme of these streams, and uh, but a testament to the growth of the game. That's kind of what happens. As uh, games grow, as communities grow, and as uh, you know, mainstream hops in, you're going to get these kind of natural talents. And just as well, going back to the whole fact we were talking about, with uh, the amount of content out there to watch and study, and the coaches that are here to help these teams in this tournament, and we got you know boot camps being being ran, uh, including you know by Hasco, she's done boot camps numerous times over the years. Uh, 
you know, you got teams like like Joker and, and Kangorilla. I mean, we got these teams just uh, looking to coach these players. At, even at the top master tier level, they're also trying to help along the new generations learn the game faster. And it's beautiful to watch. It really is. It's now Loma Loma picking that one up. What a, what a rocket of a clear there. As that one is going to be picked up by Tribos. And uh, yeah, as Tribos to look for the back pass with just out of reach of, uh, of his teammate, Kotetsa. And now a bit of a ping pong battle here right around mid. We see this periodically as Otaku does come away with it. And it's so hard for me not to say Otaku. I knew an Otaku way back when. And uh, I knew him fairly well. At least I thought I knew him fairly well. He changed his name uh, not long after. Did, didn't tell anybody. And the one day I found out, I was like, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> so it's hard for me not to say Otaku. So well, it's, it's well, Otaku. Hold on a minute. Talking about name changes. Didn't you used to have a T at the end of your name? That is a vicious rumor. I cannot believe you were perpetuating such hmm. such a vile, such a horrible, horrible thing. Besmirch, besmirching my good name. He's smirching. I barely know you. But anyway, Otaku here is going to go into the goal lurching for that one was uh, the goalkeeper, but just out of the reach and through the fingers. It's two to two on the tie. Yeah, that's uh, another one from the man himself, Otaku. And yeah, tying it up once again. I mean, yeah, once again, tie game. Now, now still, still a lot of game to go here. A lot of round to go. Seven over seven minutes remaining as Quentin is going to pick that one up. Quentin now with it moving through mid. Going for that long pass, excuse me, a long clear. It is going to find its way to the teammate, however. That is Kotetsa. Kotetsa looking to turn it around, looking at anchor shot. Oh, the ding gets it back and then oh, hooks that one down towards the floor. I've done that a million times myself recently. But Otaku with it now. Otaku picking it up for the Monsters, turning it around. Ooh, with the Dusty there. And the dribble to try to get out of the zone. Got all the boldness of the Dusty moves and. Uh, let's see what they turn it into on the offense. There's a clear in the boost. Wow, was that efficient. T Tau. Oh, wow. Up by two uh, points here off of that. That was great. Yeah, that was absolutely just sorry. That was an absolutely phenomenal one there, uh, T Tau. And uh, yeah, I mean, in, in you know, he, with what he's been doing lately, I just I, I love I love being able to say his name on the cast to represent. Oh, what a headbutt. <laughs> Look at that! And oh, Otaku is going to get there first. That is a big pickup there for the Monstars. Currently up by two. Otaku juking, trying to juke two, does get stuffed as he was coming in. And now uh, Tribos is going to pick that one up, back up, and Quentin is going to get the clear. Kind of forced into that clear thanks to T Tau uh, right by the feet there. So honestly, launching off some boosts. They're going to have some players now, three players back towards the, the goal area, or at least towards the orange side, and now all four joining back as uh, they do recover. And you mentioned Otaku in the last stream. That's kind of what he's been doing a lot is those recoveries, those steals, intercepts, what have you, uh, on his side of the floor there across these matches. Very, very active on the defense. And Tribos picking that one up. Oh, excuse me, Otaku picking the pocket. Does get away clean. Now he is under pressure by two players. He's going to juke around, trying to make some space. But, y'all, oh, Tribos not letting him sneak through there, getting that pick up. Another good clear there. Tribos has been really solid uh, on the defensive line, particularly at midfield. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's, his clears have been clean. And now a good slap there is going to send it, uh, keep it in the zone as uh, Tribos, Tribos is going to pick that one up. Now moving in on the near side wall, look at a send a nice reset there to the back line. Get a hit Loma Loma, and they're going to reset for this attack. And they're going to do a little bit of dancing uh, at that. Maybe bait out the defense, just kind of waving around. And if nothing else, uh, giving opportunity for Wildlings and their team to direct traffic and find a nice uh, position flow to their offense. And uh, they're doing just that. The, the bounce a little bit off, however. And it will be ultimately recovered off of was a good stun from Otaku. A good stun and a little boost. Uh, but there's Wildlings with some boosts of their own. See if they can recover in time as it does take a bounce straight back into the midst of Tribal. But no, right back to Otaku. Yeah, that was that was a nice pick up there. Uh, uh, yeah, just forcing that turnover, picking it back up. And that's going to be our first two goal, I believe our first two goal game. Two goal lead of this game yeah, yeah. also is going up six to two here up by four it's still over four minutes to go and uh wildlings did take that first round so they're liable to take another one so uh a monster is not safe still a lot of time uh, is gonna have to protect this lead yeah certainly not safe uh, at all and just as i say that well there's a steal 
Maybe need to put the disc in a safe. Uh, but over here, it's going to be rebounded off the ceiling, or near it anyways, by Tribald. And uh, might bounce back to him, but it's slapped out instead towards the midfield, where there are a couple defenders there for Wildlings, or midfielders, rather, uh, able to recover, at least for the moment. But again, there's that aggressive defense from Orange, from the Monstars, forcing that shot, and uh, now a save and a clear. And that one's going to clear all the way out. Good clear. Nice chain. Pick it up. It's t Tao. t Tao's going to set it to Otaku for the shore points. That is a good strategic decision. And they're going to go up by six. Oh, yeah. That was really, really well done there. He had one player nabbing the disc, the other one flying right through and positioned himself uh, in a place that, as we all know, very high percentage shot. You'll see a lot of players in... Uh, the league and VR Master League in, in season, Master and so forth. Uh, they love that spot, that backward spot, because especially when there is a goalie in the goal, I mean, you're making them turn their head for one, but, you know, again, you can get the anchor as well, so you can get some extra power behind your shot uh, at the same time. It's like a double whammy. And now that's Quentin with it. Quentin moving in, taking the shot, but it's going to hit the top side of the cone there, so bounce high and, high and wide and out. Tribo's picking it up. As a teammate uh, take care of the uh, the attacking otaku there tribe was going for the anchor shot very sneaky anchor shot very joker like anchor shot there yeah. <laughs> as uh doesn't go in gonna ding out now it's loose picked up there by otaku and otaku's now gonna send that one out and does get it out yeah getting just uh, unmuted for a brief second here on these teams just to hear some of their comms going through because it is mighty tense and chaotic and you can hear the frequent comms uh i'm gonna mute it again just so i can think but <laughs> I like the fact that they're calling out everything that's happening to just keep their teammates in the know because with such a fast-paced game like Echo Arena, you really want to use your other three teammates as your eyes and ears whenever possible so you don't have to be scanning your full 360, you know, back and forth and above and below. And oh, speaking of, there's a goal. Ooh. 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 Boy, I... Wow, what a rocket of a shot. That's a three-pointer as well. I am... That was awesome. Kotetsa. Kotetsa. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. That was awesome. He's a contesta for hottest hand here with that fiery shot. And with that, I mean, see uh, how they react for Monstars. They're only up by three now. So danger, uh, in danger of maybe another OT should Wildlings come back with another three here. And I mean, like I said, oh, I would no. love to see it. That is a player drop there. They, they had a drop there on Team Wildlings. Ooh. They're down by three in this second round. Now, they're not going to be out. They will go to round three if uh, the Monsters pick this up. But that is very, un that is some unfortunate timing there as Kotetsa is bringing this one in. Kotetsa, oh, getting stuffed as he was trying to send that pass across. Attacker gets a steal. Attacker bouncing that one off the floor. Quentin able to pick that one up. Quentin dumping it back in. Takes that bounce off the nest. The goalie, uh, Big Rome, is not able to pick it up. It is going to be Kotetsa. Oh, Kotetsa stuffed once again. Otaku is going to get the grab again, clearing that one out, finding its way to mid, but Loma Loma is there to pick it up. Oh, no, the quick steal, Otaku with it as that player returns for Wildlings. Otaku moving in. They're currently up by three. He takes a shot for the three, hits it. That's going to be round two. We are going to go to round three. Yeah, that's tough, tough, tough for Wildlings uh, indeed on the dropout. They did actually get their player back, uh, but not in time to actually come out of the catapult and get the goal. So... Tough turnaround for them, and for those maybe not uh, aware, at least by, by the VRML rules, typically the way it would work is uh, after, if there's a crash and the player's not back at time, it's after the next goal is scored uh, is when you would take a timeout uh, as it currently stands. So tough turnaround, but it will be indeed the win and a round three after all, uh, thanks to Monstar's effort in round two. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a solid victory there for the Monstars. They played very, they played very well in that round, and uh, I think you know it's one of those things when you, when you you get on the high of of you know so I'm doing that thing again. Uh, oh, <laughs> you you have a close game, but you get to double overtime, and then you win that game. Yeah. Now everyone watching knows how close that game is, but when you win that game, it can in your brain you can kind of see it as not as close as it was and so when you go into that next round if it doesn't go as well as you expect it to it can it can really mess with your mental game you'll expect to be doing better than you, you rightfully should be and uh excuse me uh now i'm losing my train of thought but you get what i'm saying 
It's it's you kind of going with that that high, the heightened expectation because you did get that major victory and that double overtime, and then that can play on your your mental game a little bit, and maybe you lag a little bit behind when it's when it's close again, even though you kind of feel like you should be winning by a little bit more than that. And yeah. uh, though they did almost mount that comeback, uh, and that would have been fantastic. They'd have an uh, unfortunate drop of unfortunate timing. It does happen to the the best of us. Actually, it reminds me of that story we didn't actually get to earlier. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, a, a tough part of, uh, well, online gaming in general. It'll happen from uh, time to time. But you're right. The mental game is always going to be a factor anytime. I mean, whether you're talking about a dropout on occasion or you're talking about just a uh, overconfidence, perhaps, or, you know, the, the flows of Echo Arena and the emotions attached to it, it's, it's, it paints the picture for, you know, these, these three-round series, these overtimes, basically, that you see. Uh, you know, Master League last season, there were a few occasions where, actually a lot of occasions now that, that I think about it, and, and also in Seal, uh, seasonal Echo, Echo All-Star League, uh, kind of off-season league between VRML seasons that we just finished up uh, a week or two ago, saw a lot of those, those round personalities, you know, the extremes where one round is maybe really low scoring, and then depending on kind of the mental shifts, uh, the next game may be really high scoring, lopsided for one team. And then you go to the next round and it's lopsided for the other. And sometimes that's, well, actually a lot of the time it'll be a factor. And, uh, you know, it, it, once you get to see the round go to 10 minutes and zero to zero on the clock again, start of a new round, then that's, sometimes it's enough to wipe the slate, mentally speaking, and just see, again, a flip-flop of what you expect. So <laughs> uh, all I can say is the only unexpected thing here today and this deep into the brackets is the fact that we do get these good matches happening uh, really consistently over the last couple hours? Yeah, no, they've all been they've all been uh, narrow. They've been uh, well fought. Uh, the skill level has been high, and uh, they've all been exciting. And uh, that, I mean, that's that's as a, as a caster, that's what I'm interested in is the excitement level of the game. And these have all been <laughs> very exciting games. We've saw, we have seen some amazing plays from these guys. We've seen some really clean cut passes. We've seen some some really steezy jukes. We've seen some attempts at some steezy shots. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any of the steezy shots went in, but we've seen some attempts. Yeah. And uh, just uh, just overall, just I mean, the team, the level of teamwork, it's like, you know, uh, it's one of those things you worry about with with new up and coming players that, that cause we all kind of know what it's like to come up through pubs and that it can kind of encourage you to take on that solo player mentality. And so when you get used to that and then you make the transition to competitive, it can really put a, a kind of a, a, a hamper on that development just because you're having to work out these bad habits from pubs. And then you see something like this where you're talking about players who've only been playing for uh, less than three months and they already have this level of teamwork that is just it, how many you know there were teams like eclipse that had it but how many teams in the lower you know the the lower portion of uh, of those ladders had that and and seeing them all have it today is just it's awesome i mean it just shows you the progression of the game that the 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 skill floor is being raised with the ceiling yeah. and uh it's just it's just awesome you know th these guys i i i went those those two or two or three months without playing very much and it's not so much that uh, I've lost any skill in that time. It's that in that time, everybody around me got that much better as well. And so it's yeah. like a double whammy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you, you mentioned Eclipse and having this. Uh, you know what? Even then, I, I meant, we mentioned earlier, look at the old streams from those days. They don't compare to even the Quest, uh, the Quest Rookie Cups that we're seeing, honestly. Uh, for that matter, admittedly, my team back in the day, we didn't even... Uh, I, I would say it took up until 2018... Uh, to actually start catching up on the passing game. It was it was actually uh, the Fancasms team, which were the, uh, by my books, the best passing team uh, in, in early Echo Arena. And we kind of had to adapt to that. But of course, since then, all these other teams have done just the same. And now you're, you're seeing these quest teams do uh, the same kind of thing, utilizing those passes and just the great uh, chemistry play and getting the boost in line. I mean, everything they're doing uh, is right up the alley of a team that is much more farther along than you would expect as at least an OG player. Yeah, really, it's it's uh, it's really awesome to see. And look at that pass. I mean, you see it right there. That pass to Quentin was spot odd. And there was so much Geo in the way, and they got it right through. But unfortunately, that back pass. But that's even another thing. The resets, the back passes. You know how long it took me to start resetting? 
you know like yeah. and i'm a backliner like, <laughs> you know, like it's it's just it's this is so awesome yeah it is and at the moment now we're stuck on uh, zero to zero in this first minute look at the look clear the boost the leech and the discipline again to actually uh, make all these plays these grabs but still not get caught up in the brawls and trying to find oh look at the snags as well i mean these teams playing their hearts out because this is their uh, the tournament lives because double elimination lower brackets here Whoever loses this round, they're out for the tourney. And when you're on the, the edge of chasing that, uh, the top three spots to secure your prizes here from community build, VR Community Builders and Asterion Products, uh, you're wanting to play hard and secure these victories, just like that shot was from Quentin. Yeah, nice shot there Ooh. from Quentin. Nine meters out for the three. That's going to be our first goal of round three. To Team Wildlings, and so you know, last round, they I, they, they kind of you know they, they they that score got away from them, and in this round here, uh, they're making sure it can't as they take a three point lead to start this one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, lo love to see that return again. Uh, the mental game we talked about, just trying to be even killed, not get too too high or too low, but just execute the way that you uh, plan you, your game plan, you know. And with that, so they're trying to do just that. Some uh, kind of reverse inverse Joker trains going of sorts. As a Toxic tries to recover, past his hands, and now slapped out of there, right to the midfield where it looks like a pileup may be about to form. And now oh, Quentin with it, Quentin moving in. Quentin sending it in, and take some bounces there, bounce around the bubble, but down to the floor. Oh, t tau touches it, he gets stunned out. It's gonna be Otaku picking it up now. Otaku looking to send it out, does get a clean clear. Looks like, no, not quite. Bouncing around that trap, gonna bounce up high where it will be slapped and back towards that bubble. Big Rome coming out to play it. Oh, that one's going wide. And now picked up by, who's it gonna be? Nitros, or excuse me, Tribos there picking it up. Did he get stuffed? t Tau picking it up. He gets stuffed trying to send that one out and it will find the hands of Kotetsa. No, Otaku with the steel turning it around now. Yeah, Otaku with the Otaku. And look at the stack right there to follow the, they do overshoot just slightly, kind of dodged by Quinton. Quinton dishing it over to try Baldos, and he's gonna wor work it up the floor. A good handoff pass, but maybe miscommunication, uh, expecting the, the cutter to continue cutting instead of anchoring at the barrier. Uh, they will retain the disc for a brief moment before Otaku, once again with a steal and clear, the theme of the day today. And now, ooh, another uh, another chase for this one. Uh, will we, and I thought it was T-Tow, no, it's Otaku picking that one up. Otaku now with it, sending it out all the way down into the Monstar zone here, bouncing around that bubble. And uh, gonna be a race for it, slow race. It will be Kotetsa getting there. Kotetsa though, under pressure, trying to send that pass off, I believe it hit ahead. And now picked up by T-Tow. So uh, still uh, scoreless since that last goal, uh, Wildlings uh, still up by three. I believe it's been about a minute and a half since that last goal. This one gets dumped back into the Team Wildlings zone. Yeah, and uh, Loma, Loma, Roma, Roma, back in the goal, able to recover that. Kind of a likewise big Rome over on the other side, manning that goal uh, for a good portion of the time here. And now they're going to get a deep clear, looking for a boost, but couldn't find any grabs. So this will enable Loma to once again recover. But that said, it's Otaku in his favorite spot, which is to say everywhere on the floor as Otaku converts on three more. That was a nice, you know, you know what that is? That's, that's reading the situation. Because so there were two defenders in the bubble there, but as Otaku came in, what he could see, what I couldn't see from my angle, uh, but what Otaku could see from his angle, and what you all could see from Paladar's camera angle, uh, was he had a, he had that shot lane barely, but it was there. He took the shot. He even did the push, and they tie up that game halfway through this round. Yeah, and with a ooh, awkward bounces actually uh, off of the Geo recovered by Otaku has a Katetsa there to contest. And uh, with that said, off the stun, look at the stacks once more. Uh, important thing to note for any rookies, any uh, less experienced players, mobility, name of the game in Echo, and now the agility from t Tau to convert. And uh, he is gaming indeed, five to three. Yeah, that's uh, uh, the Monstar has taken a two point lead here. You know, the Wildlings, they, they, they got that early lead, but the Monstars are coming back. And so now suddenly the Wildlings find themselves back trailing once again, down by two here. And they, you know, they, they don't want to get, they don't want that score to get away from them again. So they need a goal here uh, for their own mental game, for their own uh, uh, confidence and comfort. They need to pick up a goal here. And Kotetsa is able to pick up that bounce, sends it over there to Quentin. Quentin moving on the bubble, take the shot. Ooh, what? Oh, what a stop there, but oh. Oh, 
it gets stuffed in despite the save oh you know what no i'm sorry i i, I miss saw that i'm watching it on the screen here uh no he got stunned out as he was trying to clear it that's happened to the best of us and yeah. it just takes that backward path finds its way in it's unfortunate but there it is, and that's going to be a tie tie goal there. We're back to a tie game with under four to go. And that was a similar play, similar play to we, uh, what we saw in that one OT game a uh, fair bit earlier on the streams, where it's just a great save. But then what happens after that kind of undo, undoes it? And not really the fault of anyone as, wow, look Ooh. at that save right there on the fault line of the goal. Uh, was that Otaku again? It was. Wow. It was. Uh, yeah, he has been, uh, he's, you know, he's probably, although uh, we have some sample bias, selection bias, just because uh, we've done a lot of uh, the Monster Stars games, incidentally, but uh, Otaku, probably the MVP of the day, <laughs> as Toxic picks it in off the feed from Otaku. Toxic getting that too, and they're up by two again. See, not getting panicked in a situation where it would be so, so very easy to get panicked. Otaku didn't have much room, okay? And he had two uh, players right in his vicinity uh threatening to steal or to brawl and yet still finding the the pass to the right place and that's also credit to toxic because toxic was in the right place to be available for the pass you know uh, always keeping in line of sight with your teammates with whoever has a disc that's important always give them angles as you're moving with purpose and ooh, the miss ooh. there on a, what otherwise was a stunned big roam in the goal that's going to be Tribos there on the far side. Try to send it in, but a good grab there by Otaku. Who gets that one cleared all the way out. Uh, just over two minutes remaining here. Still two-point game. So it's one goal game as Tribos. Nice little pass there to Loma Loma. And oh, unfortunate. Finds a way to T-Tow. T-Tow up to Attacker. Oh, the stop. Mm. Tribos with a big save there. That was clutch. They needed that stop. He gets this one cleared out. He has a teammate down, Quentin, trying to get there, but that sack's coming in quick. Quentin still might get there uh, as, yeah, Toxic gets stunned out by uh, Quentin. Quentin now ducking one, jumping another, sending it in, and we're back to a tie game with a minute 50 to go. Oh, man, is this hyper what? Look at that. Uh, round three. This is an elimination match in the lower bracket here. Once again, I mean, <laughs> two minutes left to decide the fate of these teams, potentially more if there's an OT uh, again, <laughs> but... The, yeah, playing their hearts out for sure. Every single play is going to matter so much more in these final 90 seconds as uh, they QB out here and uh, we'll just float right back into the blue zone where it looks like Loma should get that with just a little bit of time to squeeze it through some defense. And now that dump out is going to find its way. Ooh. I, oh, okay, it was a headbutt. I wasn't sure what happened. I saw it in the hands and it wasn't in hand. Yeah. Oh, but it is going to find the hands there of Tribo. Excuse me, Tribo's going to send this one in, but finds hands of Big Rome. Big Rome, now out of the goal here, press, pressing up. I don't think I've seen Big Rome play this deep out of the goal. This tells you that Monsters are looking for this victory Ooh. here. As it's headed in on the stun out goalie for a three? That was a three? <laughs> I unmuted them just as you said that. They said the exact same thing. Yeah, eight meters deep. The goal was exposed. It, the shot itself would have hurt enough as a two-pointer, but the three is what potentially just daggered uh, the hearts here of Wildlings because now with only 30 seconds left, they need to be just as bold, just as ambitious, and seek out a three of their own if they have any hopes to stay alive. You know, Taku with it, Taku. Oh, stopping that 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 rush, but Kotetsa gets it back. Kotetsa trying to sending it up, takes a goofy bounce there. Quentin trying to pick it up. Quentin is going to get there first, but with two orange players on him, he gets stunned out. Otaku picks it up. Otaku sending it out. Six seconds to go here. This one's going to bounce into the bubble. The chain is there. Otaku looking for the ice. Oh, the stop, but not enough. A little, too little, too late. The Mod Stars will get this victory. And unfortunately, Team Wildlings will be going home. And this time I did unmute them. You can hear, listen, look, listen to their voices there. You can hear not only one, the good sportsmanship, you can hear the exasperation and the physical tiredness. They are worn. Again, this has been a long form tournament. Uh, we're, I think, going into hour five now or so of streaming this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the, the, if you don't think it matters to these players, just listen to those comms and look at uh, the body language. I mean, what a match. But yeah, we'll be monsters. 10 to 7 in three rounds to take this. Yeah, that was a, uh, I just, that was a, that was a really good victory there.
uh, by the Monstars. That was uh, that was good. That was a good game. <laughs> yeah. That was a really good game. You, you don't say. <laughs> was uh, uh, for a moment I, I, I forgot this is the rookie cop. I thought we were casting some VRML because that was Ooh, uh, nasty. That was close. I'm sorry, Otaku just took my breath away a little bit. Um, that is a, a, a disgusting stat line. <laughs> I say that in the best of ways. Um, yeah, wow. 17, 4, 4, and 31. That is uh, some serious numbers being put up there by Otaku for sure. And I, I know it doesn't make sense, but, he, you know, he showed the stats like that in the last games too. But even this time, I almost feel like it was the, the points. They almost came, uh, qu well, it was kind of quietly, almost. Like, he played a lot of good defense, and I was recognizing. I didn't realize he also had that many scores at this point, too, along with the assist and save. So that's a big match for uh, him and the Monstars to lead the way. I mean, Toxic with also two points, one assist, one save, and 29 stuns. He had uh, T-Tau with six points, one assist, one steal, 33 stuns. And Big Rome with an assist, two saves, three stuns. And uh, doing the, the uh, midfielding and backfielding there for the Monstars. For Wildlings was Kotetsa with one assist, one save, 14 stuns. You have uh, Tribaldos with the three saves and two stuns. Uh, and again, mind you, two dependent on who it was who crashed. One of these stats may, may or may not be off. Um, but Quinton with 11 points, one assist, one save, four steals, 20 stuns. And uh, Loma Loma forever with the two points, one assist, three saves, and seven stuns. So with that, I mean, I'm quite pleased with how this turned out, didn't we? These matches, uh, again, they're just continuing the trend. And uh, great, we're not done. Cups. Well, we're done today. Yeah. yeah. Done, sorry, I should, I should <laughs> phrase it. Phrase yes, yes. Uh, we, we are done for the day uh, for the cast, and I believe the players are done as well, as far as I understand the vote. They, they did, uh, Haskell did put a vote out mm -hmm. um, on that, and it looks like, so we will be picking up again tomorrow at, at uh, same time, 1 p.m. East, uh, that's uh, 10 a.m. West, 6 p.m. Uh, UK, uh, and then I, I, I'm still getting, uh, I'm still getting with the Aussie times. I know that's, uh, it's like 8 a.m. tomorrow or something. <laughs> 8 a.m. tomorrow uh, yesterday, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. It's, it's the, you know, it's Aussie time. Yeah. Uh, love our Aussies. I love our Aussies. I want to be clear. I absolutely love our Aussies. I just, I'm, I'm getting used to it. But uh, yeah, so we're picking it back up tomorrow. Uh, I don't know exactly what game we'll be starting with. Uh, it won't be the grand finals. That'll be what we end with. So it'll be a while before we see revolt in generals again. Uh, generals also waiting for the losers bracket final, uh, which will be uh, still a few games for that uh, before then. So uh, yeah, we will be back tomorrow with a whole bunch more. So if you like what you're seeing today, come back tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I hope you have them muted. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're. It's going to be just as exciting. And then uh, because uh, we are ending it, I will uh, for one more time today. We gotta rep our sponsors here uh, for this one. Uh, VR Community Builders, Nada, Hasco, and uh, I, I know a bunch of other people all involved in that, but uh, those two I know do a lot of work uh, for, for that. And uh, they are uh, uh, awesome. They're, they're providing uh, uh, some of the prizes that, uh, that uh, the mouse pad uh, uh, for first place, uh, and also uh, uh, Discord Nitro for second place. Uh, and then of course, Asterion, uh, our, our big sponsor here for this one. Uh, yeah, I've been talking about them all day. Their grips are the only grips I, I can use. Like, I, literally, I cannot use any other grips. None of them work for me. Those are the only ones that actually work for me. I will rep them all day. I love them. I've been using them for three years. The only issue I ever had with them was the was the fastener, and uh, they fixed that for the, uh, the S generation of the grips. So since then, for the last two years, they've been 10 out of 10, 10 stars, uh, five out of five, uh, 12 out of 10 with rice, uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so what they're contributing uh, to uh, charging stands to, to the winning team uh, uh, for the quest. Uh, now it can also double as a uh, just a, a nice display stand uh, for your uh, for your rift or your your uh, any other any other device you might be uh, uh, using for VR if it, if it works. I know it works for all the Oculus products. Uh, and then uh, second place, you're getting uh, those grips. Uh, or a twenty dollars gift card because they don't make the grips yet for the Quest Two. I imagine they will. They, they've always uh, been lagged a little bit behind each generation, uh, but they're, it's worth the wait. It's absolutely worth the wait. Uh, uh, presuming they do come out with those eventually, and I would expect them to. Uh, not making promises, not speaking for them. Uh, don't sue me. Uh, and then, of course, third place also getting the grips. 
and or, or excuse me, the grips or the $20 uh, store credit. Uh, so absolutely big, big uh, thank you to those guys out there at Asterion. Uh, I will rep their products anytime because uh, absolutely because uh, of their grips. I just I love their grips. Nobody does them better. Uh, yeah. And th again, thank you to them and as well as VR Community Builders, as mentioned, uh, for helping organize all this and put it together, connect the production with the organization, with the players and so on. And Rad, I mean, a lot of different parties involved to make these cups happen and make these prizes happen and just make everything go as smoothly as possible. And I know there were some delays uh, here and there. And again, thank you for everyone who bared through them with us because you know what? It was worth it. This is the first long form tournament for a lot of these players being a rookie cup. Uh, you heard it in the voices and you saw it in the body language at the end of that last match, okay? They've been going at it for about five and a half hours now for these teams uh, throughout the day. So, you know, they got an intense workout today and they got a great taste of what Echo VR and what Echo Arena is like at the competitive level. Seeing, uh, again, exactly why, hopefully, they join VRML coming into next season, January 4th. Again, it's free to register and play in VRML, just like with Echo Arena, it's free to play as well. So if you have VR, you have an Oculus Quest, uh, Quest 2, Rift, Rift S, whatever you have, uh, join it and yeah, play in it. Because every skill level, uh, you're going to be playing with teams or and against teams that are uh, near your ranking in the ladder and near your skill level, level of dedication, etc. It's very flexible, scheduling seven days a week. Teams get casted all the time, every single day. Literally, literally hundreds of casts over the course of the season from master all the way to bronze tier. doesn't matter. You're going to get casted. Uh, so with that said, I think that'll do it for us for today. Appreciate everyone for uh, joining and watching and chatting all throughout uh, for the follows, the subs as well. I see uh, Pyro's in there stopping by in the chat. Uh, shout out to you. Didn't mean to ignore you guys uh, in chat, by the way. Sorry, uh, you know. A lot to juggle sometimes, and then at the end of the day, I kind of look at the chat, I'm like, oh, I miss people. Uh, but <laughs> that said, I appreciate you guys. I had Smooth right in a while ago, donating some bits as well as, as those Tier 1 community subs, three of them, and the Gunslinger uh, with a Prime subscription too. So thank you guys for that. And uh, until tomorrow, same start time, I've been Palador. This has been Sir Dimwee next to me. And this has been the Quest 2 Rookie Cup, uh, presented by VR Master League and sponsored by Asterion Products and VR Community Builders. Until next time, uh, be happy, healthy, safe, and be good to each other. And I'll see you again. We all will really, really soon. <laughs>